Once again, good morning everyone. For it are from so Ian Gemini Sophia. Welcome to Sophia Gardens for the opening day of the Vitality County Championship match between Glamorgan and Derbyshire. The good news from the middle is that play will be starting at 11.30. We have not lost any overs. The news of the toss is that Derbyshire have won the toss and they have invited Glamorgan to bat first. As far as the news of the two teams, Glamorgan are, as per your scorecard, there is one change in the Derbyshire team, and that is that Alex Thompson, wearing shirt number 15, will be playing instead of Jack Morley and batting approximately at the third. So the two teams are, first of all, the Morgan, Zane Alder, Sam Billy Root, Sam Northeast, Kieran Farnison, Colin Ingram, Chris Cook, Dan Dagthwaite, James Harris, Mason Crane, Mia Hamza, and Jamie McElroy from Derbyshire, Harry Kane, Lewis Reese. Brooke Guest, David Lloyd, Wayne Madsen, Nye Donald, Anuj Dahl, Alex Thompson, Zach Chappell, Blair Kitner, and Sam Collins. As I just mentioned, the play starting at 11.30. We still have 96 overs in the day. Lunch will still be taken today at 1 o'clock. The tea interval, though, is going to be fixed to 4 o'clock. Close of play will be whenever the 96 overs in the day's quota have been completed. So just to repeat, Derbyshire have won the toss and have invited Glamorgan to bat first.
We are also delighted today to welcome pupils and staff from Green Kelly Primary School here in Cardiff. Now the boys and girls are going to be forming today's guards of honour. They're just getting ready now before play starts at 11.30 and doing the same after lunch as well. Girls and boys, we hope you're enjoying your day here at the home of Glamorgan County Cricket Club and we look forward to seeing you again very, very soon.
Davis. Good morning, Florida. Up to our two match umpires, Rob Bailey and Neil Bainton. And good morning, Florida, as well to the Derbyshire team led into the field by Captain David Lawrence. Very good morning from the BBC Sport commentary team here in Cardiff for the first match at Sophia Gardens this season. It's Glamorgan against Derbyshire. Derbyshire have won the toss and invited Glamorgan to bat first, as did Middlesex at Lords when Glamorgan scored 620 for three. We don't expect a similar outcome today because the, the pitch appears a little bit more responsive than uh, certainly the one at Lords was. A very good morning to BBC Radio Derby's Dave Fletcher. Morning, Nick. These, are these people dressed in white? They're, they're, they're known as cricketers, then. Is that, is that how it works? Yeah, you wouldn't know about them, would you? No, after four days of uh, a very, 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 very wet outfield, it's really nice to see some sunshine. Slight irony that we're half an hour late, but the good news is no overs lost. Um, and for those of you uh, who are interested in these things, and some of us are more than others, lunch is at one, and tea will be at four o'clock. And Derbyshire handing debuts in red ball cricket to uh, David Lloyd, <laughs> you may have heard of him, uh, and Iron Donald, you may have heard of him, uh, and Blair Tickner, who you might not have heard of, but is a Kiwi, a 29-year-old who uh, bowls quite quickly, um, and is used to bowling with a kookaburra ball, which could come in handy over the next four days. <laughs> quite so. Yes, Grant Bradburn, the uh, Glamorgan coach, being a Kiwi, will, will presumably be aware of his work. So the two missing out from the Glamorgan 13 are Asa Tribe and Andy Gorvin. And the two missing out from the 13 named by Derbyshire are Jack Morley, the uh, left armour, and Matt uh, Lamb, who isn't playing either, so they'll be uh, presumably on drinks duties uh, every 30 seconds throughout the course <laughs> of the day. Uh, Dave will be disappearing in five minutes or so. Have you got time for the first over, I Mr. Fletcher? I hope so. I, if I can remember how to do it, I'll, give it, I'll give it a go. It's Zach Chappell, uh, and he's bowling to uh, Ul Hassan, the left hander, and he plays and misses at that one outside. Goes for the Zain Ul Hassan, of course. He goes for the expansive looking drive outside the off stump. Hopefully, uh, I was say hopefully they'll show a replay. They're not going to show a replay of everything. We're, we're not immediately behind the bowler's arm in, in the commentary box, but we do have the the benefit of, uh, of televisions. Indeed, and you can excellent. find us on the uh, Glamorgan and Derbyshire websites, unlike at Lords, where we were just uh, paddling the BBC's canoe. <laughs> yes. Chapel. Cathedral Road End, isn't it, of course, and uh, that one's wide of the off stump, and Zane Hollisan leaves it alone outside the off stump. Allows it to go through to Brook Guest, who I expect is he's down on the... Uh, uh, scorecard uh, at three. Now he's been batting at four with Lloyd at three um, in the pre-season games such as they were. So it's been interesting to see when they come out to bat whether he does bat at three or not, especially as he'll have had to have uh, kept wicket for the entire first innings. Uh, I'm not going to make it to the end of this over, I'm afraid Nick. I'll do this next delivery. Uh, from Chapel to Ul Hassan, who defends stoutly into the offside. And there is no run. Dave Fletcher, David Pritchard will be joining us in 20-25 uh, minutes' time. F he will be with us for the whole game, so welcome to him to the commentary team as well, of course. As uh, Mr Fletcher, whom uh, BBC listeners will be very familiar with for his work at Derbyshire Games over the years. So it'll be uh, Chapel to Ul Hassan, three slips and a gully standing fairly close and uh, that one meets the middle of the bat and uh, Ul Hassan fancies a quick one off the mark and uh, Root had to hurry there actually. It was uh, a difficult pick up and throw because it just uh, trickled back behind the, uh, the bowler but uh, Billy Root had to get his skates on to make sure of... Uh, being at home, and uh, Zain Hulsan wanders down the pitch maybe to uh, offer a half a word of apology 
Maybe that was too tight to risk as the first run of the day. Glamorgan are up and running, one without loss. As uh, the shaven-headed chapel from the Cathedral Road end is into bowl to Root, who plays that one gently to mid-off, and there is no run. The pitch is just towards the uh, the grandstand side of uh, Sophia Gardens Square. The crowd, therefore, are even more scattered than usual. It is an awful long way <laughs> out from the pavilion. And uh, there's a handful of people watching from the pavilion, and but, uh, not necessarily the uh, the best view. Plenty in the Howell stand straight beneath us as Chapel is into bowl, back of a length, and Root gets on top of it and plays it uh, gently into the off side. There is no run. Glamorgan won without loss. This one, unlike at uh, Lords where we were in action, where so many weren't around the country. This time, uh, Glamorgan were last into action, but I'm sure Derbyshire will be uh, thankful to be in action at all. After the four days of watching the rain come down and the umpires inspect the wicket at the county ground in the first round of the season. So, to uh, no one's surprise, it is uh, Sam Connors, a regular opening bowler, which means that uh, Blair Tickner will be uh, presumably first change, along with Anuj Dahl, David Lloyd, also a seam option. Alex Thompson is the frontline spinner. So, uh, four slips for Connors racing in round the wicket and off a thick edge. Al Hassan will get another run or possibly two. He does want two. And uh, as uh, an Iron Donald goes back from that slip cordon, he slipped slightly in the outfield. This is Derbyshire first class debut. He did play T20 on loan briefly last season when uh, Brooke Gast was injured. Had a couple of matches making 30 not out and 13, but uh, principally there as a, as a wicketkeeper on that occasion. This time he's at third slip as Ol Hassan is forward, defending up to mid on, and there's no run. Three without loss. All the other games got underway on time. This one half an hour late. And uh, elsewhere in Division 2, thankfully, they're playing at Bristol, where, of course, they've had so many early season problems with the weather. Yorkshire 15 for one against the Gloucesters. So the next delivery is allowed to go through by Ol Hassan, shouldering arms just outside uh, off stump. Leicestershire are 34-38 without loss, making a rapid start against Sussex. And uh, North Ants, where Glamorgan travel next week, they're 21 for one having been put in by Middlesex. Ryan Higgins, the batting hero of Lords for Middlesex, has got the, uh, the early wicket there. Here comes Connors again. And uh, there is another leave from Ul Hassan outside off stump through to Brooke Guest. So the Glamorgan side in uh, likely batting order. No, I can't uh, swear for 9 10 Jack. Zane Ul Hassan and Billy Root out there at the moment. Sam Northeast promoted himself to uh, number three at Lords with some success, as you may have noticed. Second highest score in Glamorgan's history and the highest ever first class score at Lords. As uh, Ul Hassan again shoulders arms, there's a few oohs and ahs from the slip cordon because it did come back a, a bit on that occasion, but uh, after the ball had uh, passed the bat. So Kieran Carlson likely to bat at uh, four. Colin Ingram 
Now at five, Chris Cook six. So it's a uh, frontline batter fewer than last season, effectively. Dan Dalthwaite, the all rounder, at seven. Bold well at Lords. James Harris likely to be eight. There's Connors Bowles, although Hassan does play a shot in this occasion and it's a defensive one out in the offside, so two off the over, three without loss. Uh, Mason Crane, Mia Hamza and Jamie McElroy make up the uh, bowling contingent. I would guess they would bat in that order, but uh, I wouldn't swear to it. As for uh, Derbyshire, they line up Harry Kame, Lewis Rees, of whom Glamorgan saw an awful lot last season. He scored 590 runs against them for twice out and averaged 87 across the course of the season. David Lloyd may bat at three. Break off as uh, Chapel will start a new over from this Cathedral Road end and bowls and uh, Root plays it calmly out to Gully where it's fielded by Dahl and there's no run. Wayne Madsen, Brooke Gast, the wicketkeeper, and Iron Donald. Anuj Dahl, Alex Thompson, Blair Tickner, Zach Chapel, and Sam Connors make up the Derbyshire 11 in this, effectively, their first match of the season. Glamorgan 3 without loss as uh, Chapel, tall, nice easy run up, bowls, and uh, Root plays up towards mid on. And uh, there is. No run. Dave Fletcher Hello. returns from informing the radio listeners of the Derbyshire area. Yeah, there wasn't much to tell them, to be brutal. <laughs> yeah, Come on, you've got cricket. You've been uh, extemporising yes. for four days about the rain coming down. What more do you want? That you've was, got. That was pretty much it. Yeah. yeah no. The flannel fools have taken to the middle. <laughs> Here goes Chapel again, into bowl to uh, Billy Root, who squeezes that one out on the offside, and uh, there is no run. Interesting that Sam Connors opened the bowling rather than uh, Blair mm. Tickner, but uh, Sam has opened the bowling in the pre-season matches that Tickner was absent for, or not in the country for. Only arrived on the 2nd of April, 1st of April, something like that. Mm -hmm. His... Uh, his wife Sarah and their young daughter. Was he due to play against uh, Gloucestershire? Yes. Had there been a game? Yes, he'd have played. He was itching. Chapel bowls. Short ball. Oh, Root fenced at that one. I don't think he got a touch, but Guest didn't take it cleanly anyway. Mm. So uh, Root was drawn into the, the hook shot there. If he had got anything on it, it may have flown away. But that was uh, potentially perilous. I think he just yeah, he about pulled out, pulled out at the yeah, last minute. Out. I thought there might have been a danger he'd get a, a glove on it. But uh, Glamorgan remain on three without loss. Root in this temporary opening capacity. There's Chapel Bowles, full length ball, nicely clipped but straight to mid wicket with Tickner the fields, and there is. No run. Glamorgan without Eddie Byram through injury. And uh, if you didn't pick up on the news emerging yesterday, Craig Miles, the uh, Warwickshire seam bowler, having arrived on loan, played and took two wickets at Lord's and then promptly was recalled by uh, Warwickshire because of injury to Liam Norwell. As that is on leg stump and played slightly aerially by Root towards mid-wicket. It wasn't a chance, but uh, a slight moment of alarm. And I can confirm that Craig Miles is playing for Warwickshire against Durham today, having played for Glamorgan against uh, Middlesex over the last weekend. That was a lob by Root. It was mm. in the air for quite it a long time. It was in the time. air for a long, long time, wasn't it? Just over that patch of sawdust uh, in the middle of the square, uh, but fell short of the field. So uh, Chapel's bowling quite nicely here. Mm. He's bowled a couple of overs, conceded just the one run. Sam Connors, two runs off his first over, and he will now continue from the River Tauf end 
around the wicket to uh, Zayn Al Hassan, the left hander. He pushes that up towards the aforementioned Tickner, who's fielding it mid on and checking out his, uh, his spikes. And now, just removing some debris. <laughs> from them. There's a fair amount of debris out there, given the sawdust that he has to trample his way through. It is quite soft on yeah. the, the surrounds of the square. We saw a Nyman Donald half slip when he was chasing one back from slip. It won't be as soft as uh, the county ground in Derby was last week, as all the sand is pushes this towards that s the uh, sawdust. And it's uh, collected by Harry Kame, I think, running towards us. He's at mid off. It is indeed Harry Kame. Sweater seems to fit quite nicely. Speaking of ends, I was um, pleased to see uh, Essex rename their ends after Graham Gooch and uh, yes. Sir Alistair Cook. It's yeah. uh, an example that uh, might be followed by other counties, I think. All oh, right. Well, we got an agenda. No, no. Well, I'm just I'm just hinting it. Yes. <laughs> Is Connor's poles left alone by all the sand outside the off stump to go through to Brook Guest? You, you have some candidate, more than one candidate. That's that's the only issue. They I would have to be the two greatest players of from that club, wouldn't they? Really, I would suggest that uh, Glamorgan ought to have an Alan Jones end and a Don Shepherd end. Yeah, well, nobody would object. As the would the county's leading run scorer and leading wicket taker yeah. of their history, and um, it would be nice to uh, have a recognition of Alan Jones's service, former president as well. Well, Hassan waits, four slips in place, and he pushes this next delivery from Connors up to mid-off, where it's fielded by Harry Kane once again. Yes, no, it, it, it's it's a nice idea, isn't it? It's a nice idea. Then you go down to Taunton, of course, and everybody's got their own pavilion. <laughs> <laughs> Which it always makes me, well, always makes me laugh. I've only been there twice in my time. They, they have got, uh, I think lot. they've had as many as four pavilions. At yeah, it's a lot of pavilions. You can never have too many pavilions. Derbyshire have had a few over the years. Had a few commentary boxes over the years as well. well. Indeed, as Connors is in bowls, and that one's down the leg side, taken nicely by Brook Guest, just moving away to his right. All the sand withdrew the bat. Thought about trying to tickle it away down to fine leg. I uh, think uh, long leg in place, but not fine. My first visit at Derby, we were um, up on the roof, roughly where the cafe is at the. Uh, yes. Yeah. At the moment, and uh, then in the uh, the signal box at Square Leg, my first encounter with you, first time we worked together. The first time, yes, I was late. Freezing. <laughs> I remember it well. And half the hailstones. As Connors is in a bowl, so that's driven nicely by Ul Hassan. He might get four runs. The outfield won't be as quick as perhaps he was hoping, but he will get four runs. It's been chased down by Harry Kane. The first boundary of the match is scored. That was a nice shot. And uh, Glamorgan move on to seven without loss after. Four overs of the day's play, starting slightly late at 11.30. No overs lost, but uh, they'll be pleased with the start. If it's, it's steady, if unspectacular. No overs lost, lunch unchanged, presumably because of catering arrangements, and uh, tea at a fixed time of four o'clock, so the afternoon session will be an extra 10 minutes, 20 minutes long. And, uh, well... Who knows how long we'll play into the evening. No use of floodlights, and, and one of the floodlights has been uh, dismantled it's in the falling last down yesterday. Few, uh, few days. Mm. As uh, Billy Root is facing up to Chapel and still remains to get off the mark because he's played that one straight to Kame at cover, and there is no run. So... Uh, Yes, it was. Uh, there was a, a community event due to arrive on Sunday, and then we were told um, that the the kids couldn't be uh, admitted for some proposed tours because of work on the floodlights. So uh, that area of the ground was uh, obviously out of bounds. Established that didn't practice yesterday afternoon. As chapel is in to bowl and Roos seemed in three minds there as he uh, started jabbing at one across his body and uh, I have moved a bit there Billy Root is uh, indicating he's not having a, a happy start for uh, a man who did get some runs at Lords 
but that one did move from uh, it from moved Chapel. Quite considerably, didn't it? Away from away. Yeah. Route uh, 67 in the first innings, and then out for 11 when Kimorgan were just batting out the final hour of the game. Seven for naught here. Root having something of a searching examination as he drives into the offside. He'll fancy getting off the mark here with a couple of runs towards the empty grandstand and does just that. Playing nicely away through the offside. The grandstand is empty because uh, it's not open for business today. It's not that there are no spectators chosen to go there, but uh, obviously spectators... Mostly at the ends, Howell End, uh, Castle Howell End and uh, the river end of the ground. Watching on as Chapel bowls to root on two, Glamorgan nine without loss. And uh, that's pushed defensively into the offside and root calls straight away for a quick single. There's a shy at the stumps from Dahl running around from point, but there is a tempting gap in that uh, cover region and Glamorgan gallop into double figures in the fifth over of the day they're 10 without loss Should I call this end the wrong end then the wrong name what did you no you had Cathedral Road right oh right you said something else didn't you anyway doesn't matter heaven knows what I say <laughs> during the call oh uh, well, well it's just the name of the stand oh ok Castle okay. Howell which is uh, down beneath us on advertising right. yes. hoarding and I believe the stand's known after it other food businesses are available as uh, Chapel bowls round the wicket and all her son plays no shot through to guest. Listening to BBC Sport Online, live from Sapphire Gardens, with uh, Dave Fletcher of BBC Radio Derby and David Pritchard and myself, Nick Webb, making up the commentary team. If you wish to communicate with us via the medium of X stroke Twitter, Nick Webb 2017 for me. Uh, Flex Sport. For those who want to abuse me, <laughs> keep it clean. Chapel bowls and a play and a miss from Ul Hassan driving at that one and not getting any contact. Luckily for him and uh, Dav Pritchard for our colleague who we might as well get him in. David Pritchard will be taking over from me and then I'll pop back for uh, Fletch in 10 minutes time and we'll try and keep things going. Yeah, we'll, I'm sure we can uh, make sure there's not too much dead air over the course of the next four days. <laughs> He's bowled nicely so far, Zach Chappell. He's getting the ball to move a little bit. It's not going to move for long because it is a kookaburra which is already being shown by Wayne Madsen uh, to umpire Rob Bailey which is never a good sign if it's being shown that early. I think that's Blair Tickner who's with him as well, who'll be using the ball fairly shortly. Uh, and they've both been sent away by the umpire. There might have just have been a little bit of something coming away from it. They usually carry a pair of scissors with them, don't they, the umpires? Dave, how are you? Very well, thank you. Thanks for, for having me. Pleasure no, to be back. I'm, after I'm, I'm just a guest myself. I've no idea what's going on, really. But Nick, <laughs> Nick's in charge, clearly. <laughs> uh, great to be back here after a little uh, hiatus last year so good to be back and nice to have the sun out after what we've had uh, oh in South Wales and everywhere it seems like over the last few days just nice to see some cricket from my perspective four days inside the cricket ground being forced to come back when you know there's not going to be any plays never a it's never particularly pleasant because you, you just know nothing's going to happen Sam Connors to Billy Root who drives very pleasantly square on the offside, out towards the uh, cover boundary, and Harry Kane chases and chases and just keeps it inside the boundary, and they'll get three in the end. That was a good piece of fielding by Harry Kane, good commitment. And uh, he actually saved one run there as Glamorgan move on to 13 without loss. Yeah, always a long boundary t to that end towards the pavilion. You saw just the, the residual effects of the rain there, didn't you? The, the pitch cutting up there where Harry Kane dive to stop the ball but the pitch itself looks to be playing okay so far yes it's, it's offered certainly Zach Chapel enough uh, encouragement so far I'll go through the names of the three slips in a moment I'll try and do the Welsh ones uh, justice as uh, so this next one's down the leg side there's an appeal from skipper David Lloyd who is at first slip as uh, 
Brooke Guest takes it low down to his right hand side. I don't know if he actually touched her. Well, Hassan's bat. Uh, Wayne Madsen at second slip, where he's been residing for some years now, having moved from first slip. Uh, and Iron Donald, <coughs> excuse me, is at third slip, and then he's a sort of fourth, four and a half, even fifth slip. Lewis Reese is a is welcome to the slip cord, and Lewis Reese doesn't Very off Welsh. doesn't uh, yes, it's a two and a half Welshman slip cord as uh, Connor's bowls and is defended by Al Hassan. It's Nick Webb investigative journalist that he is managed to uh, get out of Lewis Reese last year I think it was that uh, Reese's dad was born in Llanethly which is very exciting for uh, for Nick uh, but not for anybody else for, for <laughs> enough, but, but uh, yes two and a half Welshmen yeah. in the uh, Derbyshire team we'll claim anyone well that's what I'd heard Phil Salt <laughs> there aren't many exiled Welshmen in the uh, in the county championship these days Old Hassan on strike and plays this one uh, into the leg side nicely. In between the uh, the mid-wicket and the mid-on, the chase is on. Thompson and Tickner are chasing it. It's Thompson who puts in the slide and the batsmen go through for three more. Old Hassan into double figures now. And Glamorgan 16 without loss in the sixth over. Again, he's just over pitching on occasion is, uh, is Sam Connors. We've yet to see Blair Tickner. I hope the ball doesn't get too old. They reckon 40 overs and then you might as well forget it. That's what all the professionals are telling me. Well, the professionals at Derbyshire certainly. Dab that once the Kookaburra gets 40 overs old, you've had it as a bowling side. As Connors is in, that's uh, guided very nicely by Billy Root down towards a uh, backward point area. Anish Dahl, who's very, very quick over the ground, keeps them down to a couple. Root moves to eight, 18 without loss. I'm kind of just looking at his face on the television screen. He hasn't got the face of somebody who's massively enjoying what's happening at the moment. He's gone for 14 runs in his two overs and five balls. And just needs to uh, just needs to tighten up a touch. Three overs for four. Zach Chappell at the other end tells you that uh, Sam hasn't quite on this. It's the first bowl of the season, of course, in the competitive bowl of the season. Final ball of his over. And uh, that's better. On target, turned to the leg side by Root, fielded by Thompson. There is no run. 18 without loss after six. Glamorgan having been put in to bat this morning. Yeah, interesting talking about the, the Kookaburra ball, isn't it? I heard some people mention that it's all well and good using this ball to be used in Australia, but the pitches are so different that it's not. you're not exactly replicating... The whacker here in Cardiff, are you? Uh, no, not at <laughs> 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 No, on many levels. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I have no idea. It, it seems entirely pointless to me, but um, so many things that the ECB does do. <laughs> they're allowed, I think it's the first two matches, and there are two more matches later on in the season that they're going to use the Kookaburra in. They're also allowed, and I think it's only in the second division, but I, I stand to be corrected, they can use hybrid pitches for two championship matches as well this season. You just want to make sure you don't combine the two. As Zach Chapel continues from the Cathedral Road end, and that's defended by Ul Hassan on the back foot. Yeah, it's always a fair bit of tinkering, isn't there, in the, in the county championship, whether it's the ball, the surface. Numbers of teams in the division. Yeah. No, they need to settle on a formula. Uh, people often say, I don't follow cricket. It's too confusing. It's too complicated. Well, it's not. What is complicated is the amount of times they change the fixture list and all sorts. As Chapel is in to Ol Hassan, who leaves that outside the off stump. Yeah, and you'll find that when you bring a friend to uh, to a 100 or T20 game. The game does complicate itself sometimes, doesn't oh. it? And when you're trying to appeal to a, a new audience does require a bit of patience on those new fans' behalf, doesn't it, when you're trying to explain the, the different formats and the way they tinker with those formats. I'm sure the intentions are good, but sometimes it can come across as a sport that overcomplicates for overcomplicating's sake. As Chapel comes in from the Cathedral Road end once more, and Al Hassan defends, and the ball is fielded by Lewis Reese in that kind of fifth slip position. We've now got the four and a half hour T20 going on in, in India, which is absolute madness. The, it was supposed to be the quick form of the game. I know there is a slightly shorter one, 
before everybody starts shouting at me. Um, but you can use your reviews to review whether a ball is wide or not. I mean, for goodness sake, just get on with it. Here is Chapel. He's one getting on with it as he bowls a full ball, which Al Hassan leaves alone again. So it's an early ranter. <laughs> I'm going to stop. It's never too early. It's the first bit of competitive cricket for you after that washout. Last time out. Yeah, those reviews for wides do seem to be used tactically towards the end of innings to slow the opposition down, don't they? I saw an over, and I don't watch the IPL as a, IPL as a rule, but it was on, and three successive deliveries were reviewed for wide. Madness. <laughs> Here comes Chapel, knees pumping as he bowls another full delivery outside the off stump, which Al Hassan leaves once more. One ball left in this over. Yeah, Chapel only going for four runs so far in his 3.5 overs. Like you said, Dave, Sam Connor's struggling to find that same kind of consistency. Yeah, he's been just, just been a little. Uh just out of sorts, I suppose, at the start of the season. I did see Tickner, who's at mid-wicket, warming up, doing a few stretches. Might see him shortly. Here comes Chapel to finish his over. Just on a length, and Ul Hassan defends that for no run. So Glamorgan finish the seventh over on 18 without loss. It's a quick one. Mark Beecroft from Stretton. Um, a regular contributor at FletchCricket at gmail.com if you want to get in touch via... Uh, Email. Welcome back to the wilderness of the second division, he says. <laughs> Very good. Uh, one hopes that uh, your rewarded adequacy of last season continues into this, perhaps even taking a giant leap forward to the lofty heights of fit for purpose. Uh, delightful to hear you. Yeah, no, it's good to be back, uh, Mark. Good to hear you as well. If you want to get in touch with us on any subject, serious or otherwise, don't hesitate. You know what's going to happen now. <laughs> Deluge. Well, I'm halfway through this over. I'm going to disappear to do the midday update. So uh, hopefully Nick will be winging his way back in here. But it's Sam Connors still from the uh, River Taff end. And the first ball that he bowled is clipped into the leg side by Root. They'll come back for a couple. Sliding stop there by Tickner. Filling at mid on. Still got the uh, four slips in place, or three slips and a gully. Yeah, just seen having a quick look at some of the scores around the grounds in Division 2. Yorkshire, three down at Gloucestershire. Joe Root, the, the latest to go. Excellent. Uh, Joe Root's gone. He has. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, by contrast, Billy going quite serenely for Glamorgan at the moment as he faces up to Sam Connors, who rolls just back of the length, and Root defends that for no run. Root on 10, Ol Hassan on 10, Glamorgan 20 without loss as Nick Webb rejoins us. Yes, Root's had a couple of dodgy moments, but obviously not as uh, dodgy as his brother. So it's Sam Connors then to continue. Presumably an over or two more of each of these before we see Blair Tickner as uh, Connors is into bowl and Root works it off his hips down towards fine leg. Zach Chapel runs round, fields inside the boundary and they're comfortably back for a couple of runs. So if you are just joining in, in Glamorgan uh, were inserted by Derbyshire. Glamorgan debut for Mason Crane, the leg spinner, whom in retrospect, they uh, admitted they should have played at Lords, But it was a, a question of captain hindsight there, I think, because uh, no one was remotely surprised when specialist spinners were left out. Connor's in, bowls, and uh, Root works that one off his legs. Again, down to Chapel, this time just the single, because it's more directly to him. Billy Root moves on to 13, and Glamorgan on to... Uh, 23 without loss. Yeah, an interesting signing, Mason Crane, for Glamorgan, isn't he? It'll be interesting to see how he gets on, especially in the, the red ball format, which he hasn't played much of in, mm. in recent years. Shown a lot of promise earlier in his career, played for England, and found his opportunities limited more recently. 
Connors Bowles and uh, turned away by Al Hassan this time. And this one might reach the square leg boundary in front of the grandstand. Yes, it does. As uh, Fielder goes chasing after it, Alex Thompson, but uh, unable to haul it up in time. The, uh, the rope in front of the grandstand is not a long way from the, uh, the pavilion. They did, uh, from the grandstand rather. They did play on a, a pitch closer to the grandstand for the warm-up match against the, the students. A couple of strips to the right again, which you can uh, see if you're watching on the video stream. As uh, Al Hassan's shoulders arms outside off Stump Glamorgan, 27 without loss. Oh, Root has had uh, a couple of uh, false shots. Al Hassan so far having been the, the only man really to miss out at Lords, uh, He is on 14 not out and uh, presumably in uh, rather easier phys physical preparation having been observing Ramadan during the, the first game, so uh, not taking food or liquid on during the hours of uh, daylight, which is quite an effort when you're playing professional cricket. Absolutely, yeah. yeah and you see it across sports now, don't you? Uh, some evening football matches breaks in play allowing players to to break their fast um, but yeah take some effort to to play this level of sport with that sacrifice in mind oh here we go the new man for Derbyshire yeah New Zealand international getting ready to bowl from the cathedral road end quite a rangy figure comes with a burgeoning reputation on the international scene for New Zealand. Yes, I expect Mr Bradburn will have been able to uh, brief Glamorgan on his threats. Glamorgan's Kiwi coach. Yeah, so here he is at the top of his run-up. Blair Tickner, elbows out, right arm over. And it's a full delivery which beats Billy Root just outside the off stump. Good start from Tickner. Root looking a little uncertain there as he kind of semi drove at it, but didn't get very near. Decent, decent pace from Tickner mm. as well. Yeah, he put his back into that, didn't he? His uh, first ball for Derbyshire. Here he is bouncing on his toes at the start of his run-up. Arms out, distinctive style. Again, it's a full ball, which Root just squeezes <laughs> past the slip cord, and that'll run away for four runs. Full again from Tickner, but nicely placed by Billy Root for four. He moves on to 17. Glamorgan a 31 without loss. Root's favourite quadrant of the ground, behind square on the offside. And uh, playing that one nicely, really. Playing it down into the ground off an angled bat, it, it looked a perilous shot, but he executed it very well. Yes, yeah, some movement in the air there from Tickner, looking at the replay. We haven't seen as much movement from the pitch yet, but early days yet, as Tickner comes again over the wicket to Root, who defends. Some gasps from the slip cordon, but nothing doing. As Dave rejoins us, from the neighbouring commentary box as Tickner walks back to his... Some, uh, some freelancers can't do the, s the length of stint that I can manage yet. That's building into it. <laughs> <laughs> and here comes Tickner once again, bounding in over the wicket to Root, who's beaten again. There's an appeal and he's actually caught behind. Tickner has his first wicket for Derbyshire. And Glamorgan lose their first wicket of the day. It's 31 for one. Billy Root is gone for 17. Interesting uh, that he didn't open the bowling player Tickner. It's interesting that he's replaced Zach Chapel as well. This end seems to be doing more, doesn't it? It might just be the two bowlers that we've seen, but that was a really good delivery from Blair Tickner. We're just watching it from behind now. Just a, a faint feather through. Yeah. And uh, Brooke Guest taking a very comfortable catch. Tickner with his fourth delivery for Derbyshire, picks up his first wicket and they actually have the breakthrough at 31 for one. Yeah, we'd seen Tickner get some movement through the air earlier in the over and that ball just jagged slightly off the pitch, middle and off, 
and Root nicked off. Caught behind. Comfortable catch, wasn't it? For uh, the keeper. Yeah, absolutely. And Ticknell already looking a handful. As we said, comes with a, a burgeoning reputation for New Zealand. Three tests into his career, 30 years of age. He looks like a, an energetic kind of bowler, doesn't he? Arms and legs pumping as he comes in. It's got a very strange run-up, I always think. It, it, it looks really weird yeah, to me. Because, he's so, yeah, he is. He's a bit... He's, he's not your, your, your classical bowler running in straight with his arms pumping back and forward. They're sort of out to the side, aren't they? But if it works for him, long may he uh, continue. He's, uh, he's got a very strong New Zealand accent, uh, as has his uh, wife, Claire. Um, and I, I think, no, Sarah, Sarah, sorry, Sarah, <laughs> not Claire. That's, uh, that's how strong the accent is. I thought she was called Claire. No, I, <laughs> I thought she was called Sierra when she introduced herself. Well, I introduced myself to her. It took me 15 goes to get it. Uh, she made me feel a lot better by saying, oh, it happened to me when I was in London last time I came over, when I went for a coffee, it always came back with the word Sierra on it, so <laughs> it didn't really make me feel any better, but she, it was very kind of her. But uh, he's a, as most of the Kiwis I've come across, quietly spoken, not not really, you know, not brash in any way, you know, how are you going to do? Yeah, I, well, I won't take a backward step, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm pleased for him. Well, here he is. Sam Northeast, the new batter at the crease, as Tickner aborts that run up. Dead ball. So he'll start again at the top of his run up. Jogging back. Doesn't do anything by any half measures by the looks of it, Tickner. Here he comes. Bouncing in, right arm over to Northeast, who lets that go outside off stump. Good carry off. Yeah, I was just going to say, taken on my shoulder height, wasn't yeah. it? Just to his right by, uh, by Brooke Guest. A really good. Uh, Sharp delivery from Tickner. He's growing his moustache back, which is good news. <laughs> he did shave. I don't know whether he shaved it off just for the flight, but when he arrived in the country, there was no moustache, which was hugely disappointing. But the tash is back. There seem to be a lot of tashes. Yeah, New Zealand and Australia, uh, with the rugby players who come over to Wales as don't well. Mind that at all. Here is Tickner, full of all this time, which Northeast digs out. No run, and. Uh, a fine start to Tickner's Derbyshire career. A wicket from his first over, four runs from it. Glamorgan a 31 for one. Yeah, really good start for uh, for Blair Tickner. Billy Root gone, but the, a sort of s uh, Nick said stand-in opener. Really, I, I don't rec I don't recall seeing Billy Root open before in the past. Now, when I've seen him. Nudgy's coming on, and it's dull. It's going to be the uh, change at the River Taff end. Quicker than he looks. Good operator, and it's dull. Terrific fielder. Very useful, more than useful bowler. Very decent bat. It's hard to imagine a Derbyshire side without him in it, really. Yeah, some fantastic figures, especially in the county championship over the last couple of years. Especially from against Worcestershire. <laughs> but he, he seems to enjoy playing against. He got a couple of fifers against them last season. But now he's a he's a top top cricketer, and as dull as there is plenty of bowlers of this kind of pace with the left arm of Lewis Rees. Obviously, David Lloyd could bowl as well. Just the one specialist spinner, if you like, in Alex Thompson. He's at mid wicket at the moment. A couple of slips in a gully. For Anna's Dahl, who bowls to uh, Zayn Al Hassan, who turns it into the leg side, and there's no run. Yeah, you mentioned there Billy Root moving up the order to open. It has been a, a position where Glamorgan have had to chop and change quite a lot over the last couple of years. David Lloyd has moved on, of course. He's now at Derbyshire. Uh, Eddie Byram came in in recent years, but is, but is injured and unavailable for this game. So, yeah, it has been quite a lot of different experimentation at the top of the order from Glamorgan. Dahl is in again and Al Hassan pushes it out into the off sword. Now, now that Dahl has slipped on the sawdust there, it, it looks okay, but it was slightly ungainly for a moment. A little patch of sawdust, probably a, well, it's only a pitch away, isn't it? Now it's being inspected by uh, 
Harry came as Dahl came a cropper there. Nobody wants to see that. We've got Ben Aitchison still coming back from... It's a back injury that he has at the moment, but he, uh, his season, the season before last, was ended when he went out to bowl at lunchtime and slipped over and did his ankle ligaments. In comes Dahl again and bowls. That one is driven but not timed. Straight to Zach Chapel at mid-off by Ul Hassan. Yeah, he's quite the opposite of uh, Tickner in terms of his action, isn't he, Dal? Very compact and, yes. and tidy. Yes. That's the. Th but you, you would never want to f bat with him. He bats down at seven, that kind of area. But he's so quick between the wickets, you wouldn't want to bat with him. Well, he's had relatively few run-outs involved with. Uh, he has been involved with this next delivery. pushed back to him by Al Hassan. Forgive me, I'm still, my mouth is still getting used to talking for this long. I've been doing football throughout the winter, so I've got no real, uh, no, no real opportunity to uh, complain, I think it's fair to say. Thank you to Kevin Hand, who has uh, sent me a message. I can't imagine he's listening. Down at uh, whatever Middlesex are. It's this next delivery. Played off the back foot nicely by Al Hassan. Out towards the uh, cover boundary. Two fielders giving chase. Connors and Kame and the ball beats them both to the rope. That's the first boundary off. Arnaud's dull. And Al Hassan moves on to 18 now. 35 for one Glamorgan. Yeah, lovely looking shot off the back foot from Al Hassan. Threw his hands through it flourish of the wrists and uh, the ball ran away quite comfortably for four despite the outfield not being at its quickest because of the rain we've had here in recent days but a, a fine looking shot from Zain Al Hassan He's on strike now for the final ball of the end of Dahl over and he drives it straight back towards him Dahl dives to his left, gets a hand on it and prevents it from going past the stumps and down towards the river Taff end so a, a dot ball to finish with and Glamorgan, after 10 overs of the day, a 35 for one, the one man out. Billy Root caught by Brooke Guest off the bowling of Blair Tickner for 17, 22 deliveries he faced. Uh, 23 deliveries he faced. I was going too early on that one. Uh, I've, just, I've had another email. It's all very exciting. Uh, Nick Buxton. Uh, doesn't it feel nice to be unbeaten in 2024? He says, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, interested to know what I think of the Red Bull team, how the, how the Red Bull team will go. Mm. Uh, I'll let you know in a minute. As Tickner continues, he bowls a northeast, he plays and misses. Uh, hard to tell from here, but did that ball move a bit? Had to have shaped away from him, didn't it? Had to have swung away from Sam Northeast from to have played that shot, given how the form that he appears to be in at the start of the season. So it pitched, oh yes, a little bit of late swing and movement and Sam Northeast was on the march towards the bowl and playing a defensive shot and got absolutely nowhere near it. Wow, my, my answer to the email might change in a minute. As Tickner comes in once more, right arm over the wicket again. A lot of movement in the air from the New Zealander, this time Northeast able to get his bat on it to defend for no run. Doesn't mind chucking a, a Yorker in, does he? There's a couple of these, uh, s and they, they appear to be slightly slower. I wonder if he's got a quick Yorker. Mm. That might be uh, that might be useful. Um, additions are excellent, says Nick, but we have lost, I think you mean Lias, uh, Deploy and uh, Mohamed Amir not joining straight away is a blow. Uh, he says he knows nothing about Darren Dupavillon. Here's Tickner once again. Just on a length this time, and again, northeast is beaten. This is a Excellent spell of bowling from Blair Tickner. Well, the bowls are they're too good. I <laughs> can't find the edge because they're too good. Yeah, once again, it's that little bit of late movement and then off the pitch. Uh, David Lloyd there on the replay with his uh, hand in the air. Uh, well, Darren Dupavillon will be here for the Sussex home game at the beginning of May. He's sharp. His figures are good. His numbers are really good. But he's never played in England before. Having said that, at this level, certainly, neither is uh, neither is Tickner. And he's taken to it like a duck to water as Northeast gets hold of that one this time, though. Driving through the mid-wicket region, and that ball should reach the rope. Indeed, it does. Sam Northeast is off the mark with a boundary. 
He moves on to four, and Glamorgan a 39 for one. A division two is uh, Nick's. He goes on, Nick. Um, uh, division two is very strong this year, and it feels to me there are a batch of clubs with five to ten percent more quality. So I won't be pinning my hopes on promotion, but I'm open to being pleasantly surprised. Well, I'm sure you probably thought that Yorkshire were one of those teams, uh, Nick, but they're. Uh, but there were three down the last time I looked. Yeah, 46 for three a short while ago yeah. uh, at Bristol. Yeah, that does look like uh, an international batting lineup. Mm. In most respects, as Tickner continues to northeast, who prods forward for this, but for no run. Yeah, outside of Yorkshire, you'd think most counties would think they would I'd have a shot. Could not agree more. Could not agree more. I'm not sure that it is. I mean, nobody really expected Worcestershire last season, did they? Middlesex, that <laughs> yes, they play at Lords, but that's about as good as it gets, really, isn't it? For for Middlesex, they are uh, they are a county with very little money. It would appear from the outside, certainly. Yeah, it seems their strength is in seam bowling. Yet yeah. it looked like a batter's paradise last week, didn't it? As Tickner continues to northeast, who flicks that off his legs down to fine leg, they'll. Trot through for a single. That brings Tickner's second over to an end. For Morgan, a 40 for one. Because the one thing that they can't do is ask the uh, the ground staff, from what I gather, for pitches that might suit their either batsmen or bowlers because they just play on the pitches they're given by the MCC ground staff. So uh, it's a strange old situation that Middlesex find themselves in, but I'm, I'm not sure that the second division is necessarily any stronger than it was last year. Northamptonshire, they'll be all right. Leicestershire are 79 for three themselves, so they're getting on with it, but they are three down to Sussex, who uh, I watched the end of their game with Northamptonshire when I got home on Monday. They clearly haven't got an awful lot of money because they're not using the lights this season to save 500 quid a day. Kind of mess that we've got ourselves into. Here's Anush Dahl bowling to Sam Northeast, who's on five, and now he's on more than that. It might even be nine as he clips that away to the mid wicket boundary. Alex Thompson chase it, chases it. Oh dear. He had to uh, adjust his feet there as he slid in. He took the ball with him, then he left the ball behind, but had to uh, just check his feet, didn't touch the rope while he was picking the ball up, which they didn't. Uh, and it's three to Sam Northeast. He moves on to 8.43. For one. Yeah, he did well there, not to... Uh well, he almost messed it up, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Somehow, though, he almost messed it up, but no, he did well in the end. Derbyshire, of course, uh, announced a profit for the 10th year in 11, I think the chief executive was telling me in an interview we did last week. Very sound financially, but of course you've got to balance the sound finances with winning something as Dahl is in and bowls to Ul Hassan who pushes it out into the offside or even winning a game uh, uh, because they didn't win a game in the championship last season of course that's the thing with county cricket isn't it at the start of this every season it feels we have these kind of existential discussions about the state of the game and yes. it's hard for counties like you know Derbyshire, Glamorgan, Leicestershire most of those are in division two most of the time it's like you say it's balanced between financial security and actually trying to win games. Well, you don't want to put yourself in peril, really, do you? As Dal bowls and is driven by El Hassan. Good diving stop to his right by Zach Chappell, who is the uh, the comedian in the Derbyshire ranks, I think it's fair to say. Uh, it was a good stop by him, though, diving away to his right-hand side. Got both hands to it. No run was scored. Anish Dahl's asking for a bit more sawdust. So uh, Lewis Rees, who has now been removed from the slip cordon, it's now uh, a 66% Welsh slip cordon <laughs> with Donald and uh, Lloyd there, along with Wayne Madsen. Llanelli's Lewis Rees, as we'll know him from now on. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Wayne Madsen, definitely not Welsh. I think we can, uh, I think we can save it. Well, Italian, of course, now having played uh, international cricket for Italy over the course of the last 18 months or so. Here's Dahl around the wicket to the left-handed Ul Hassan, who gets an inside half of the bat up to mid-on, where it's filled by one of two hatless fielders out there. One is a very obvious, very obviously hatless, and Zach Chappell is also hairless. 
And uh, Lewis Rees, who has a good head of hair but doesn't like wearing caps. It's a very strange thing for a sports what I always think, but he, he doesn't like it, apparently, so he doesn't wear one. Here is Dahl in and bowls to all the side and pushes it out to Harry Kane. Who's out uh, extra cover and there's no run. Yeah, you don't think about that sort of thing. But you take it for granted, but yeah, he's the he's the only one. Well, the the two of them, Reese and Chapel, the only two without caps. Chapel often wears the sun hat, which in April might be taking the Mickey a bit, mightn't it? Uh, Reese more often than not doesn't wear a cap when he's out in the field. Uh, as Dahl is in again around the wicket, and that one is off an edge down into the ground, nicely stopped by uh, Donald. And it's the end of the Dahl over. He's bowled two overs for seven. North East has eight. Al Hassan has 18. Glamorgan, 43 for one. Alexander uh, has been in touch from... I thought something had happened then. Uh, from the United States, a group of youngsters somewhere around. He said, uh, tuned in just in time to watch the first wicket of the match. Cheering for Derbyshire, as he always does with no Derbyshire cricket last week. He watched Glamorgan North East's History Week, he said. Yes. 335 not out to overtake Graham Gooch. It's a high score at Lords. Yeah, remarkable effort. And North East is on strike now, facing Blair Tickner, who pitches it up once more. And North East punches it down the ground for a single with Zach Chappell doing the fielding. Yes, I did wonder whether he'd go on to try and become... Would he be in the second oh, there goes the chair uh, that's the first time this season uh, there we go the second player to get two quadruple centuries in the history of in the history of cricket but uh, declared on himself after he broke uh, Graham Gooch's record very noble considering the pace he was going at as well compared to say Ryan Higgins and given what happened with the rest of the match he might as well have just batted for four days <laughs> mightn't he really I mean Here's Tickner over the wicket to Al Hassan, who edges it through the slip cordon. Not a chance as such. It went to ground and it runs away for four. So a little fortuitous from Zain Al Hassan, but he moves on to 22. Glamorgan 48 for one, and Tickner continues to trouble the Glamorgan batsman. Yeah, took the edge. Not a chance, sadly, but uh, took the edge. There is so much space between the boundary. Uh, closest to the player's pavilion and the actual pavilion itself, that there is a full-scale practice going on there for two Glamorgan players. <laughs> I can't imagine that the people who are in the pavilion are massively delighted with that, but it's unusual. Here comes Tikna to Al Hassan once more, back of a length this time, and Al Hassan defends. Yeah, all the more reason for those in the pavilion to to join us on the on the stream and the BBC Sport commentary. <laughs> Get a proper look of it. I think that's why they're doing it. <laughs> it could be. It could be. But you wouldn't be best pleased, would you? Somebody's practicing in front of you. It is a long way. As Tickner bounces on his toes once more at the start of his mark and charges in to Al Hassan, who's forward defending for no run. Does this already feel like last week? <laughs> no, good. Good. Yeah, Tickner on his own has uh, caused more danger than there was on display at Lords. He's moving it a lot, bowling at a good pace. Looks like an excellent acquisition so far. Yes. I mean, I don't think many people... I mean, he obviously has played test cricket, as you say, but not a lot of people knew a lot about him. Here he is again to Al Hassan, yeah. defending once again. Looking a little jittery as he threatened to set off for a run which wasn't there. Maybe Al Hassan is keen to get off strike with Tikna bowling the way he is. I would be. <laughs> <laughs> I did watch him in the... Out have an outdoor net but only sorry from behind I always think it's good if you can get out to the middle and watch side on these bowlers bowling because you can't actually see the ball which I always find remarkable but he looked quite sharp last week he's coming around the wicket now to Al Hassan who again edges it towards the slip cord and this time 
it's fielded, no run. And that's the end of the over. Tickner's bowled three now, one for 14 for the New Zealander. Glamorgan, 48 for one after 13 overs. Yeah, these two were going along pretty pretty serenely, really. The ball has passed uh, northeast bat a couple of times and he's uh, played an aggressive defensive shot, if that makes sense. Especially to uh, play Tickner, but otherwise... I don't, think, I don't think there's too much danger for the batsman at the moment. Derbyshire will be keen to try and make the most of this Kookaburra ball in the early stages. It's already 13 overs old. It's coming to the end of its useful life. <laughs> and with another 70 to go and <laughs> could be changed. <laughs> dear, oh dear. That's it. Uh, Who's changed the balls at ecb.co.uk for any complaints? <laughs> Here is Anuj Dahl from the River Taff end in and bowls to North East who drives off the toe end of the bat straight to Harry Kane with an extra cover and there is no run. Yeah, like you alluded to earlier, Dave, you see the ball moving as it is now from Tickner and given the kind of limited movement you'll get to it, all the more surprising that Tickner didn't take the, yes. the new ball. The other thing I think is that he, in New Zealand, uses a kookaburra. He might want, might not take the. I don't know. It is, it is a, it is an interesting one, isn't it? But and it was, then he replaced uh, Zach Chappell. It's been from this end that the ball seems to have moved more. Again, that might be the bowlers, but it might be the end. We'll only find out later, I suppose. As Dahl bowls a full delivery that Northeast pushes up to Reese. At uh, mid off, not a breath of wind out there, is it? Look at those trees completely still. The flags limp on the flagpole from the uh, pavilion. Half an hour from lunch, which will remain at one o'clock despite the 11.30 start. Four o'clock tea. Glamorgan, Glamorgan at 48 for one as Dahl bowls to North East, strikes him on the pad, going down the leg side, I imagine, from here. Uh, a stifled appeal. I think when you get the ball past the bat, you're almost obliged to appeal. Yeah. These days. And uh, again, there's no run. Sprinkling of support. I think there's more here for this one than there were last September. It's, a, it's what successive away games in Cardiff for Derbyshire. Played the last game of last season here as well as Dahl Bowls. This is not a bad thing. Uh, Northeast turns that one into the leg side, just backward a square, and it's picked up by Tickner. Northeast picks up a single, moves to double figures. He's on 10, 49 for one. Yeah, the spectators have turned out in decent numbers because this is the, the nicest day of weather for some time here in Wales. Like you said, not a breath of wind, clear skies. Disappointing number of shorts in the crowd, but. <laughs> Not as hardy a bunch as you, Dave. Well, those northerners. Here's uh, Dahl. Around the wicket to Ul Hassan. Full delivery again off the toe of the bat, which he inspects as he uh, drives it up to Zach Chappell at mid-off. I was slightly alarmed yesterday. I, did, I came down in long trousers, a pair of jeans, uh, and met up with David Griffin, who was already in his shorts yesterday, which I thought was slightly early. Well, he's in his shorts again today, of course, just down below us with his uh, his long lens. <laughs> One of our travelling companions, Goose, looking uh, interested in what's being said. This <laughs> next delivery is defended by Ul Hassan. Straight back to Anuj Dahl. It's the end of Dahl's third over. Three overs for eight. Anuj Dahl, northeast 10. Ul Hassan, 22. 49 for one. I'm not entirely sure. If you want to come in, you're more than welcome to come in. But I, I don't think I've got. I don't think I've, I've got one. Just in a bit of on-air production there for everybody. Uh, we have we have differing ways of doing on-air production. Nick uses <laughs> signals <laughs> with his mouth firmly closed, and I tend to just talk. <laughs> <laughs> Marcel Marceau. I've not been told. Producer. I've not been told. So. Forty-nine for one, Andrew Morgan. As. Uh, Tickner sets off from this cathedral road end, still with three slips as befits an international bowler and sees uh, Northeast 
clip his first delivery off his legs down to square leg. Uh, all the sun thought about a second <laughs> north he said no you don't that is the glamorgan 50 up there for in the 15th over uh, looking back at um, tickner's uh, exploits earlier in the year for central districts he appears to have opened the bowling in, mm. in all the games that he or at least the last handful i was a little I said earlier i was a little surprised that uh, he didn't open the bowling here, but Sam Connors and Zach Chappell were the sort of established opening pair. Round the wicket, bowls to Ol Hassan, who defends it back to him, and there is no run. Not wishing to put the kibosh on uh, on Sam Northeast because we did uh, mention this uh, several times at Lords as well. Uh, he came into this innings with 515 runs since his last dismissal, which was being bowled by Dominic Bess of Yorkshire in the penultimate match of last season. He didn't play in the last one against Derbyshire. Tickner in. Balls of Bill for LBW. Umpire not moved. It was a very full delivery, wasn't it? Uh, did he get an inside edge on it? Not sure. Let's have a look at the replay. It was it was a late appeal. No, it was no, it didn't keep that low either. It was going down the leg side comfortably. Doing too much. Yeah, wow. I would suggest that, that wouldn't have hit the, another stump, certainly, if not two stumps. Tickner was quite late. The, look, at the, look at the wicketkeeper, Brooke Guesty, barely appealed. Tickner round the wicket to Ol Hassan, who plays that down into the ground, bounces up, and uh, eventually, after a mini committee meeting in mid wicket, they decide to go through for a single. He was up on his toes, chopping that one down. A slip got a hand to it, but couldn't stop it. And they went through for one. 51 for one. I think Glamorgan would be delighted if they managed to get through to uh, luncheon with just one down, mm. having been quite given quite the examination by uh, Blair Techner in particular. Back over the wicket he comes, the right-handed uh, northeast who uh, plays that one down into the gully. It kicks up off a patch of sawdust, and there is no run. Neil Bainton is the official at this Cathedral Road end, and Rob Bailey is to the one. And Mike Smith is the uh, match referee, for what that's worth. <laughs> 51 for one. We hope that he will not be called upon to play a, uh, have a leading part in proceedings. I think the answer's probably about 80 grand a year. I don't know. <laughs> Tickner, elbows pumping, is in to bowl to northeast, hurries him into a defensive prod. Pushed out on the offside. No run. 51 for one. 15 overs gone here on BBC Sport Online. At Fletch Sport, at Dav Pritchard, at Nick Webb 2017. And um, are you opening up emails, Dave? Yes, absolutely. Fletch, cricket at gmail.com. If uh, that's your preferred mode of... Uh, Fletch, cricket at gmail.com. Uh, shall I? Uh, why not? We'll, we'll see if it works. There hasn't been great demand for emails from Welsh listeners, but Nick Webb 2017 at gmail.com. There we go. The battle, the battle commence. Here's Anish Dahl. From the River Tower Fen, bowling to Ul Hassan, who pushes it off the back foot out into the offside. Sam Connors fielding at point, mainly because Anish Dole can't both bowl and field at point. He does the fielding. Duncan Evans is a uh, Welsh supporter living in Kent, who reports it's cloudy in the Garden of England this morning. And uh, asks for players' views on the new red bales. Well, we haven't got them here, Duncan. The bales are pretty normal. Did you, have, did you have red bales last week? This one is off an edge into the offside. Forward of uh, square. Again, there's no room. I'll have to look back at my pictures, actually, because I didn't particularly notice. No. Mind you, we were a long way up and we weren't operating on the uh, the video stream. We didn't see any bales last week. <laughs> uh, the other team, One of the other teams who didn't play last week, of course, were Durham. Uh, Warwickshire 123 without loss after 21 overs. So... Uh, Getting a bit of their own medicine by the look of it there. Durham from last season, certainly. As Dahl bowls. That strikes the pad off an inside edge, I think. Al Hassan going forward a little bit tentatively. 
Uh, Duncan is correct. We did use red bales mm -hmm. at Lords and Glamorgan's openers, he says, looking back through his uh, pictures from uh, the first day of the season. But uh, the I don't know if that's linked in with the, the sponsors. Yes, it's a sort of pinky red, isn't it? The sponsors' colour, main mm. major colour, certainly. Well, you wouldn't know because I can't see an advertising board for the sponsor. Hmm. Next delivery is left alone. It's now standing up to the stumps, Brooke Guest. Uh, and, and he is quicker than he looks, Alice Dahl, so it's, uh, it's relatively brave to do that, but uh, he's a good wicket keeper, Brooke Guest. It's strange, isn't it, considering that the, there is a title sponsor mm. now, the Vitality yes. County Championship. And I, I uh, did look up to see it. Yeah, we have a Welsh building society behind the, uh, the bowler. That's how it should be. Dahl bowls. That's off an edge, and it was going down a third man. There's a, there was a, a dive away to his left by Wayne Madsen. It's not going to reach the boundary. David Lloyd gets it, pulls it back for an iron. Donald, and the, batsmen go, the batters go through 4-2. All the sand moves on to 25, 53, 4, 1, probably. <laughs> I'm still getting used to the rhythm of the scoreboard. It's like the rhythm of the night. Good to hear from Balderdash on Twitter. Thank you very much. As Dal Bowles, that's left, out, left alone outside the off stump by Alassane goes through to book guest. And it's the end of Dal's fourth over. Four overs for 10. Tickner's bowl four overs, one for 16, and Derbyshire have got Glamorgan at 53 for one. Al Hassan has 25, Sam Northeast has 11. And as if to prove it, there it is on the television screen. Indeed, available on uh, both county websites as well as on BBC website and app. I've posted a, a link on, on Twitter if you have been struggling to find it on the website. There are some new BBC uh, systems in place and I uh, was struggling to find it myself for a while. Um, they've got a different make of computer running things or something. Here comes Techno then, four overs, one for 16, bowling to North East, who is beaten by that one as he pushed forward. He might claim he took his bat out of the way. Let's see the evidence uh, of the replay. No, he pushed at it. Yes, yes, if he claims it, I think we can uh, safely say he's incorrect. <laughs> Sam Northeast, who has done an awful lot of interviews and has an awful lot of pictures taken. He uh, appeared on the BBC Test Match special podcast with Kevin Howells and Tamal Mill. Available if you wish to have a listen to that, reflecting on Lords. Has taken the balls and he's bowled him. Northeast's gone. After 526 runs since his last dismissal, Tickner has got one through Northeast defences. And the Glamorgan captain is finally dismissed. He's on his way back for 11. And Glamorgan a 53 for 2. Well, he's looked the bowler most likely to, hasn't he, Blair Tickner? Since he came on, got a wicket with the fourth ball. He bowled for Derbyshire, and uh, he's got a lo lot to move away. And that one might just either have held its line or moved in a fraction, but it was a sharp delivery. I will renew my call immediately for speed guns at every county championship ground. I'd love to know how quickly he's bowling. He is a 90-mile-an-hour bowler, uh, and that was a fairly sharp delivery. And 53 for two, Derbyshire with 20 minutes to get another wicket or two before lunch, and then they would be fully justified in their decision and a slightly shortened morning session to put Glamorgan into bat and to get rid of Sam Northeast for just 11, given the form that he's been in. Is uh, a real bonus as Kieran Carlson walks out to that. He skipped the side last season here, I think, in the last game, did he? He skipped the um, side for most of last season because David Lloyd was injured in the, the middle of the season and then uh, Derbyshire broke him again. He was meant to come back and lead in the last three championship games, Mr. Lloyd, but... Uh, yeah, they did break him, you're right. Well, he broke him. No, it was um, it was one of the Warwickshire bowlers who broke him from memory. Uh, and then he further damaged himself by ro rolling. Kind of whacking the ribs initially, didn't yes, he? Yes, then he rolled front first over a rope 
uh, with a boundary rope, and we never saw him again on the field, certainly. But yes, I thought Carlson had, uh, had skipped a little Morgan in that game that we played here in September. Yeah, Carlson will be doing both limited overs competitions for Glamorgan this season. Well, interesting, Lloyd won't be doing the white ball because uh, Samit Patel is in as the uh, the white ball captain for Derbyshire in their Harlem Globetrotters T20 side with Ross Whiteley, uh, Pat Brown, Meadowlark Lemon. He's coming in. <laughs> Tickner is in to bowl to Carlson, who's defending that one out on the offside. And there is no run. Is Mr Patel going to play any red ball or purely white ball? If he's available and they want him, he told me, he'd be happy to. But uh, he said on an interview, and it was quite interesting, really, uh, if you like that sort of thing, that his, um, his red ball... His desire to play red ball cricket diminished considerably when he realised he would no longer uh, have a chance of getting in the England Test team. It's a good few years ago now. Tickner bowls and Carlson manages to get uh, a defensive bat on that. Hurried slightly, pushing off a the outer half of the bat down into the gully into the sawdust and there is no run. But Samit and uh, Ross Whiteley, serial winners in... Uh, T20 cricket. Derbyshire haven't had too many serial winners in their teams over the years. Uh, the last time they did, when um, oh, you see, I shouldn't have started that sentence at all because the, the name has completely, <laughs> completely gone out of my head. It'll come back. Tickner running away from us at the Cathedral Road end. Bowls to Carlson, and that's through him as well. This is one heck of a spell from the Kiwi. And, uh, well, he's, uh, he's proving his worth already. Absolutely. Uh, Imran Tahir was the name I was trying to uh, dredge from my memory. Uh, and he, last time Derbyshire, or the only time Derbyshire got the finals day, he was in the team, so uh, I think... Um, I should be able to remember finals day, because it's only happened once, but <laughs> the day itself was uh, not great. Uh, it's happened twice for Glamorgan. Well, semi-finals day has happened twice. Yes, yeah, that's how it was. Tickner into Carlson, who pushes that firmly towards point. Where Anuj Dahl is the fielder. Applause from the crowd for an excellent over from Blair Tickner, who's now two for 16 in five overs. 17 overs gone. He's probably got a, a couple more to uh, squeeze any life out of uh, the uh, Kookaburra ball before it is likely to prove less responsive for several hours thereafter. And we'll see if uh, Tickner bowls another couple since his tail's up at the moment. Yes, you'd expect so, wouldn't you? I wish you were already calling him Ticks. <laughs> Two for Ticks. <laughs> Excellent. Anuj Dahl with uh, a couple of slips. Wayne Madsen with the helmet on at second slip. He's a little bit closer than David Lloyd. Bowls to Zain al Hassan who pushes this one up towards mid-off where it's fielded by Zach Chappell and uh, there is no run. That was a wicket made in the last, uh, it was. the last over. Which is why there was a slightly more prolonged applause, I think. This is Jack Morley carrying the water or the drinks, whatever's in the bottles, just going around the boundary. One of the two players left out from the 13-man squad is Dahl Bowles. That one is turned into the leg side by Al Hassan, fielded by Alex Thompson. And there is no run. Yorkshire recovering to 75 for three now against Gloucestershire across the bridge in Bristol. At Northampton, 90 for one against Middlesex at Wantage Road. And at Grace Road, Leicestershire, who were put into bat at 116 for three in the 25th over. And comes Dahl and Bowles. That one is defended by all Hassan up to the hatless Reese at mid-on. Wall-to-wall sunshine in South Wales. As oh, ever. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I can barely remember a day being lost here over the years or that misty p 
pink ball game in 2017. Oh, <laughs> that was dreadful, wasn't it? was dreadful for Glamorgan. It was dreadful all round, really, as Dal bowls wide of the off stump, left alone by Ul Hassan. Just notice to Alex Thompson, who warms up for a long, long time when he does warm up. And he's just starting to stretch a little bit. So the uh, obligatory... Uh, traditional. Yeah, the obligatory over of uh, off spin before lunch. We may well get to see that in 12, 13 minutes' time from now. No overs lost, which is 7 o'clock finish, as this next one is uh, off a, a leading edge out into the offside as he tried to drive there, Zain Ol Hassan. It's filled it by Harry Kane. Josh De Kerr's shocked us all by coming on at about 14 minutes to one uh, oh, at uh, Lords. Ridiculously early. He got two overs in then, didn't he? Yeah. Mm, not sure that'll catch on. <laughs> Dahl is in again, and Bowles all beats the edge of Ul Hassan's bat. Nicely taken by a standing up Brook guest. And there is no run. And the over 53 for two. That's, is that successive maiden overs? Yes. I think it is. Yeah, well, yes, it must be because there were 53 for two when uh, Sam Northeast was dismissed. Yes, unfortunately, from a Welsh point of view, dear listener, you heard that correctly. Sam Northeast has been dismissed for the first time since mid September. <laughs> He's done well. Of course, he didn't face Derbyshire's bowling no. attack at the end of last no, season. No, he did have the last match off. Tickner is in to try and call further damage. That's down leg side, and Carlson is not tempted in the end to flick at it. He's missed a perpetual motion, Blair Tickner. He, he jogs his follow through and then jogs halfway back to his mark but he's sharp mm. I like what I'm seeing he's a busy man making up for lost time from last week obviously as he runs in and bowls and Carlson defends a straight delivery that Tickner flicks back at him and uh, hits Carlson on the pads and Carlson obligingly picks it up and Throws it back to uh, Tickner. And I'm obliged to Colston from the uh, the Burton Mail, who's just pointed out to me that the speeds are on the uh, on the stream. 83.3, it reckoned. Uh, and he says for that one, so I don't know which one it was, but it seems a little sharper than that to me. Thanks, Colston. As Tickner is in and bowls, and Carlson defends. Evan Jones emails work absolutely dead don't admit it i'm a 20 minute walk away so just booking the afternoon off and we'll pop over to enjoy the weather and hopefully see some big runs from clammy i'm assuming i can pay at the case i'm sure your money will be very welcome mr jones yes i think uh, i think we can safely say there'll be a seat for you <laughs> it holds about eighteen thousand, doesn't it um 15 i believe mm. tickner bowls and carlson on the defensive testing spell Steve West asks, how often has a former Glamorgan captain won the toss as captain against them and used all his local knowledge to select <laughs> insertion of our heroes I would deduct them points <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure that you need a vast amount of local knowledge to, to bowl first in in April uh, there's a little bit more moisture around than there was at Lords when it backfired on Middlesex. Tickner in to bowl to Carl Snap in the block hole. That is a no ball. Mm. Signifies umpire Bainton and Glamorgan move off the tally of 53 and up to 55. His first blemish. Falling apart already. Well, I'm just looking at him when he walks back. He, he doesn't. He tends not to walk through the crease, so he actually went round on the leg side there in between the umpire and the, uh, the non-striker, which was interesting. Take that in to bowl to Carlson, who turns the wrists on that one and gets off the mark with some runs down towards square leg. It may reach the boundary. It does reach the boundary in front of the grandstand, and Carlson is up and running for his home account at Sapphire Gardens this season. Morgan move on to 59 for two. And Carlson uh, last week was 77 and three not out. Uh, so which four not out as Chapel couldn't overhaul that one. 
59 for two. Thompson, I suppose, may be bowling the next over from, from this end. This is the end of Tickner's sixth, the last ball thereof. And uh, Carlson plays it gently to cover. Harry Kame does the fielding. Another man with lots of runs against uh, Glamorgan last season at Derby in particular. Uh, 59 for two are Glamorgan. Reese. Reese, 590 runs. Is looking for his fifth successive century. That's uh, two in each innings. Uh, not two in each innings. Uh, two in each match. Two in each innings would be good. Well, I suppose one you could say he scored two in one of the innings because he was 201 not out. But yes. Yeah. Nobody in the, I was no I don't know how, how true this is, but I was told that nobody in the history of first class cricket has scored five centuries in a row against the same opposition. I'm sure Mr Griffin will be on the case if uh I'm sure he will. Reese gets going. It's uh Zayn Hassan on strike now as Dahl begins a new over, balls wide of the off stump taken by uh Brooke Guest as it's left alone. That's a slightly peculiar make up of the slips there. Oh, placing of the slips. Well, he's, he's quite a long way forward, isn't he? The second slip went round so much. He's mm. got the helmet on. David Lloyd is about, what, two or three metres behind him at mm. first slip. And then an Iron Donald fairly close in at uh, at Gully. So, obviously not expecting huge carry with Dahl bowling off this wicket. He's in again and bowls. That one is driven a full delivery up towards Zach Chapel by all the sun. Once again, there's no run. Yes, Ul Hassan may be inspired by the example of Kashi Valley, the first uh, graduate of the South Asian Cricket Academy to score a first-class century, which he promptly followed up with another one for Worcestershire against Warwickshire last week. Yes. Zain Ul Hassan was looking to play forward to playing against the South Asian Cricket Academy in a, in a warm-up here, but it didn't happen due to general sogginess. <laughs> yes. Dahl in again and bowls. That one is driven by Ul Hassan again. It's a, an unnecessary tumbling stop. Oh, harsh. From, uh, <laughs> from Zach Chapel. He could have just bent down and picked it up, really, couldn't he? It's a long way down. Yeah. Uh, Zach Chapel. Six foot five. Yeah. Your, your sort of dab. Yes, no, he's, he's, I think he's slightly taller than me. So I think that, that might be. <laughs> Slightly inaccurate as uh, Dahl is in. That one is driven quite a long way away from his body, the bat. And it's fielded by Harry Kane. Banana corrects me quite right, too. Emran here didn't play in the year that they got to finals day. The overseas was Logan Van Beek. Mm. Um, Ash Thorne says, it's wonderful to have cricket back. Keep it as average as ever. Thank you, Ash. <laughs> <laughs> he, has put an out, he has put a very smiley face at the end of it. Oh, that's all right. He, he to insult your commentary team and then put an emoji I, I don't on. think he was insulting the whole commentary team, <laughs> just me, and I'm more than happy to take it, Ash. That one beats the edge of it. He might just have played inside it. All Hassan goes through to Brooke Guest. He, he then follows up and says he's got a nickname for our new man, and quite frankly, Ash, this is, this is less than average. Um, he says, Ken Dodd. Well, he had a tickner stick, didn't he? No, he didn't. He had a tickling <laughs> stick, and that's, that's, that's poor. That's poor from you, Ash. If you've got anything better feel absolutely free to come back otherwise uh, I'll speak to you again tomorrow here is Dahl final ball of his sixth over he's in and bowls and that one is uh, turned back on a square on the leg side of the inside edge of the bat by Ul Hassan and they pick up a single so he keeps the strike and is on 26 60 for two Glamorgan after 20 overs with four minutes left and Alex Thompson's coming up to bowl. Hey. So we are going to see some, fancy that, some off spin. Spinach before lunch. So uh, Derbyshire might look to get a further over in at the other end as well, since we have the, the tall Cardiff Met University's product. Uh, and another Welsh connection, yeah. Absolutely another Welsh right. connection. Well, his, his best bowling figures remain... I'm sure his bowling figures for when he was bowling for Cardiff Met. Oh I right. think, unless he, because he got a couple of five for last season. Derbyshire's leading wicket taker in the championship with, mm. a, with a charge last season. 
Yeah, best uh, first class bowling, 638. Cardiff Uni against Hampshire, 2016. I thought so. I thought so. Good knowledge. The way back of the mind kind of nonsense, isn't it? Uh, Banana, who is Chris Bridden, has come back and said the England team played in the season that Derbyshire lost in the quarter final to Hampshire, so that was 2016. Um, when Sh- Shahid uh, Afridi scored that century for Hampshire at Derby. Um, I remember seeing uh, Imran Tahir play here, but I think that was for South Africa running around very excitedly mm. doing his airplane celebration. 60 for two, three minutes to lunch. Glamorgan in no particular hurry to face another over after this one. Zain Al Hassan is the man on strike on 26 not out this is will be the 21st over of the innings but we didn't start until 11:30 so derbyshire have not been particularly slow and they're not helped by all hassan uh, i think <laughs> realizing the time and doing a bit of extra gardening He's got two on the drive on the offside has uh, thompson to bowl the left-handed all hassan and bowls a full toss which is hammered straight to mid off. Loosener. A loosener. <laughs> <laughs> hammered straight to mid off. Chapel did the fielding and there was a dot ball, a rather fortunate dot ball. Thompson balls. Ooh, a bit of uh, mm. bit of turn there for that, his first that ball. That appeared to turn quite a long way. Mm. Which is uh, good for Thompson. Not so good for Jack Morley, who's standing on the boundary's edge with a helmet under his arm, waiting to bring it on for somebody. So, Thompson to Ul Hassan again. And Ul Hassan drives into the offside, but it's well stopped by one of the two short cover fielders. As another helmet comes on. Who's going to wear it and where are they going? And Aaron Donald's got it on. Is he going to leg slip? I'm sure he's 100% convinced it's his helmet. <laughs> What's the wicketkeeper doing there? Oh, no, he's there. Uh, that's Wayne Madsen. Um, the three helmeted uh, fielders now. So the slip, Wayne Madsen has still got his on second slip. And a leg slip. Thompson to Al Hassan, who pushes forward. Oohs and ahs, but uh, there was some turn, and it was away from the stumps, and Al Hassan didn't play a shot at that. 60 for two. Enjoy your lunch. Thank you, Dave. Dave Fletcher will be back for the afternoon session at 1.40 as Thompson bowls to Ul Hassan, who plays that one comfortably enough off the uh, back foot on the offside. The clock on the digital scoreboard has reached uh, one o'clock. So there will be no... 22nd over of the first session as uh, Thompson bowls and Ul Hassan comes a long way forward and uh, pads it away. That is in fact the last delivery of the morning session and Glamorgan close at 60 for 2 with Ul Hassan on 26 and Carlson on 4. The men out. Billy Root caught behind by Brooke Guest off the bowling of Blair Tickner for 17. Sam Northeast bowled by Tickner for 11, an excellent delivery after Northeast's had 526 runs between first class dismissals. But Derbyshire, David Lloyd will be happy with his decision to put Glamorgan in, thanks to the two wickets from Debutant Blair Tickner. The players make their way off. We'll be back for commentary at 1.40.
lots of uh, strong scores in the other games taking place elsewhere around the country in the Vitality County Championship. We'll start in the game at Edgbaston, where Warwickshire are 121 without loss. That's against Durham. Also in Division 1, Kent at Roche are 120.
Oh, welcome back. The players are out for the uh, start of the afternoon session here at Sapphire Gardens. Glamorgan against Derbyshire. Day one, a slightly uh, truncated first session, just 90 minutes rather than two hours due to a, an issue or two uh, uh, with uh, some damp uh, areas of the field. But we are now out. Uh, we were out, and now we're back out. And the Glamorgan are 60 for... I've no idea what I'm talking about. 60 for two. Uh, with Zainal Hassan, the opener on 26, Kieran Carlson on 4, two men out this morning, Billy Root for 17, Sam Northeast for 11, both victims to Blair Tickner in his first spell in the country as a Derbyshire player, six overs, one made in two for 22. And now I'm going to attempt something I vowed never to do. I'm joined in the commentary position by David Pritchard. Expertly done, Dave. Well, I, I just keep practicing. I, I butcher people's names for a living, effectively, when I'm doing football. So uh, It's that double D that has caught many a person out, so don't worry about it. Yes, yes, those of us who aren't, who aren't native. <laughs> that and the 20-mile-an-hour speed limit. It's going to be Sam Connors from the River Taff end. Uh, to bowl the first delivery after lunch. Bowls at the Kieran Carson. There's a big appeal for leg before wicket from... Uh, mainly from Sam Connors. The ball dribbles down into the ground, into the leg side. I have to see a replay, probably too high. Whether it was going to hit the stumps or not is another question. But we watch a replay now. Nicely slow, to probably go down leg side, isn't it? And then just to make sure the umpire thought that, he moved his leg about a foot and a half outside the leg stump after he'd uh, played the shot. Nicely done. Yeah, height was my first thought, but then I thought perhaps the appeal was because Kieran Carlson's knee roll doesn't get that much. Higher than the stumps. <laughs> yes. Worth chanting their arm. Next delivery is, oh, he was trying to leave that one alone. It's come off the face of the bat and gone down the third man. Is it going to go all the way to the boundary? There are two fielders chasing it, and it just gets to the boundary. Ahead of one of them. I'm trying to see who, oh, it's David Lloyd, who uh, had a, an unpleasant moment at Warwickshire. Against Warwickshire at Edgebaston last season in the white ball game, playing for Derbyshire on the line when he went over the uh, boundary rope uh, on his front. He'd already been hitting the ribs when he was batting, and we never saw him again. But on that occasion, he pulled up just short of the rope, but the ball didn't. And it was a false shot from Carlson. It moves on to eight. 64 for two. Hello to Ant and Parry, listening in sunny Torrey Molinos. Nice. It's sunny in Cardiff as well, Ant, I can tell you. Looking forward to listening to all the commentary while working while at work this summer, he says, as this next delivery is a fuller length delivery from Sam Connors and pushed up to mid-off by Carlson. At Fletch, well, there's a, there's a whole, there's a, any number of ways of getting in touch with us. You know how to do it now. I always say that because I've forgotten everybody else's and it would be rude just to read mine out. But uh, do get in touch. It's always good to hear from you to prove that the three of us aren't just talking to each other and ourselves, which I know we're not. Here is, <laughs> here is Connors, bowls to Carlson, who pushes it straight back. Yeah, I'm always impressed by the breadth of correspondence that we get in terms of locations. I think we had uh, a message from Miami in a game last season, Italy, all sorts of places, Torre Molinos. Torre Molinos. That's old school, isn't it? Old school Spain, Torre Molinos. Uh, I didn't ask Drew, but uh, yeah, he's given me a nickname for uh, Blair Tickner. In comes Connors and Bowles to Carlson, who pushes this one up to mid-off again. This time it is to Harry Kane, who's fielding at mid-off. I thought for a moment. Lewis Reese had put a cap on. Um, he thinks he should be called Merlin or Gandalf. Because Blair, Blair Witch Project, Mel Witch is a wizard, a wizard is Merlin or Gandalf. I think that's possibly pushing it too far, Drew. But uh, I'll pass it on. <laughs> yeah, if he likes his nicknames tenuous, we can put that to him by all means. That is, that is the most tenuous of nicknames. In comes Connors again, and this one is clipped into the leg side quite nicely off his hip by Carlson. It was the final ball of the over, so he'll keep the strike as he picks up a single. Moves on to 9.65. For two at the end of the first over. The over eight is in red and it's minus one. Here we go again. Not entirely sure. Uh, 
there was a little bit of messing around from the, the batters as much as the bowlers just before lunch, and they did manage to get in uh, 21 overs in an hour and a half, which isn't great, I know, but Derby should tend not to bowl their overs particularly quickly, sadly. Yeah, it's the uh, scourge of the game, isn't it, in these in these times, over eights. Certainly shouldn't aim to leave a cricket ground at six o'clock under any circumstances any time soon. So Zach Chappell will open up this session at the Cathedral Road end as he did in the morning session. Tidy start to his day's work with just the four runs coming from his four overs, including two maidens. As a third slip joins the cordon, and it will be Kieran Carlson to face this delivery from Chapel, who's over the wicket, and pitching it up, and Carlson defends that for no run. Yeah, some steady starts around the grounds in Division 2. Leicestershire 133 for 3 against Sussex. Northamptonshire 106 for 1. And the much vaunted Yorkshire batting lineup 99 for 5 mm. at Gloucestershire. Root and Brook both out there relatively cheaply. As Chapel turns and runs in once more from the Cathedral Road end. He's in and just back of a length, and Carlson pushes that defensively for no run. Root's first game of the season, isn't it, this one? He didn't play uh, in the last round of matches. Shama Sood still there on 49, not out. The former Derbyshire batsman. Harry Brook made 26. Root made just two. Finley Bean out for a duck. And a lot to expect it of uh, Bean this season. It is a good batting lineup, though. Here comes Chapel. Charging in. Again, Carlson defends for the third dot in succession in this over. Yeah, bat getting the better of the ball in Division 1 as well. Warwickshire, 152 without loss against Durham. Somerset, 132 for 1 at Surrey. Nottinghamshire, 86 for 2 against Worcestershire. Hampshire, 99 for 2 against Lancashire. And Essex, 129 for two at home against Kent. Here comes Chapel once more over the wicket. Carlson defending to point this time for no run. Yeah, whether it's a combination of good pitches this time of year or the Kookaburra ball that we talked about this morning, it does seem like batters are having a good time of it. Well, all four in the second division, four matches in the second division, the team that won the toss put the opposition in because that's what you do in April. But when you're playing with a Kookaburra ball, but what are we on now? 22 overs and four balls. It should have a little bit of life left in it, but not much. Here's Chapel. Carlson tries to drive on the back foot, but that's fielded for no run. Which is a real shame. But uh, the powers that be have told us that we have to use it. And therefore we have to use it. Four matches in total this season will be played with Kookaburras. Two can be played on hybrid pitches. Don't mix the two, for goodness sake. I would, that would be my only plea. As Chapel begins his run for the final ball of this over, it's a full ball which Carlson flicks away off his legs nicely for four through the mid-wicket region. Nicely tied by Carlson, a little full and two straight from Chapel. Nicely dispatched by Carlson. He moves on to 13 and Glamorgan a 69 for two. Yeah, what I would say is that the first spell bowled by Zach Chapel was pretty decent. And uh, he's just... Uh, he didn't look as threatening in that over as he did on occasion in his in his first four overs. So perhaps he will be a little more tired, of course, potentially full of sausage and mash. <laughs> and uh, the ball is a little bit older. So uh, we're going to have to work hard. Uh, this is interesting. No, it's not. Uh, the, the ball was <laughs> thrown to Lewis Rees, who, of course, hasn't got his cap on. I thought he was going to come on to replace Sam Connors after one over, but he isn't. He's merely polishing the ball. I've just seen the uh, 
Well, we've seen five bowlers because we had one over of uh, spin just before the lunch interval from Alex Thompson. One over. It was a maiden. He got one to turn a long way. And here is Connors. In and bowls wide of the off stump. Left alone by Ul Hassan. Goes through to Brooke Guest. And there's no run. So, yeah, Chapel. Five overs for eight, which is still pretty decent. Sam Connors beginning his sixth over. Five overs for 28. Going into this one. Six overs. Uh, one maiden. Two for 22 for Blair Tickner. And as well, six overs for 11. And Alex Thompson at one over which was a maiden just before lunch from the uh, Cathedral Road end. Connor's on his way in again. 69 for two, Glamorgan. And Connor's bowls to Ul Hassan, who guides this one square on the offside. Dal runs around to do the filling, but the batsmen scamper through for a single. And it's 70 for two. Yeah, Tickner seemed to be bowling in a different game, didn't he, before yes, lunch? absolutely. Bowled beautifully, moved it both ways. Bowled at a good pace, good carry from the pitch. He was a, he was a menace. Let him get rested and bring him back. <laughs> Zach Chapel is just moving around from uh, what he thought was fine leg, but wasn't because it's a right-handed batsman. Two fine leg or long leg. Tickner just stretching at mid on. As Connors is in and bowls to Carlson, who defends this one straight back to the ball. Goes past him actually and picked up by. Lewis Reese, Alex Thompson's out in the mid-wicket boundary. Harry came in at uh, closest catching mid-wicket. Who's that at cover? And Aaron Donald with uh, Anish Dahl at backward point as ever when he's not bowling. Two slips, David Lloyd and Wayne Madsen. And then mid-on and mid-off. As Connors comes into ball, and it's uh, pushed up towards Midon, who is Blair Tickner. And again, there's no room. There isn't anybody out. I'm trying to work out where Matt Lamb was taking that drink. He's just gone to sit immediately behind the pitch. On one of the picket fences in front of the sight screen. He actually looks quite chilly, even though he's, uh, he's got a short-sleeved Derbyshire top on. As Connors is in once again, that's an aggressive shot from Carlson, but he doesn't get hold of it at all as the ball dribbles towards uh, Anuj Dahl at backward point. He looked quite annoyed with himself there, didn't he, Carlson? <laughs> Down on one, he carving it away. Unfortunately for him, it went absolutely nowhere. Yeah, he's a busy player at the crease, Carlson, looking to manoeuvre himself into a position that allowed him to work it through those fielders. Didn't work out on that occasion, but a yeah, industrious kind of batter. He faces the next delivery from Connors. It's on his legs and he clips it down towards a fine leg. Good stop down below us by Zach Chapel. Nice piece of fielding. He gets the applause of the crowd and of uh, Matt Lamp. And they go through for just the one. Carlson moves on to 14. Oh, Hassan has 27 into the over. 71 for two. 24 overs gone. Yeah, been quite gentle progress from Glamorgan. Just going at just a touch under three and over. As we've been saying, with the exception maybe of Connors, who's maybe been a bit leaky at times, it's been tight from the Derbyshire bowling attack. Tickner obviously has been the, the standout, but the others have... have uh, been tidy without being all that threatening. Chapel will hope to change that as he comes in over the wicket to Carlson down the leg side and no run there as Guest takes it. You get the impression maybe Chapel, like some bowlers do, five dots at the start of his last over, almost got bored, didn't he? <laughs> tried the miracle ball we'll at just the try end. Try something here, yes. <clears throat> He, he, can, he builds up a decent head of steam. Zach Chapel clearly has wicket taking deliveries in him. And here he comes again to Carlson. It's a full ball. He drives that to mid on for no run. Yeah, he must be thinking, what was Blair Tickner doing at this end that I'm not? Where, where's he getting that movement from? 
Extra five mile an hour might have helped. <laughs> or more. Tea will be at four o'clock, everybody. It will be set in stone due to the half hour that we lost earlier. Could be a long evening session. Here comes Ticknut. Bowling to Carlson, who defends for no run. Morgan, 71 for two. Midway through the 25th over. And Aaron Donald's just jogged all the way to Sam Connors. Perhaps with a bit of inside knowledge of Kieran Carlson. Yeah, he is someone he'd know well. How about trying this in the next over if you're bowling to him? Fair amount of that with David Lloyd out there as well. And of course they played they've played each other regularly over the years. These two sides. Here comes Chapel over the wicket again to Carlson, who's driving on the full here. It's a nice looking shot. There's a race on for the fielders. It's Sam Connors who'll cut it off. And Carlson will settle for two runs there. Didn't quite middle it. There's a full ball from Chapel. Morgan move on to 73 for two. Nice bit of work from Connors. When he's just thinking about what he's going to bowl in the next over, and he has to suddenly leap into action. Yeah, Connors and Chapel have shown up. The, the days of fast bowlers doing nothing but bowling are long gone. They're athletes in the field as well as Chapel is in again to Carlson, who defends. Yes, you can't hide anymore, can you? Yeah, the days of lanky fast bowlers sticking a boot on it yeah. are long gone. Well, not that long. Uh, Ravi Rampal used to do yeah. it on a regular basis when he was at Derbyshire, even during my time, which was always very amusing. When the game's petering out, I've seen Zach Chappell do it on occasion, save his back. And here is Chappell putting his back into that one, but Carlson leaves it outside the off stump, and that dot ball ends the 25th over with Glamorgan 73 for two. Scratching away at the uh, the footmarks there. Zach Chappell, as bowlers tend to do when things aren't going 100% their way. And they've added 13 so far in the afternoon session of uh, Glamorgan. In the four overs we've had. I'll be pleased with that. No further loss. Glamorgan players on the balcony. Of the pavilion away to our left hand side. As Connors begins his latest over from the River Taff end, bowling to Al Hassan wide of the Ostum. He allows the ball to go through to Brooke Guest, the wicket keeper. Yeah, you see Colin Ingram with his pads on there next in for Glamorgan, fresh off a century at Lords and while the, the pace has been quite sedate so far. Ingram is the kind of player who will yes. get a move on. So he won't hang around, will he? <laughs> Connors turns at the top of his mark. The three slips crouch down and he bowls to Al Hassan outside the old stump and allows it to go through to the wicketkeeper. Gets more applause from uh, David Lloyd at first slip, his skipper. It was a very comfortable leave. No oohs and ahs, which tells you that it didn't pass too close to the stumps. Yeah, I'll be interested to see just how much the ball settled down now with the kookaburra, as we've talked about. Generates less movement as it gets older compared to the Duke's ball that we tend to see in the county championship. Connor's in and balls that one. is uh, just hurrying him up a little bit, Al Hassan, but he pushes it up to mid on and there's no run. Yeah, Wayne Madsen has decided it's not going to do an awful lot. He's uh, starting to practice his golf swing. <laughs> Some nice courses around here if he, if he fancies a, yeah, yeah. a trip. I'm sure he does. Connor's just been handed the ball by Lewis Reese. He's on his way in again now. Running towards us. Balls to Al Hassan. Stri st strikes him on the pad. It was too high. They got excited. I got excited. All for nothing. 
the appeal was uh, stifled pretty quickly, and uh, understandably so. Yeah, even Connors himself lost it interest was, about halfway through, didn't he? There was no conviction in it at all, was there? No conviction in it at all. Understandably. But a good over so far from Connors. Four dot balls. Can he finish it off? He's conceded 30 already in 6.4. He's in bowls to Ul Hassan, who pushes this one off the back foot, up on his toes, out into the offside, where it's fielded by Harry Kame. Okay, we will see Kame over in the batting with Lewis Rees at some point. It doesn't feel like it might be today at this stage, but you never know. There's still... Uh, Actually, we've only had 26 overs of the uh, of the 96, so there's a lot of cricket. We could see Derbyshire back today, I suppose. As Connors is in to complete the over, and this one is turning to the leg side. It's not going to be a maiden because they're going to pick up a couple of runs here as around the boundary. Initially runs Alex Thompson, but it's actually fielded by Lewis Rees. They pick up two. All the sand moves on to 29. Carlson has 16, and Glamorgan has 75. 4-2 after 26 overs and Duff, I'm going to leave you by yourself now I've I'd, I'd no idea where uh, where Nick Webb is but I shall reprimand him when I see him Cheers Dave Yeah, Clem Morgan building a lead slowly but surely a watchful start from Zain Hassan in particular he's 27, 29 sorry off 82 balls, Carlson unbeaten on 16 from 33 as Nick Webb makes his way back into the commentary box with Zach Chappell continuing from the Cathedral Road end. In he runs to Carlson, who's on the back foot and defending for no run. Welcome back, Nick. Thank you. It's quite warm outside. Where's this been all year? <laughs> Could have done with a bit of it before now. See, the North Wales club season has been pushed back two weeks because uh, grounds in the area are so wet in the uh, top league. As Chapel runs in over the wicket to Carlson, it's a short ball which he pulls and pulls nicely for six. First six of the innings for Glamorgan. Clean strike from Carlson on the back foot from a short ball from Chapel. Takes Carlson on to 22 and Glamorgan at 81 for two. That was well executed, wasn't it? Uh, to the shorter side of the ground, but uh, very firmly struck up to the grandstand. Field didn't move. Yeah, there hasn't been much short stuff so far today. And maybe Carlson's shown us why. Rather sat up nicely for him, but as you said, Nick, nicely executed, put away as Chapel runs in again. Another short <laughs> ball this time, Carlson gets out of the way. And a few words from Chapel for Carlson there. <laughs> yes, Carlson with a grin on his face. Chapel rather less so as uh, Ian Dillon Hassan. Engaged in a bit of mid-wicket gardening as well. Bit of a height difference between uh, Kieran Carlson and Zach Chappell. Probably uh, nine or ten inches between the two. Carlson followed him all the way down the track, to be fair to him, though. He's not put off by that height difference. As he faces up to another ball from Chappell over the wicket, he's in. On a length this time, and Carlson declines a run. Chappell glares at him once more. Bit of a rivalry brewing here between the two. <laughs> Yeah, it all been rather watchful and careful from Glamorgan until Carlson exploded into life with that six. Run rate still there. Just moved above three runs and over, actually, after that maximum. As Chapel turns and runs in. A full ball, which Carlson looks to leave, but it's the top edge of his bat and goes to safely to third slip. Been one or two strange leaves from Carlson, haven't they, where you don't actually <laughs> succeed in leaving the ball? 
on the slab machine is is prone to to that, isn't he? Um, swish of the bat around the ball, even if he's not trying to hit it. Yeah, I wonder if Carlson has the accompanying uh, extravagant no run <laughs> call <laughs> as Chapel is in again full, but Carlson works it off his legs. There'll be at least one run here. Oh, Hassan thinks about a second, but Carlson declines the offer. And that's the end of the 27th over with Glamorgan 82 for two. Thank you, Dav. Dav Pritchard will be uh, back in due course. If uh, we can tear him away from a, uh, a seat in the Safari Garden sunshine, Carlson and Al Hassan meet for uh, a little mid wicket chat. 82 for 2, Derbyshire's overrate is minus 1. Nothing too much to worry about since we've only seen uh, a token appearance uh, from the spinner, Alex Thompson. So far, I suspect he will have some work to do as this innings progresses. The ball, 27 overs old now, and uh, we'll get... Less productive, you suspect, as a new over sees uh, Connors bowling to Carlson, who's forward, playing to mid-off, and there is no run. 82 for two. Man out. Root, court guest, bold Tickner for 17. Northeast, bold Tickner for 11. Blair Tickner, six overs, two for 22 in his uh, first spell for the county. In comes Connors again. Bowls to Carlson, who's forward, playing into the covers. And there's no run. Two slips, Lloyd and uh, Madsen. And Aaron Donald was in that area earlier on, but has now departed to... Uh, I think, where is he? Can't pick him out at the moment, but uh, elsewhere in the field. 82 for two. Connors in to ball and uh, Carlson forward playing defensively out into the covers where an Aaron Donald does the fielding and there's no run. Tosses it all up to the, the hatless Lewis Reese Scourge of Glamorgan last season with that remarkable run of innings. At uh, Derby, Reese scored 131 and 201 not out. And in Cardiff in September, Reese hit 139 and 119 not out. 590 runs for twice out. Connors bowls. Carlson with a whip of the wrist. Plays that one out to square leg. It takes the single. And Glamorgan move on to 83 for two. As umpire Bainton chugs across from... Square leg for the re right hander to uh, square leg for the left handed Zain Al Hassan. Who's dug in? He's on 29, not out. Can he kick in? Kick on even. Zain Al Hassan, who uh, had a lot of starts last season. Top score of 69 was against Derbyshire as Connors comes round the wicket and all of a sudden drives back nicely past the bowler to chase on for Tickner up to the far end of the ground but he hauls the ball in just inside the, uh, the ropes and keeps them down to two runs and Glamour can move on to 85 for two so the, the Kiwi showing that he's willing to put in a chase as well as put in his uh, bowling spells as he pursued that one up towards the uh, the river taff end 85 for two al hassan moves into the 30s he's on 31 not out three slips as donald rejoins the cordon and uh, that's dropped down on the offside sprawling half stop by donald and uh, there's no run. 85 for two. Pleased to uh, welcome the Glamorgan batter keeper, Will Smale, to the uh, commentary box. Good afternoon, Will. Hi, Nick. Thanks. Good to be on here. Lovely day for it. It's uh, about time the, the Welsh weather changed. <laughs> Great to see that for the first championship game of the year at Safari Gardens. Indeed. I 
presume you were meant to be playing down in Taunton this week, were you? Yeah, absolutely. There was a second team game uh, scheduled down in Taunton starting last Monday. Um, that never materialised, so we, we didn't even travel to that. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, just a few nets um, in and around the range showers that we've had this week, and then we're uh, away to Northampton on Sunday. Fingers crossed. Yes. It's a bit more promising. Before the first team travel there as well. So Correct, uh, yeah. Any players needed to uh, double up, then uh, he'll be on location. 85 for two as uh, Chapel starts a, a new over. And uh, Carlson driving on the leg side, calling for a quick single to mid on and scampers home. That seemed a very tight single as uh, Connors filled it at mid on. I think Carlson would just about have been home, but there have been a few players in that Glamorgan side who wouldn't have uh, risked that single. Just played it fairly gently down, called straight away. Ul Hassan was, uh, well, on his blocks for a moment or two, and Carlson had to stretch watching the replay. <sighs> Tight would have gone to a television official, had. We had one. I, I don't think you could give that out had that struck with a naked eye. It was very tight when the ball passed the stumps, but uh, I don't think they could have given that out in real time. Agreed. Benefit of the doubt to the batter, though, I think. It was tight, though. 86 for two here on BBC Sport Online as uh, that's clipped off his legs by Zain Al Hassan through mid wicket. And. Uh, Fielder half slipping Anujdal on uh, one of the worn bits of the square. 87 for two. Carlson to 30. Uh, Hassan to 32, not out. Carlson on to strike as everyone swaps around. Chapel wiping his shaven head, glistening in the sunshine. 87 for two as. Uh, it's just got the two slips for Carlson. Mid-wicket is shortish on the drive, but uh, not required there because Carlson's just played it past him out towards the boundary, single taken out to uh, deep square leg. 88 for two. You, uh, you made it out of the field at least in the in the warm up, uh, keeping wickets. Uh, yeah. In the game against the students. Yeah. No. Was, I mean, that was our our only practice game. Um, prior to the season starting for the boys going to Lords so it was great for great for them to get some time in the middle um, Sam Northeast obviously took his form from that university game straight into the Lords game as well which is shows how valuable that was as Chapel comes around the wicket to bowl to Ul Hassan who plays no shot through to uh, to Guest did you actually make any nets out in the middle here at Sapphire Gardens before that uh, match against the students um, so the squad for that game against UCCE, we had uh, one net, I think, prior to that on the on the day before. Um, full credit to the ground staff and Robin. The, the nets have been pretty good for the for the weather and the conditions we've had. So um, preparation has been limited. Chapel in to bowl. All the sand plays that one on the leg side. There's a little hesitation before they decide there's a fielder. Nowhere near it, and Kame had a long way to go, and they're through for another single, rotating the strike nicely at the moment as Glamorgan move on to 89 for two, awaiting the next blast from uh, Blair Techner, the Kiwi pace man who uh, looked pretty sharp during that first spell. Yeah, I didn't see too much of him. We were just in and out of the indoor school, but he's obviously made made a bit of a difference. So, forward to seeing him. Seem to have a, a few m miles more of pace than the rest of the attack as uh, Carlson plays that on the leg side defensively, takes his hand off the bat. So that might have uh, jarred a little. Carlson signalling for something. 89 for two. Bad even Stevens at the moment. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's obviously 29 overs is normally a full session. Obviously, we lost half an hour this morning, so game's very much in the balance. Might be about to see is that Lewis Reese, or are we going to see some spin from Alex Thompson? They're getting the short leg pads out and Brooke Gaston's got his helmet on, so 
Looks like there'll be a change in the bowling from the river end. Looks like there's uh, a short leg um, padding up, as it were. There's a change of bowling at the river end. So Thompson, who uh, made a token appearance before lunch with one maiden over in the way of uh, first-class cricket. It was quite a shock at uh, Lords. I don't think it was De Kera's got uh, two overs before lunch. Yeah, that was, I mean, that wicket at Lords, I don't think anyone expected that to be the case, especially when we saw Middlesex wing the toss and bowling. <laughs> we were here training and saw the score column and thought it must be a bit of a green seamer, but certainly didn't play out that way. Both sides batted very well on, on a batter-friendly surface. It might have been more just the, the time of the year and uh, the overhead conditions rather than the pitch itself yeah, because the, the wicket actually looked remarkably uh, light brown for the, the time of year rather than any green tinges in it, as you expect at the beginning of April. Yeah, and obviously the debate about the Cooperable ball ah, yes. makes a... Uh, well, pushes its case, doesn't it, games like that? Well, Glamorgan's coach grad... Grant Bradburn said, uh, yep, we need to be playing with it. It makes bowlers work harder towards the international stage. Toby Rowland-Jones, a former <laughs> international bowler, uh, begged to disagree. In the post-match interviews, as Thompson, the tall figure, comes in from the River Taff end and uh, all his sand jabs rather uncertainly at it and gets it off the thickest edge down towards third man and hastens back for a second run. Pursued by Sam Connors down towards us at the Cathedral Road end. Well, the Sam moves on to 35 not out. And Glamorgan on to 91 for looks, two. Looks like there's a nice bit of spin and purchase for Thompson early in the game, which is a, a promising sign for the Glamorgan fan as well with Mason Crane making his debut. Yes, he certainly uh, turned one quite a long way in his first over before lunch, Thompson. So David Lloyd is helmeted now at second slip, which shows you how close in he will be. Gives his shades to Madsen at first. There's a short leg as well as uh, Thompson in bowls, and uh, Hassan, well, Hassan turns it at the pads of Donald at short leg. Bounces back towards the... Wickets. 91 for two. Glamorgan having been put in by Derbyshire and former Glamorgan captain David Lloyd. As uh, Al Hassan stretches forward and defends, Lloyd moves round from slip to field, tosses it back to Donald. 91 for two. Al Hassan 35 not out. Carlson 21 not out. Al Hassan. Pulls away, maybe a bit of last-minute chat close to the wicket that he wasn't happy with. And is beaten by that one, pushing forward. Thompson's doing something here. Yeah, it's, I just looked up at the flags by the pavilion as well. He's, he's got a nice breeze for that, that element of drift to go the opposite way to which he's spinning it. So he's able to bowl a few balls here to the left-hander or, or Hassan beating him on the outside. As uh, that sees... Uh, well, Hassan propping forward, defending out on the uh, leg side. Donald coming round from short leg to uh, to do the fielding. That element of drift will just make it feel like it's it could almost beat the bat on both edges. So a little bit harder for Zane, but working hard in this uh, roller's opening bat as he pushes forward which he was uh, thrust rather unexpectedly last season due to uh, due to injuries. His, um, the second team role was more of a sort of middle order all-rounder, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, the year before, in particular, when he played as a trialist, um, he was, some might even say he was trialling as a bowler at times, but, but showed great promise with the bat. And last year he did a he did a pretty good job of, of someone sort of came in for David Lloyd's injury I think uh, at the time so yeah he's um, he's done pretty well over the time he's, he's had it obviously Eddie Byram 
hopefully nearing a return from injury will look to come in at the top of the order as well. So Has he been round the dressing room yet, Eddie Byram? Eddie's always in the dressing room. <laughs> he loves it. Yeah, he's always about um I'm not exactly sure when he's when he's definitely due back but but he's looking pretty good and every time I see him he says he feels good. So hopefully it's not too long from uh, a player's and, and fans perspective. Yes, he seems to have been unlucky with injury, Eddie Byram, his third full season in the Glamorgan team. He had a nasty bang on the hip, which turned into an odd injury last season. Yeah, Tamar Mills uh, against Sussex, I think that was, which is, I mean, he's definitely not someone you want to get hit anywhere by, but unfortunately for Ed, it became a li little bit worse. Here's Tickner starting a new spell then, into bowl to Carlson, who jabs that off the back foot. Through the covers, well, came down fast, disappeared fast through the cover point area to the long boundary away to our left, four runs to Carlson. Lovely shot from Kieran. Stood on top of the bounce. That was nicely timed, wasn't it? Not a lot of width from Tickner, just put his hands through it. Imposing. Raced away. And then Byram, the, the previous... Um, Season had a rather unpleasant sounding in infection, which we won't go to into uh, <laughs> so soon after lunch. So he's been unlucky with uh, fitness. As Tickner's in, bowls, Carlson turns it off his legs down towards fine leg. There'll be a comfortable two. It's fielded uh, by Thompson running round the boundary, as that is the Glamorgan 100 up, 101 for two. And after being put into bat, I know it's not the riches of uh, Lords last week, but I think Glamorgan would be reasonably satisfied in passing. Oh, the scoreboard's gone down again. I think. Had it got a bit overexcited. It might have been a misclick first ball with two fours put on. So. Ah, 97 for two. The crowd will have to applaud again. Maybe they'll do so now as this one's clipped through mid wicket. I don't think it's going to reach the boundary, and uh, in fact, they just jog through for two rather than. Trying the uh, the third run. Apologies for the the scoring mishap. <laughs> it was a it was 99 on the board previously when they took a couple of runs and went backwards. 99 for two. So so fast on the board they're getting the, the runs up there before they've been scored. <laughs> Carlson on to 34. Almost caught all Hassan up. No surprise there. He is naturally the faster scorer, but he's defending that one back to Tickner. And there's uh, there's no run. The if history's anything to go by, the Cookerberry will be causing a lot fewer problems for the next couple of hours, I imagine. Will fingers crossed from a from a Glamorgan perspective, that would be nice. Um, yeah, reports back from Lords were, were that the ball stopped sort of swinging in the air um, pretty quickly. Tickner. Elbows jutting is into bowl to Carlson, who drives rather airily with one hand off the bat and sends uh, it down to square leg, which is not where he was aiming. Takes the single, and for the second time in the space of a few minutes, the crowd applaud for 100. Yeah, Mia Hamza sort of was speaking to David Harrison this morning about it and, and, and sort of felt that the ball probably stopped swinging for him after two or three overs, which... For someone who's very used to bowling with a Cooper ball himself in the subcontinent, um, you'd think he'd be the best exponent of it, but unfortunately didn't <laughs> move as much as he maybe, maybe would have wanted. Round the wicket, Tickner, the left-handed Ul Hassan, who's driving, not quite timing it, back to the Bowler, which in fact ran to uh, mid-off instead. I thought for a moment Mr. Bainton was uh, signalling a no ball, but he he just had his uh, hand outstretched to give Tickner back his cap at the end of the over. 100 for two. Glamorgan having been put into bat. We started half an hour late, but we will continue half an hour longer this evening. It's just so nice to have uninterrupted uh, cricket for Glamorgan, whereas no Derbyshire followers and listeners will be extremely uh, frustrated by last week. You just want to get out in the middle at this time of year, don't you? Yeah, I saw some of the um, some of the pictures of, of of the ground up at Derby um, last week for their game against Gloucestershire and looked pretty wet. So, yeah, I can imagine 
They were itching for some cricket to start. Quite nice to not have to look to the sky though and, and worry too much about any rain clouds at present. So, Yeah, I think we're all right for the next uh, couple of days as well over the weekend. If listeners fancy coming down, they should see a reasonable amount of cricket, no more than the odd uh, passing shower. The forecast for Monday is uh, slightly more mixed if the game does go the distance. And uh, it'll be Thompson bowling to Carlson with Madsen in at slip. Donald at, uh, at short leg. Coming around the wicket is the offspinner at the moment, the right-handed Carlson. And uh, pushed into the leg side. There's no run. Odd seeing David Lloyd in the, the opposition camp, even though we knew about it for uh, most of last season. Taking over as Derbyshire Red Bull captain, having done the same job for Glamorgan. Down the wicket comes Carlson and uh, has put that one over long on. There's a bit of a chase and it's plugged. It's uh, stopped about two metres inside the rope as uh, Tickner does the fielding. Two taken, Carlson to 37. Carlson looked up in the air for a moment there. Yeah, nice attacking option from Kieran. It's, it's a slightly interesting field set by Thompson with a man sort of on the short mid wicket shoulder, almost trying to say, well, we'll try and cover that um, sort of flick over mid wicket. But he got it straight enough and, and far enough for two. Thompson in to Carlson again, defending back to the bowler. No run. 102 for two. Carlson, 37 not out, made uh, 80 runs for once out across the two innings at Lords. The second one was a uh, very brief one. The last uh, knockings off the game as uh, Thompson bowls. That's flatter and played by Carlson through a gap in the offside field. That one will run away for four. No point in the chase on that occasion as Carlson found the gap. Read that one nicely, Will. Yeah, lovely footwork by Kieran. As you said, Thompson just dropping a bit short. That ball's actually on leg stump, but Kieran's just given himself room and, and got leg side of the ball to open up that offside. Thompson's bowling to a 6-3, so if you can find that gap through cover to the shorter side, he's always going to get four. Lovely shot. Voice of Glamorgan keeper batter Will Smale here on BBC Sport Online as Carlson pushes that one past leg slip for a single. 107 for two. He'll be fighting for the, the gloves though with Alex Horton and uh, now Henry Hurl around as well. Yeah, plenty of wicket keepers on the Glamorgan staff, obviously, with Chris um, here in the first team. And then, yeah, myself, Alex, Henry, Collins, obviously done it from time to time as well in, in professional cricket. So when you when you combine that with a couple of coaches that are ex-wicket keepers and the director <laughs> of cricket that's an ex-wicket keeper as well, it's, um, it's almost like a takeover here. <laughs> Thompson to Ul Hassan. Hmm. Ul Hassan watching that one off the back foot. Seemed to do a little bit. Yeah, it just turned. Just looked like it maybe held in the wicket a little bit for Zane. Thompson's very tall, so sort of driving the ball into the surface there. Incredibly tall for a for a spin bowler. The uh Half century partnership came up in uh, that last over. They've added 54 now for the third wicket. Have Ul Hassan and Carlson. Carlson has 42 of them, and the graphic in front of us tells that us that Zain Ul Hassan has uh, only chipped in 10 of them, but he has uh, faced rather less of the strike during this particular partnership. 107 for two. The wicket's going down at 31. And 53. Here's Derbyshire's danger man, Blair Tickner, 2 for 31 in the second over of this spell. Bowls a full length ball that Carlson hammers hard out into the covers, but it's uh, well stopped by Donald, despite the encumbrance of his shin pads. Kieran just looking to be incredibly busy. I think that graphic on the partnership shows how he accumulates his runs in the middle of the innings. Trying to put pressure back on Derbyshire. 
In comes Tickner again. Bowls to Carlson, who drives this one just past Donald, but he gets a, a fingertip to it and uh, deflects it up to Reese, and they decide against uh, taking the single. Last season, Kieran Carlson, 1,068 runs, as an average of 46 and four centuries in that uh, that collection. And uh, he played virtually everything, didn't he, through the season. Not one of those uh, who was rested during the one-day cap. Is that... Oh, beats him, that one spat a bit from Tickner. Yeah, it looked like that took off from a length. It's beautiful bowling from Tickner. That's what we talk about with that extra bit of pace. Just back of a length. Bit of bounce there, wasn't yeah, there? Yeah, definitely. Through to guest uh, chest high. Brooke Guest, another player who uh, took advantage of uh, Glamorgan last season with uh, 96 in the last meeting here at the end of uh, last season. Scored centuries against them previously as Tickner bowls and uh, Carlson blocks it out on the offside and there's no run. Certainly uh, Glamorgan hoping to uh, break the... Uh, the pattern of last season in a favourable manner. Last season for Glamorgan was one win, one loss, both against Worcestershire and 12 draws. Derbyshire also looking to uh, break a pattern. They unfortunately did not win in the championship last season. There's Tickner bowls and that's uh, flicked away on the leg side by Carlson. No run, straight to mid-wicket. There's a gentle groan from the uh, BBC Radio Derby Correspondent towards the back of the box. Uh, doesn't want to be rem reminded of last season particularly by the sound of it. There's a definite conscious um, feeling around the camp of, of wanting to get over the line and, and win win more games of cricket. Um, I know we were unlucky, just fell short in a couple last year, but... Here comes Techner. Bowls. Yep. Uh, it's uh, chopped away by Carlson through the third man area. Again, it's a uh, long chase, this time for Dahl, and this time they'll come back for a third run by the time the throw arrives back on the square. Worked away nicely by Kieran Carlson, who moves to 45, and the total on to 110 for two. It was difficult to put your finger on last season because there weren't any particular examples in which it was... Uh, Yelling for Glamorgan to declare at the towards the end of a match or to uh, to score more quickly. It's naturally a reasonably quick scoring side. Yeah, I think obviously um, services probably played a, a relatively sizable impact in that. Um, There's some very sort of um, somewhat slow scoring, but but batter friendly surfaces here, and obviously. I just said there's a there's a feeling of wanting to win more games, and we start the season with a with a batter batter heavy draw. But um, definitely since since Grant Bradburn's come in and, and Sam's taken over with Red Bull and, and and Kieran obviously with with White, but mainly Red Bull for Sam. It's it's very much looking to win games of cricket. I know there's a I think the points for a draw have, have gone back up to eight. I think yes. five, but but there's certainly certainly a feeling of of more wins that sort of cost us last year. So. Thompson is in to bowl to Carlson, who pulls that one, not a great delivery, and Carlson helps on its way down towards fine leg. It's uh, well stopped down beneath us by Harry Kame, and they're back for two more, 112 for two, Glamorgan. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how Glamorgan's bowling resources uh, bear up to the task, as I say. Finished one wicket short on two occasions last season as Carlson pushes one into a gap in the offside and goes through for a single. One thirteen for two. With uh, Mason Crane, the uh, once capped England leg spinner, making his Glamorgan debut in this match, so I presume he's in for quite a long ball. Carlson and Ingram between them bowled uh, quite a few at Lords. Nice to see Ingram back with ball in hand after not bowling last season. Down the wicket comes Ola Hassan and he's stumped. 
Well, Alex Thompson gets the breakthrough. Glamorgan 113 for three, and Zayn Ol Hassan having done a solid job to start the innings cannot take it on as he was stumped by the proverbial country mile. He was trying a defensive push by the time he got there, but I think Alex Thompson outwitted him there. So as we see the uh, replay. Nice piece of bowling from Thompson. Turn away from Zainal Hassan. And pretty simple but smart bit of work by Brooke Gass behind the stumps. Yes, you wonder why Ol Hassan decided to uh, go venturing for that one. Saw it being dropped short when well, he had uh, initial visions of trying to club it over the top somewhere and had to change his mind when he got there. Will, any thoughts? Yeah, I, I mean, Zane, Zane's done a lot of lot of work on using his feet throughout the winter and he's, he's a good player that that sort of shot. It's a smart piece of bowling by Thompson. Looks like he might have seen him coming slightly and, and thrown it a little bit wider. Um, but certainly promising signs for Glamorgan with the, with the pitch turning like this on day one. Um, if we do get to day four, then with Derbyshire batting last and, and Glamorgan, as we said, playing playing Mason Crane this week and, and obviously, as you mentioned, overs out, of, overs out of Kieran and Colin who are now at the crease together, it's it, it could be promising. Yes, it'll be interesting to see if we see a, uh, a Sapphire Gardens turner. Well, it hasn't been known for its, uh, its spin in recent years and the pitches have tended to flatten out if anything over the the third and fourth days yeah it hasn't i i just remember back so i think it was one of the games where we were, we were a wicket short last year was it sussex and i think mm. mitchell schwapson was playing in that game yeah. and i'm sure he'd have in, enjoyed a little bit more turning that surface <laughs> the, the australian spinner but we shall see that's that's definitely turned away from zane though that was the one that got away from Glamorgan last season with Sussex's last pair, batting uh, around about an hour from the top of my memory to uh, save the game. The one at, at Yorkshire, the ninth wicket fell with, I think, one over to go, so it wasn't, uh, wasn't quite the same. 113 for three here on uh, BBC Sport Online. Will Smale, Glamorgan keeper batter. Myself, Nick Webb. Dave Fletcher is... Uh, Patiently waiting behind us. As Ingram is beaten by Thompson's first ball to him, pushing forward, Guest again taking the bails off, but Ingram hadn't ventured. Looked a lovely delivery that by Thompson. He's got another left hander in his sights. Colin Ingram down to five this season, batted mostly three. Oh, Ingram. Wow. Allows that one to go through outside off stump. That's turned a lot, that. I just saw that on the, the TV screen. That's gone a long way. Well, a Bunsen burner at Sapphire Gardens. Who'd have thunk it? In April. In April. <laughs> Top point, says uh, Mr. Fletcher optimistically from behind. Ingram uh, drives into the offside. There runs there. As, or a run to get Ingram off the mark as the, the man at cover... And Dahl dived in vain. And uh, 114 for three as uh, maybe another 10 minutes from you, Will, on your first shift, if that's all right. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Dave Fletcher, another quick word from Will Smale, and then Dave Fletcher will take up commentary. Yeah, Glamorgan losing that wicket just as they started to get into a position of some, some form of dominance in this first day's play. 114 for three after 34 is so a nice position to be after being put into bat. But Thompson's come on and looked threatening to well, both the right-hander and the left-hander. It turned a mile, didn't it? It turned an absolute cricket mile. Yeah. I was, I was quite surprised. I mean, it was a shortish delivery, so that the, the batter should never really have been uh, troubled by it. But... Uh, <sighs> Good to see. And Blair Tickner, I think this is a good idea, just talking to Daff at the back of the box there, having somebody who's bowling rockets at one end and the spinner at the other. I like that. Tickner around the wicket bowls and it's defended by Ingram out into the offside where it's fielded by uh, 
came and there's no run. So the, the, the batters have got somebody bowling 90 miles an hour, slightly yeah. less in his second spell, presumably, but and, and somebody at the other end, so they've got to get used to that Extreme. different pace. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Tickner looks like the sort of bowler who could really make something happen on mm. a surface that maybe might not do so much. So definitely an exciting prospect for, for Derbyshire to have. He's in again around the wicket to Ingram. Bowls. And it's defended up to... Uh, Lewis Rees on this occasion, the hatless Lewis Rees. 114 for three. The Cookerborough ball, of course, <laughs> with 34 overs and two balls in now. I was told by everybody in the Derbyshire squad, once you get to 40, that'll be it. Yeah. 40 overs, the ball dies, and then you've got to wait <laughs> and wait and wait. Here's Tickner again, balls to... Ingram who pushes it out into the offside and there's no run. I've heard they I've heard they can go soft quite quickly, so if they get a little bit wet, so when he can really struggle. Um obviously I would say the outfit was pretty dry by the time we got underway at eleven thirty yeah. this morning, so that shouldn't have been too much of an issue, but um they do, certainly don't stay as hard as the Duke's balls do for, for the period of time, so Tickner trying to make something happen. His elbows jutting on his approach. This one again is defended by Ingram back towards Tickner and almost ends up in that little bit of sawdust that uh, nearly accounted for Alan Dahl early in his first spell. And he slipped over in it. Very damp little area on the square. The only really damp area on the square because there's a lot of sand on it or uh, sawdust, more likely. I think, I, think, I think you're right. I think it is sand. I saw... Just as we were finishing warm-ups, the ground staff just went along on a little buggy and mm. threw a bit of sand down just on the wicket ends, just on the edges of the square, just where it's running off. As Tickner is in again, Ingram pushes this into the onside and they uh, run immediately, so there's a single there as Reese comes around to do the fielding. Immediately starts polishing the ball, 116, 4, 3. No, 115 for 3. The scoreboard beat me on that occasion. Ingram on two. Carlson has 48 from 64 balls with five fours and that's six into the uh, grandstand. See if we can hit uh, Tickner for six. I mean, it was Zach Chappell, who's not uh, no slouch himself. Tickner's in and bowls to him and he carves this away down backward of uh, square on the offside and that will be his half century. Goes for four, six fours and a six. 65 deliveries for Kieran Carlson's half century as he moves on to 52 and Glamorgan to 119 for three. He's batted well. It's a lovely shot from Kieran. Back with a square on the offside. Tickner offered up some width, short of a length, and that is, well, Kieran absolutely loves it there on the, on the back foot. Lovely way to go for 50 for him. Second one of the season already. Good signs for Glamorgan. They say batters don't like April. <laughs> well, I think batters batters certainly like the pitch at Laws last week and yeah. combine that with a Cooper ball and I think yeah they weren't they weren't complaining too much about playing in April then. A new record for Sam Northeast, the high score ever made at Lords by an individual batsman, three hundred and thirty five not out. Yeah, pretty special not that from mm. Sam. And all four matches in the second division, the side that won the toss put the opposition in because that's what you do in April yeah that's what you do doesn't always work of course Leicestershire 164 for four against Sussex Northamptonshire 130 for one against Middlesex 181 for five Yorkshire against Gloucestershire as Alex Thompson begins a new over and turns that one past the edge of Colin Ingram's bat just for good measure Brooke Guest removed one bail but he, he is getting a, an enormous amount of turn for day one in April. Who said this country doesn't produce spinners? He's in again, around the wicket, balls to Ingram, it goes back and pushes it up towards Anish Dahl, who's fielding an extra cover. Thompson, you know, as I mentioned earlier, with, with the drift, with that breeze that's coming from off his, off his right shoulder, but because of its height, he's sort of driving the ball into the surface and it really looks like it's holding and sort of kicking a little bit. Next one is a bit short and Ingram is able to lean back and 
punch it out towards the point boundary where Kane feels he picks up a single. Moves to 3 one twenty for three. So you could have been a Derbyshire player. I could have. I spent well. Wow. Wow. I, I, wow. I, no, I probably didn't do enough in the year I was at Derbyshire. That was um, Dave Houghton's last year at the club, I think. Okay. Um, a couple of years ago, two, three years ago now, I think. Um, so I've played with you a played few with, of the. You played with Harry Kane, I imagine, during that time, did you? Or was he after? My uh, yeah, no. My first game on trial was was Harry's first game as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, Thought he was here around that time. It was Leicestershire away at Kibworth. Nice. Um, Harry did pretty well that year. I think he got a T20 hundred in the second eleven that year, and sort of got signed off the back of that, and has, has done very well since. Thompson, previous ball was defended. This is a swell, a very wild swish outside the off stump from Carlson. I'm not sure whether he got an inside edge on it or not, but it was taken. Uh, we can't have done because it was taken by uh, Brook Guest, but it was a horrible looking shot. It's lovely bowling by Thompson. Mm. Just throws it wider with this field, sort of lures Carlson into the shot. Easy runs to pick up through the covers, but just spins back through the gate. He's in again, that one looks a little bit quicker. From Thompson pushed out into the offside by Carlson. And there's no run into the other. 120 for three after 36 overs. Ingram has three, Carlson has 52. Well, yeah, Harry Kane started, now. I, I might, I'm, I'm hoping I'm right. But he started, it was either last season or the season before, as the second 11 skipper. And very quickly found himself in the first team and has uh, formed a very good opening partnership now with Lewis Rees. And, uh, yeah, taking his chance. Which, which is, I mean, it must be it must be almost impossible when you go somewhere and you sort of, yeah, yeah, yeah come and play at Leicester. If the conditions aren't quite to your liking or... If you're a, if you're a batter and it's bowler friendly or the other way around, it's really tricky that they go well. No, yeah. he's, he's not up to much because he, he didn't take five wickets. Well, no, nobody took any wickets. As a trialist, it is difficult. It's a, it's, a, it's a very different type of pressure to being a professional. But you do always feel like if you don't perform, it could be your, your last opportunity. Tickner begins a new over and has beaten Ingram outside the off stump. Beautiful bit of bowling from Blair Tickner. He's still getting the ball to do just a, just enough occasionally to uh, upset the batsman on this occasion yeah, just just swinging away the entire time and Ingram in the end does well not to get a nick on it I think Alex Hughes might have been captain of yes. the second 11 yeah. when I was when I first played and now on the coaching staff of yours there's Tickner bowls and I was driven but straight to uh, came I did think I might have seen Seen him down here. I saw him last year with when Derbyshire won the second 11 T20 trophy. They played Glamorgan in the final at Wormsley. I'd rather not talk about that if you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I came in for a little bit of flack for that. Uh, although, having said that, a number of the players who played in that final didn't then go on and play T20 cricket in the uh, in the blast. So some of them did. I think it's fair to say. <coughs> Here's uh, his tick there, bowls, and no one uh, is left alone by Ingram to go through to Brooke Guest. I think Leas was the one that did the damage, but he's Un no longer... Unsur unsurprisingly, you were... No longer one of yours, so... No, no. Uh, retribution is, uh, is meted out. Yes, Leas moved on to Middlesex. Didn't make a whole heap of runs last week. I noticed in passing he did bowl in both innings though as Ticknett bowls that one is driven very nicely although it was not quite as nice as I originally thought and Zach Chappell <laughs> looks about my age as he gets up off the floor <laughs> having rolled to field the ball yes Lee's deploy playing second team T20 cricket is not is not a fair contest really yeah he. Yeah, I mean that day he, he probably looked a, a cut above most of the others on display. Um, He's done some strange things in the last 12 months, though, as Leas. As in goes Tickner and Bowles, played off the back foot up towards mid on this time by Ingram. There's no run because he's played for Hungary. Yeah. In that European stuff that you sometimes see on free channels on, uh, yeah. on television, the standard of which is questionable. 
I would suggest. I think questionable at times might be might be slightly kind. Yeah, you'd be right. Uh, he played with his brother for Hungary and, and scored a ridiculous number of runs in it. I think I might have seen he got a, a very low number of ball, 100, I think. Yes, this one's crashed into the offside by Ingram. They're only going to get a single low as it's picked up in the outfield by Connors. Ingram moves to... Four, and it's 121 for three. Just in that stage now for Glamorgan where they're just trying to rebuild this partnership. Ingram and Carson, both hugely experienced and just trying to rebuild to get Glamorgan back in that, that position that they maybe had at, at what, about 100, 110 for two. So just rebuild here, but Thompson does look a, does look a real threat. I wonder if when he went to bed last night, Alex Thompson thought, I'm going to be a real threat on day one, on a damp day in Cardiff. Well, he's back in Cardiff, isn't he, as a yes, Cardiff student? student here, yeah. Yes. So I'm have a, a nice chat with Mark O'Leary, someone who does some work with Glamorgan. That was his university coach this morning. He's in from the River Taff end, gives that one a bit of air, and it's pushed into the offside by Ingram. Yes, we were looking it up, his, uh, his best figures, which uh, I've already forgotten, uh, were four. Cardiff University. All I've got to do is remember his name again now, Thompson, that's it. Uh, his best figures, 6 for 131 for Cardiff against Hampshire, as this one is a, a sweep by Ingram down towards uh, long leg. He'll only get a single for it. He didn't make that good a connection with it. Fielded by Chapel, 5 to Ingram, 122 for 3. Nice option from Colin. Just trying to put a little bit of pressure back on Thompson. Probably looking to hit that a little bit finer. Chapel's at sort of deep backwards square, but there's no man at 45 there for, for Colin. So he's just trying to get that a little bit finer and get a couple more. Carlson back on strike. Thompson in, and that one is a full delivery that's pushed out into the offside. Lewis Reese goes around from mid-off to do the fielding. And they go through for another single. Carlson moves to 53, 123 for three. We're in the 38th over. Lost half an hour this morning due to uh, damp run-ups. But we haven't lost any overs. Tea will be at four o'clock. And the close of play will be around seven, I imagine. Lengthy final session. Thompson bowls, and that one is swept as well this time uh, just in front of square, we're quite a long way in front of square, and they go through for a couple of runs. Ingram moves on to seven as Chapel, in his uh, sun hat, gets around to do the fielding. It's now sunny enough for the sun hat. Zach Chapel, he was hatless this morning. He's obviously been told by those who know, put a hat on, son. The sun can still burn you in April. And Thompson in again, and that one is driven by Ingram out towards. Uh, Harry came at point close to the boundary. Single taken, one. 26 for three. Good accumulation of runs. Just keep that board ticking over. Yeah, a little bit of cat and mouse there between Ingram and Thompson as well. As soon as Thompson came a little bit straighter, Ingram's just looking to sweep and just knock the ball into the leg side, which is actually where David Lloyd himself had come from to go to a second slip. And as soon as Thompson went wider, he just pushed him to deep cover for one. So nice batting from Colin, getting his innings started. Dahl warming up as Thompson is in. That's quite a flat delivery, and it's uh, tickled around the corner down towards fine leg. Harry Kane has got an awful lot of ground to make up, but he makes it up, and he keeps him down to a couple. Carlson moves to 55, 128 for three at the end of the over. 38 overs gone. So a relatively good strike rate for the, uh, the Glamorgan batters. Just about three and a third. And it is indeed Anush Dahl going to come on to replace Blair Tickner. There's a change of oh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think having Thompson looking like a threat from the river end allows David Lloyd to just rotate his seamers from from the opposite. So you've seen a spell from, from Chapel, Tickner and, and Dahl all after lunch from the Cathedral Road end. We haven't seen the left arm option of Lewis Rees yet. We haven't seen David Lloyd turn his arm over on his uh, return to Sophia Gardens for the first time in red ball cricket 
as the well, first time in any cricket he was here last season watching, but was injured by that point in the season. Suffered a rib problem at Warwickshire in the One Day Cup. Might even have been broken. I did interview him after that. He said, yeah, it's a bit sore, but I'll be all right. Never played again. Unsurprisingly, because he didn't have to take a whack. It might have been uh, Henry Brooks. Who's now, he's, he's at he's Middlesex. Middlesex yeah, he, yeah. he played against, us, uh, against yeah. us last week. Made the move from Warwickshire. Yeah, played a couple of games on loan at Derbyshire at the start of last season. And actually got best figures by a bowler on debut, I think. Fortunately, my statistician is currently sitting just below the scoreboard on the far side of the ground with a very large camera in his hand, so I can't check that. But Although checking things has never been high on my list of priorities, of course. As anybody who listens on a regular basis will know. Is this first delivery from uh, Anish Dahl is turned into the... Uh, where was it turned into? The square lo- leg. Yes, thank you very much. <laughs> I was watching. Well, Deep sort square. of. Uh, by Ingram for a single. He moves on to nine. 129 for three. So I keep looking at the clock. It's all right. And it's Thompson did the fielding. I think he was, he was, his mind was elsewhere as well, having a brief chat to Matt Lamb, I think, as the 12th man down there on the boundary. Yes. He was having a chat to. You, you can wander in a game of cricket, can't you? Well, Matt, I can. Well. You shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. You're not allowed to. I am. Uh, they're now pushing that man at uh, point all the way to the boundary. There's a backward point and a point on the boundary as well as the slip. This is all for Anna's Dahl who's talking to Lewis Reese. There's a, a widish, it's like an extra cover. Then there's a the relatively deep mid on and mid off. It was a mid wicket and now that man's, I don't know why I bother describing the uh, field because that man on the point boundary has now come in to point and there are two slips so well, Nyra and Donald just getting the run around there yeah, back and forth won't do him any harm will it he's got the fielding pads on as well as Dahl is in and balls to Carlson who defends it out into the offside and there's no run and that's just a result of, of Kieran being pretty positive throughout his innings Dahl just getting into his spell there's probably a thought of, of having that, that bit of cover and protection back on the offside they decided against it. Brooke Guest has come up to the stumps now, so try and keep Kieran Carson back in his crease. Maybe look for a, an LBW, something like that. As Dahl is in, bowls to Carlson, who just prods forward, and the ball goes back with a square on the offside, and there's no run. It's a gesture from Kieran to Colin there that, that might, ball might have just shaped away, so that's a, mm-hmm. a good sign if the Cooper is still doing that in the 38. Yeah. Well, it's got another over and a half. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. You're on your own, bowlers, after that. There's, in comes Dahl again, and bowls that's driven into the ground and past Dahl, tumbling stop by Reese at mid-off. Again, there's no run. I'm trying to see, the, is that both Derbyshire's 12 men out I think, there? I think they're in the red bib is, is, is Andy Gorvin. Oh, OK. And I think so he's one, probably yeah. trying to... I think it is Matt Lamb. Is it Jack Morley, the other? We've got Jack Morley yeah. with them as well, yeah. The man from Lancashire. Left arm spinner as Dahl bowls. This one is turned into the leg side. That wristily by Carlson. For a single out to Sam Connors on the mid wicket boundary. And Carlson moved to 56, 130 for three with one ball of the 39th over to go. One ball of Anders Dahl's seventh over. Not for 13 at the moment. Derbyshire got their first point of the season uh, by playing, <laughs> which is good news. <laughs> One bonus point to them. Not that that makes an awful lot of difference. Dahl balls a full delivery. It's uh, driven out into the offside by Ingram and fielded by Harry Kame. It's the end of the Dahl over 130 for three. Carlson on 56, Ingram on nine. And it looks like we're going to have uh, multiple changes in the commentary box. Well done to Will, Will Smile. Thank you for your company. Always good to hear from inside changing rooms from experts rather than just wafflers. <laughs> uh, present company accepted, of course. So, uh, 
Nick Webb will come back to uh, earn some money. Yeah, better uh, uh, earn me dosh, shouldn't they? Now we're freelance. Yeah, you've got a, you've got a penny a word, you're laughing. I'll <laughs> off as well. 130 for three. Our thanks to Glamorgan's Will Smale for uh, giving us some uh, professional views for the afternoon session. As uh, Alex Thompson will continue wheeling away from the River Taff end. David Pritchard is back alongside me, so it's a, a double change. 130 for three. Glamorgan with slightly less batting than uh, previous lineups, with Chris Cook in at six as Thompson is in to bowl to Carlson, who nudges it towards Donald at short leg. And there is no run. 130 for three. Ingram, nine. Carlson, 56. Derbyshire continuing to try and put pressure on with the, the spinner. Alex Thompson. As uh, Carlson is hit on the pad, Thompson is down on one knee, appealing to uh, umpire Bailey, who is not interested. Field includes men back at long on and deep mid wicket. Not often you see that on the first day of a championship match, as well as deep cover, as Carlson nudges that one past short leg and goes through for a single 131 for three. Yeah, good to have Will Smale's insight from the changing room with us earlier. He's come a long way from a Work experience stint with BBC Sport Wales back in the day. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he had a brief stint shadowing me uh, <laughs> a couple of presses, so he, he knew that cricket was a much better career than <laughs> what we've ended up doing. As, uh, and comes the next delivery. Ingram is turned a little bit sideways by that one, looking a little bit unsure. And while Alex Thompson is enjoying himself, I'm sure Mason Crane, the Glamorgan leg spinner, will be uh, keen to get ball in hand eventually once the batters have done their work. 131 for three. Derbyshire with their first bonus point of the season. As uh, that's played off the back foot by Ingram out into the offside. Stopped at cover by uh, Dal, who gets uh, some applause from his teammates and there's no run. Ford short leg and uh, Lloyd crouching at slip and watching that one turn past the edge of Ingram's bat. He didn't play a shot. Lloyd, by the way, has gone back to his uh, number that he started in Glamorgan ranks with, with uh, 46, although he changed it mid-spell to 74 for Glamorgan, so uh, he's gone back to 46. I, I've no idea why. That's uh, maybe a story for uh, a very rainy day. It's 131 for three here at a sunny Sapphire Gardens. Yeah, squad numbers. Less of a purist when it comes to cricket squad numbers than I would be <laughs> for football because they're uh, somewhat more newfangled in this sport. But uh, <laughs> footballers should be wearing one to 11 where possible. <laughs> Hanaj Dahl to bowl from the Cathedral Road end. Right arm over with Brooke Guest standing up to him. Carlson drives flamboyantly past point and that will go for four. Just backward of point in the end. Really threw his arms through that shot. Carlson got full value for it. Four runs. He moves on to 61. And Glamorgan 135 for three. That was Carlson-esque that shot, wasn't it? Certainly uh, throwing everything at it. Nicholas Brill on Twitter, hoping for a more positive result than uh, last week's runs feast and more sunny weather as clubs get prepared for the start of the season. As Dahl is into Carlson, who defends this time for no run. Nicholas also says uh, his umpiring season hopefully starts on May the 4th at the Knoll for Neath against Newport in Premier League 1. Morgan batting looking in good shape so far. Hoping Mason Crane will add some nice variety to the attack. Thank you for your thoughts, Nicholas. As Dahl runs in again, 
from the Cathedral Road end. A full ball which Carlson drives handsomely through the covers and that will be another boundary for Carlson. He moves on to 65 and Glamorgan now 139 for three. John Hughes tweeted me earlier, a strange bright light in the sky and Sam Northeast has been dismissed. There's a disturbance in the force. Yes, unusual events, both of them, Sunshine and uh, Northeast being out. If you want to email me, nickweb2017 at gmail.com, we'll see how it goes for this match and uh, see if enough of you are interested in emailing. Uh, Twitter is nickweb2017, Dav Pritchard or Fletch Sport. Yeah, decent average for Northeast this season. <laughs> 346, I make it now. Slight change of the field, David Lloyd into a catching position on the offside as Dahl is in and Carlson defends. Uh, plus his second innings runs at Lords. 360. Oh, of course, yes. He had a, a brief knock in the last hour when uh, everyone wanted to go home. As Dahl starts his run-up again, penultimate ball of the 41st over. Carlson with a punchy shot onto the onside for no run. Yeah, Carlson going at a good rate here. Strike rate just a touch under 80%. Yeah, Kieran Carlson innings is rarely boring, is it? No, indeed. Like you said earlier, I think the, the batting lineup is naturally inclined to be quite an aggressive one isn't it with Ingram at the other end as Dahl is in and Carlson defends once more and that's the end of the 41st over Glamorgan 139 for 3 Carlson on 65 and Ingram on 9 so again things reasonably close you'd say a slight advantage to Glamorgan at the at the moment um, Derbyshire still very much in it though Morgan with slightly less batting than previous seasons with keeper Chris Cook at six all-rounder Dan Douthwaite at seven James Harris at eight is probably a little bit higher than he has been typically in the uh, last uh, few seasons since returning to Glamorgan and Alex Thompson will continue this interesting spell of spin from the River Taff end tall figure of the former Cardiff student and being given plenty of support by David Lloyd in terms of close catches with Donald at short leg, Lloyd and Madsen crouching at slip for the left-handed Ingram who is forward watchfully. He did play quite cautiously for by his standards for most of his innings at Lords only really opened up in the, uh, the last uh, couple of dozen runs. Thompson. Half a dozen strides. Easy loops in and up in the block hole and uh, Ingram digs it out and plays it on the leg side. And there's no run. Ingram's first 50 came off 95 balls at Lords, which must be one of his uh, slowest half centuries for Glamorgan. But he was playing for once the supporting role for North Easters. Thompson is in to bowl to Ingram, who sweeps and will get runs down towards a fairly vacant fine leg. Just a couple of runs, actually. So he didn't get a full bat on it. And uh, Chapel is able to loop around the boundary from square leg and keep them down to two. 141 for three as Ingram goes into double figures on 11 not out. The run rate is 3.4. Even with the close fielders in, as uh, Ingram plays on the offside, and there's no run. So Chapel's out on the boundaries, currently pushing away at the boundary boards, uh, some sort of limbering up exercise. For another potential spell, Derbyshire have got a sweeper on the cover boundary as well. As uh, that is Ingram propping forward, playing defensively out into the covers. No run. Whether Ingram is 
playing more watchfully because he sees a slightly different uh, role for himself at five than three. Northeast putting himself up the order, having taken over the captaincy. As uh, Ingram back on his stumps, there's an appeal, but not an expectant one. 141 for three at the end of another over that caused uh, Colin Ingram a little difficulty at times. Over the bridge at Bristol, Yorkshire 196 for six against Gloucestershire. Masood, the cap uh, is he captain? Yes, he is again this season. 94 not out. Tattersall has gone for 58. They repaired the damage after uh, Yorkshire were 90 for 5 with a stand of exactly 100. With uh, Joe Root out for just 2 and Harry Brook for 26 after his uh, remarkable centre against Leicestershire. Speaking of whom, the Foxes are 190 for 4 against Sussex with uh, Patel making 87. As Dahl begins a new over, and Carlson defends. And uh, finally wrapping up the second division scores, North Ants. Glamorgan's next opponents are 148 for 1 against Middlesex with Emilio Gay on 85 and uh, skipper Luke Proctor on 57 not out. Yeah, Bat definitely having the better of the ball around the grounds so far today as Dahl is in again and Carlson defends once more. Similar story in Division 1. Warwickshire 272 without loss Oof. against Durham, who came up with a much fancied bowling attack as mm. well. It's a strong one today. Scott Boland making his debut, the Australian Test player. Matthew Potts, Ben Rain, Bryden Cass, Callum Parkinson. That's a strong old bowling attack that's finding it hard going at Edgebaston today. As Dahl runs in, over the wicket to Carlson. It's a full ball, which Carlson drives, and Dahl does well to field it off his own bowling and is applauded by the crowd as well as his own teammates. Yeah, Rob Yates and Alex Davis going up more than five and over. That's quite something, isn't it, on the opening day of a, a Champo game in April? Absolutely. Somerset, 201 for four at Surrey. Nottinghamshire, 176 for three against Worcestershire. Runs everywhere you look at the moment as Dahl continues. Slightly shorter this time and Carlson whips it off his hip to short leg. For a single, he moves on to 66 and Glamorgan 142 for three. And just to round up the rest of those Division 1 scores, Hampshire 164 for three against Lancashire and Essex 228 for three. So yeah, these early rounds bit like they did last year, rather dispelling the the widely held notions that early stages of the season, uh, for seamers, batters have certainly had the better of it, haven't they? Yeah, it tends to go up and down, isn't it, between between years. There was one year about 12, 15 years ago when... As Dahl bowls and Ingram drives nicely, but is fielded in the covers. When sides all around the country were doing well to reach 200 in the first innings early on. Paul Mohammed uh, emails, do we know Marnus Labuschagne's ETA? Early May, I was uh, was described to me as. How early in May, I'm not quite sure. But uh, should be available for, for part of this uh, championship block. And do we know how long he will be available? Well, hopefully doing June and July. As Dalt comes around the wicket to Ingram on a length and Ingram... Whips that through mid-wicket. There'll be at least a couple of runs here for him. He makes it back for two and seems to settle on a couple of runs. So Ingram is on 30 now. As Paul points out, Australia aren't in ODI or test action until uh, September. The Australians generally seem to depart at the uh, beginning of, of August, really, to uh, get their preparation in for the season down under. So... Uh, uh, hopefully we will see Labuschagne here for at least half of May and and June and July, which will include all the uh, the T20, which will be good, given that he, he didn't play in that format uh, last season because of the, uh, the Ashes. So uh, although Labuschagne is not in the Australian T20 reckon, he's... I think he's actually quite a high quality uh, player in that format. I remember him winning virtually single handedly a game here 
in the in the virtual dark a couple of years ago when they're having trouble trouble with the floodlights. Thompson starts a new over. Carlson down the pitch and rather scuffs a drive to mid off, but needed to get some bat on it, otherwise he'd have fallen the same way as Ul Hassan. In other words, stumped. So uh, Thompson rattling through his overs. And we'll have a long bowl, and Carlson just drops the ball into the offside and runs through for a, a single. It's just a question of placing the ball between the the fielders because there's uh, quite a big gap there. The uh, cover sweeper was out on the boundary. Just uh, looking to uh, see where else Derbyshire might uh, turn in the in the spin department I suppose Wayne Madsen would be no next stop didn't bowl last season Thompson bowls and uh, threw outside off stump of course we saw deploy in action having left Derbyshire for Middlesex so came off breaks haven't seen Reese's medium pace yet but I'm not sure if it's the the surface for medium pace as uh, Ingram plays one gently along the ground to mid on, and there is no run. Continuing David Lloyd to uh, crowd the bat, but there's also men out sweeping on either side of the wicket, backward square and cover on the boundary here at uh, Sapphire Gardens. Outside off stump, Ingram plays no shot, being Pretty disciplined at the moment, Colin Ingram. Yeah, certainly a patient start from him, but as we know, it's well within his reach to accelerate whenever he sees fit. The senior figure of the Glamorgan side, age 38, as he chops one down past Lloyd at slip and uh, filled it at short third man. Carlson was not interested in a quick single. Not the senior figure in the match because uh, Wayne Madsen is a one year older at, uh, at 39. The well known Italian star in the Derbyshire ranks. 145 for three. Interesting that uh, when uh, Asa Tribe was in the Glamorgan squad uh, for Middlesex and we had uh, Roland Butcher commentating and he said oh yes I know he's a tribe saw him score lots of runs for Jersey last uh, last year in the uh, T20 world qualifiers yeah that's what got him his move to Glamorgan wasn't it his uh, performances for Jersey that one caught the eye of the scouts and he got a trial for the seconds and scored piles of runs there in the back end of last season right polling change and uh as uh, flagged by Mr. Fletcher, it's Mr. Kame. It's almost as if you've watched them before, Dave. <laughs> yeah, so it'll be Harry Kame from the Cathedral Road end. The uh, over eight still in the red. One short, but you imagine with spin at both ends now, that might be remedied. Yeah, I, they tended to change it just at the intervals uh, over recent seasons, although it was going up mid-session at Lords, Maybe the, the captains wanted that because uh, being in deficit. Kame is going to come around the wicket at the right-handed Carlson. He's in, it's short, and Carlson helps it along down the leg side. There was some cries of catch it, but it landed well short of the fielder at backwards square, so Carlson just picks up a single. Yeah, it didn't seem to fully connect with that Carlson, kind of helped it along its way, but almost like he almost pulled out of it halfway through the shot. Kane will continue around the wicket to the left-handed Ingram. One slip in for the off-spinner, who bowls a full delivery, which Ingram drives, and it's well fielded in the covers by an Aaron Donald formerly of this parish came twirls the ball in his hand and bowls another full delivery which Ingram drives and to mid off and he'll pick up a leisurely single for that taking his score to 14 and Glamorgan move on to 147 for 3 
has came ambles in again around the wicket to Carlson who works that off his legs for a single to square leg two balls left in the over Carlson moves on to 69 They're usually seen as a relatively defensive move to go round the wicket as an off spinner to a right handed bat no catcher in for Carlson perhaps it's a slightly containing measure for now from Derbyshire as Kane continues to Ingram plays it off the back for that's well stopped <laughs> at point and there's a shy at the stumps I think it's Sam Connors there who does well not only to stop the run but almost catch Ingram out he was a uh, good six seven meters down the track there Colin Ingram thought the ball had beaten the fielder at backward point it hadn't came with the final ball of his first over tosses it up and Ingram defends so game's first over goes for three runs Glamorgan now 148 for three after 45 overs so respectable enough from Harry Kame three runs off it but uh, how long can he do a job for and will Blair Tickner have a, another blast before we get to the new ball it's uh, quite a way away Good uh, couple of hours playing time, at least, probably more than that. As uh, the Kookaburra ball, which is being used in the first two rounds of the championship, and uh, on two rounds in mid-season as well. The uh, shape of the season sees uh, sides playing championship cricket for the first couple of months before T20 comes in as we move into June there's then two rounds of championship uh, mid-season a bit more T20 one day cup and back to championship in the back half of August as Carlson pushes forward there's an appeal for LBW he cuts a long way forward and uh, holds the pose as if to prove that point to umpire Bailey there's been a bit of that from Carlson today. We <laughs> saw him earlier moving across the leg side just to make the umpire fully aware that he wasn't in line or in that case far enough down the ground. <laughs> As uh, Carlson faces up again to Thompson and sweeps and uh, Donald goes into tortoise mode at uh, short leg, ducking his head out of uh, harm's way and the ball just uh, trickling down towards backward square for a single 149 for three nothing like the old double movement from a, a batting point of view if you if you think fear you might have got hit in front just shuffle the uh, the pad on a few uh, a foot or two either way flighted from Thompson driven by Ingram half stopped at cover and uh, Dahl recovering as well Slipped initially, but the ball was just a couple of metres behind him and he saved at least a couple of runs there. The square is fairly soft, having been out there early from the toss as a result of uh, a lot of rain that we've had. As Ingram defensively nudges one down to Lloyd at slip, who flicks it back to Guest in case Ingram was wandering out of his ground. Yeah, the ground fielding has been good considering the surface underfoot is less than steady at times. Tall figure of Thompson. Right arm round to left-hander. Ingram shoulders arms. Confident as it was going to turn. If I'd gone straight on, he would have been in dribble. Thompson from the River Taff end in the Sapphire Sunshine is uh, playing that one to uh, Ingram playing it out towards point there is no run Thompson's whipped rapidly through that over he's pulled 10 overs now one maiden one for 26 yeah good Morgan just kind of progressing at a steady pace three and a bit and over and Derbyshire seem content for them to score at right that rate for the for the moment. It, it feels like the game is going through one of those phases, not unlike those one-day 
Cup games in the in the middle overs where both teams seem oh, to the agree. The centre. Don't get yeah. me started. <laughs> Don't get me started on 50 over cricket at county level. Get back to 40 is what I say. But then that shows my age because that's what I grew up on. Harry Kane. Yeah, he's going to continue at the Cathedral Road and going around the wicket again. Two boundary runners on the leg side as he's in. Do Carlson, who drives onto the offside. It'll just be a single to a point. And that brings up Glamorgan's 150. They're 150 for three after one ball in the 47th over. Carlson 71, not out. Ingram on 14. As he shapes up to face Harry Kane around the wicket. This ball is shorter and Ingram slashes it past point for a single. Again, everything being played at a gentle pace at this stage. Neither batter really pulling their foot down at this stage. Kane and Thompson with tidy spin bowling at both ends as Kane bowls to Carlson and he works that to the leg side for a third consecutive single from this over. Just looking through last season's Derbyshire records, I can't find Came having bowled in any competition last season. Nope. A magisterial shake of the head from Mr Fletcher to uh, confirm. Came that's <laughs> short and wide. <laughs> And signals wide <laughs> by the umpire. Uh, everything was going so well for his first nine deliveries. Harry came. And then he's pulled one on the next strip. In he comes again. This is straighter and fuller. And Ingram drives for no run. Came both fielding off his own bowling. Rather red faced after that previous delivery, no doubt. We've all been there. <laughs> Let go just that little bit too late. This time the delivery point is on point and Ingram defends. Pulled 48 balls in first class cricket in the 24 matches that he's played. As he twirls the ball in his hand and strides to the crease, bowls to Ingram and he defends. That's a rather more tidy end to the over that included that rather wild wide Morgan 153 for 3 at the end of the 47th over I suppose these are the overs that would be uh, bowled by Lewis Deploy last season as the uh, regular occasional spinner 153 for 3 well the two batting at the moment can sympathise with part time spinners mm, as yes. two themselves yeah, not so much part-time at Lords. Ingram, who didn't bowl at all last season, sent down 20.2 overs, 2 for 63. Carlson, 47 overs, 3 for 147. As Middlesex ground out 655 and 220-odd overs. Here's Thompson to uh, come in and bowl to Kieran Carlson who uh, plays that one on the, uh, the leg side. There's uh, Morgan moving along quietly at the moment. Atypical of these two batters. Luke Carlson's still got a pretty good strike rate. 72 off 96. Oh, it's down leg side. Carlson pokes rather uncertainly at it and Guest whips off the bales. One, five, three, four, three. Ingram, 15. Carlson, 72. Two wickets to Blair Techner and one to Alex Thompson. Down the wicket comes Carlson and blasts it wide of mid-off. He'll pick up a couple of runs, but he didn't really get that one off the, the meat of the bat. And uh, for a moment, it might have been heart in mouth. It wasn't quite what they call plinking it, but it wasn't far off, was it? it was the toe end of the bat sliced it slightly wide of mid-off. Yes, yeah, not entirely convincing from Carlson, but it moves on him on to 74, and the total to 155 as he's back on his stumps and LPW. 
And Carlson looks back, maybe looks back in anger, but he's gone for 74. Alex Thompson has his second wicket and spin playing a part on day one here in Cardiff. Well, it might be that bowling around the wicket as an off-spinner to Carlson was not the defensive ploy we might have thought from how he came earlier because Thompson has done so himself. And looking at the replay, the line is very good and he's on the back foot. Hard to see what Carlson is complaining about. Perhaps height, but it was above the knee roll, but he was a, a, a fair distance back, wasn't he? Yeah, that would have probably hit the top of middle, I think. It certainly looked the, the right line. Carlson goes for 74 and the game swings again gently after Pair added 42 for the uh, the fifth, uh, fourth wicket rather. 155 for four. And, uh, well, Derbyshire very much back in the game. Yes, and Thompson's played a very good hand so far. Not only has he turned the occasional ball a long way, but he's bowled with discipline as well. This is his 11th over. He's only gone for 28 runs, but crucially he's picked up two wickets and he has troubled Morgan's batters. So a fine bowling performance from Thompson. Between him and Blair Tickner, Derbyshire well in this game. Two wickets apiece then for the paceman and the uh, the off spinner. Um, probably time we got Dave Fletcher back on, on commentary. As Chris Cook comes in for his uh, first first class innings of the season, having been padded up for some considerable time against uh, Middlesex at, uh, at Lords. Interesting, uh, interesting afternoon battle, this Mr. Fletcher. Yeah, absolutely. The turn that Thompson's getting is surprising. Not because he doesn't turn the ball, but because it's day one in April. But he is definitely getting turned. Uh, Harry came very much an occasional bowler, as that, that delivery uh, in the previous over proved, I think. Um, he's got somewhere to go to match his great-grandfather. Who was? <coughs> Walter Robbins, oh. who uh, was a leg spinner. He scored 13,800 runs and took 969 first-class wickets. Oof. So he was a decent player back in the mm. day. And good local knowledge from uh, uh, David Lloyd, who joined that uh, interval, nipped off behind the stand on the, uh, <laughs> on the river end for a comfort break. <laughs> Alex Thompson. Is it you? It's you. Alex Thompson bowls and a frantic appeal against Chris Cook first ball. And umpire Bailey this time says no. I hasten to add as there are conveniences behind that stand. So he wasn't watering. Yes, no, I imagine that, no, that, that hits the knowledge rather than just thinking I could nip behind there and uh, I know of a very handy bush. Thompson in to bowl to Cook. Uh, pushes for the rather uncertainly. The ball is dropped by Brooke Guest. Might have flicked the pad on the way through. 155 for four, 28 minutes to go until the tea interval and the, the game in the balance. Yeah, there's nothing better than seeing a batsman, a batter rather, quizzically looking down the track at what's just happened with that <laughs> delivery and that's exactly how uh, Cook was, that final delivery of the uh, Thompson over. Well, poor old uh, Harry Kames had his time in the sun. He's taken his number of balls in first-class cricket up to 60. <laughs> uh, so he's bowled 10 overs in first-class cricket and uh, conceded 43 runs, not taken a wicket, bless him. But he is, as uh, the fact that he didn't bowl last season in anything suggests, very occasionally. He did have a go in the uh, one of the pre-season friendlies, mm -hmm. if indeed that's what we're to call them, because they're, no, they're neither one thing nor the other, are they, really? <laughs> People come in and watch and then... Can't work out why it's 13 against 13, but... Yes, they're... Sort uh, of situational cricket. Even less competitive than they used to be, yes, aren't they, now that the, sadly. the games against the universities are, are no longer of first-class status. I think that's a shame, but... There are some, uh, some decent cricketers in the uh, university setup. 
Well, at times, the, the Glamorgan match is more like Glamorgan firsts against Glamorgan seconds, <laughs> given yeah. the, uh, the links they have with the Cardiff University's setup. <laughs> Sam Connors is back with his uh, burgeoning mullet. Oh, dear. Well, uh, he's, he's definitely going for the, uh, the mullet look. I don't think he's bowled from the Cathedral Road end before. He's around the wicket with a full length of balls. Colin Ingram, who digs it out and pushes it up to Lewis Rees at mid on. That's mullet. mullet that's, that's, that's Lewis Rees. That's definitely not a mullet. I, think, I don't think yeah. Lewis Rees is going to have a mullet. But Good. On screen at the moment. There we go. You get full, the full mullet in, its, in all its glory. Sam Connors. <laughs> it's look, look, I, children, it was rubbish in the 70s, I it was rubbish in the 80s, and it's rubbish in the 20s. I think I'd be tempted if I, if I could actually grow enough hair as Connors bowls real effort into that one. It's down the leg side, though. It's not taken cleanly by Brooke Guest behind the stumps. You could, you could still go a mullet. Oh, dear. <laughs> While you've got it, I'd go for it. it it's... Oof. It's it's sort of retre retreating on top and, and goes bushy at the sides now. You only know what you've got when it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's desperately sad. Desperately sad. As my WhatsApp picture suggests. Here's Connors again around the wicket. Past umpire Bainton and bowls a straightish delivery that uh, Ingram pushes back down the track. Again, it's fielded by Lewis Rees. Zach Chapel going through some stretches at mid on. In rugby union, it seems to be the front row forwards who have the uh, the worst hairstyles yes. on the grounds that they are um, so large and intimidating looking that uh, no one's going to take the mick out of them from having a rubbish hairstyle. Yes, no, there are some... Uh, both codes of rugby, the, the big boys seem to have the worst haircuts. Is Connors and Bowles, and that one is pushed into the onside by Ingram up towards Lewis Reese again. And there's no run. 155 for four. As Nick said there, 25 minutes to lunch, which will be at 4 o'clock, no matter what. Is that right? You just said lunch, but apart well, from the name, of the, uh, yes. the name of the food. I've still got lunch on me. That was a terrific lunch that we were treated to today. Sausage and mesh. I might have had too many sausages for today, though, having had a <laughs> breakfast in the hotel this morning. Here is Connor's in again. Bowls, that one is a full delivery, clipped off his toes by Ingram, out towards uh, mid-wicket. That is Single a temptation, table. isn't it? When free food is put in front of you at uh, media boxes, you, you eat it. Yeah. Indeed. Likewise, hotel breakfasts. Well, I might not need to eat tonight now. Hmm. Might not need to eat. That'll, uh, that'll save the, the BBC a few quid. Um, no, I, d I don't tend to uh, get anywhere near the allowance. No. The Lords might be uh, <laughs> might, might test me, <laughs> and it he's going to come over the wicket to uh, right-handed Chris Cook now. Just two deliveries face so far, yet to get off the mark. And Connors bowls to him, and he uh, turns this one into the leg side. They go through for a quick single. Kane has a shy at the stumps, and there's a dive from Ingram. He gets in. The ball misses the stumps anyway. There's one, two, three, four, five hands on heads. Well, there are ten hands-on heads, five players with hands-on heads. <laughs> um, but all in all, you've got to hit the stumps, really. That's the end of the over. They did get through for that single, so Cook's off the mark, and it's 157 for four. Yeah, I think Colin Ingram was at least close enough not to be given out had that one yeah. struck the stumps. But uh, Always good to see them get... When they get the dive out, though, they know they're in a little spot of bother. Yes. Potentially. And, and they are having a... Um, Fairly vigorous discussion at the moment. I mean, they've batted to, together for years for these two, for uh, for Glamorgan, and they shouldn't e know each other's running by now. And uh, I think it's fair to say that Chris Cook would probably outpace Colin Ingram on most occasions, and um, Colin Ingram would rather be stroking elegant boundaries than uh, hustling quick singles. Cook on strike on one. 157 for four as the troublesome Thompson begins a new over and Cook works it through mid-wicket for a single 158 for four. Thompson enjoying himself, I think, today. Spinner, well, at least he's out in the middle, which is an improvement on last week. Took uh, four for 97 here last year in Glamorgan's first innings out of five wickets that fell. 
There's Thompson bowls. Ingram sweeps and we'll get a couple down to fine leg. There's Chapel, no longer sun hatted but sun glassed. There's the fielding. There's sun hat sticking out of the back of his trues. He's got uh, some justifiable shades on and uh, definitely enough sunshine to uh, justify it today. 160 for four. Ingram to 18. As back he goes and pushes one through the sawdust on the offside to cover his uh, no run. Imposing figure, I would imagine, uh, Zach Chapel. I went to, yes. uh, to a musical in London last week. Not the Rocky Horror Picture Show? No, no. Okay. As uh, Ingram defends back to the bowler. It's called Hades Town. Okay. And... Uh, the governor of the underworld uh, was um, a similar sort of appearance to uh, Zach Chapel. Tall, bearded, possibly slightly menacing looking, as that's uh, played on the offside by uh, Ingram, and uh, there's no run. I don't know of many less menacing no. cricketers off the field, no. Fair enough. No, he's, he's, really, he's, he's a top man. I, I wouldn't like to face him. No, no. But yeah, he's a... But he looks as though he could play that sort of role. Yeah. As Ingram pulls through the onside. Not Thompson's best delivery. Rather sat up and asked for it. And Colin Ingram duly dispatched it. And Aaron Donald probably rather glad that he didn't dispatch it in his direction at short leg. Ingram goes to 22 with that boundary up towards the scoreboard. And Glamorgan on to 164 for four, so uh, if, if things, when things uh, conclude for uh, Zach Chapel as a first-class bowling, go on to play the, the Lord of the Underworld in a <laughs> long leather coat and uh, I think pinstripe en suit. I think he'd enjoy it. He is a bit of a he is a character, so I could see him uh, potentially if, if cricket doesn't work out for him. It's working out pretty well for him at the moment, but uh, yeah, you could see him. Doing a bit of amateur dramatics, certainly. <laughs> we get enough of that on the field on occasion, don't we, from <laughs> yeah, some players? Yes. So here's Sam Connors on his way in from the Cathedral Road end, bowling to Chris Cook, who uh, goes back and on his toes punches the ball up to extra cover, but it's fielded by Blair Tickner. Jack Morley with uh, Ali, who isn't Scottish, the physio. Oh, I always thought was Scottish. <laughs> um, I wondered why you were pointing out that someone wasn't Scottish. Yes, he's, no, he's definitely not Scottish. Uh, they're having a little lap of the ground. Ali with his box of uh, medication. Should he be called upon? As Connors is in again, and Cook defends this one again to Tickner. That extra cover, and again, there's no run. Crowd thoroughly enjoying themselves in that. Uh, very decent sunshine. One or two wispy clouds in the distance away to the east. The weather coming from behind us. If those flags are anything to go by, they are starting to ripple a little bit more now that they were absolutely limp this morning. But they are uh, fluttering away on the top of the pavilion away to our left as Connor's bowls and it's driven out into the offside. It's fielded by Blair Tickner. Again. Yeah, I wonder if we're going to have another Tickner blast with the old ball. Maybe we can get it reversing when it gets really old. Yeah, yeah I'd like to see it. Got two wickets this morning in that spell of uh, six overs, one made and two for 22. Two wickets this afternoon for Alex Thompson, who has two for 35 from 12. As Connors is in, and that one is pushed out into the offside. I'll let you fill in the rest. He sells. <laughs> Filled it by Blair Tickner. And immediately starts polishing the ball in a way that suggests that he might want to use it at some future, at some point in the future rather, to uh, to send down. It was good to see the bowlers looking after the ball. It's uh, the three. I was going to say four and include Harry Kane, but we'll just stick with three. The three players most likely to pass the ball to Sam Connors are all bowlers. 
as Connors is in and that one is defended out into the offside and this time Tickner leaves it for uh, Lewis Reese, who is the one of the other two bowlers he is of course the opening batsman as well and Zach Chappell who's at mid on still two slips in place which is uh, I would suggest for this time of day given four wickets have fallen about as many as you could expect and possibly one more than you would normally expect Neither Wayne Madsen nor David Lloyd willing to give up their place in the slips as Connors bowls and it's pushed down the ground by Ingram for a single, fielded by Zach Chappell. Ingram's ability to count to six, immaculate as he pinches the strike from the final ball of the over. He moves to... What was that Cook? Uh... It was Cook who took the single. Oh, yeah, all right, then. So it was Cook's ability to count to six that was immaculate. Indeed. Uh, he retains the strike. Thank He's you. on three. Ingram's on 22. One, six, five for four. Peter Simmons uh, is... No, Peter. No, no, no. Excellent. Starting a campaign for uh, campaign. me to grow a mullet uh, in line yes. with your requests. Yeah, that's, I think that's a great idea. Uh, it will probably take all season. It doesn't grow very fast on any part of the head at the at the moment, apart from the eyebrows, which uh, is a problem known to uh, many men of a certain age. The oh. eyebrows start uh, well, bushing. Well, I don't have eyebrows. As uh, Cook defends the first ball <laughs> from uh, from Thompson. Uh, <laughs> i got the occasional one. Right. But I generally tend not to have eyebrows. I don't know why. One, six, five for four. You can have some of mine, Dave. Stick them on. Thank you very much. Short leg, slip, leg, slip. Thompson bowls as uh, Cook tries to whip it on the leg side. Is hit on the pad. Ball rolls out on the uh, the offside. No run. One six five for four here on BBC Sport Online. Shortish mid wicket. Four saving the single as uh, Cook defends that one back to the bowler. No run. Cook last season, 733 runs as an average of 45. Two hundreds and two fifties. Batting at six rather than his usual seven of last season. Root having been promoted from six to opener in the absence of the injured Eddie Byram. Down the wicket comes Cook and defends once he got there. So uh, Thompson had Zayn Al Hassan stumped coming down the wicket. Seemed to be charging and changed his mind a little bit too late. Out of character as well. Mm. Next delivery nerdled away by Cook on the leg side. Ingram that time was looking for a single, and it was Cook who said no as uh, Dal fielded adroitly sunshine just getting a, a little bit hazier the clouds are very high but uh, pleasant enough outside as cook is back on his stumps not finding life terribly pleasant as he chops down on that one slightly late and uh, sends it trickling up to mid off well bold alex thompson 13 overs two for 35 the other two wickets in the morning session fell to Blair Tickner. And uh, Glamorgan are 165 for four. But you've got the feeling that uh, this is still around about 50-50. Yeah, I think so. They'd probably like another wicket or two, Derbyshire, wouldn't they, having put uh, Glamorgan in. But as I said earlier, all four teams that won the toss this morning in the second division put the opposition in. And... Uh, Apart by well, Leicester should have now 218 for five against Sussex at Grace Road, so they're, uh, they're struggling a little bit. 240 for six Yorkshire against Gloucestershire at Bristol, but Northampton are 183 for one against that very potent Middlesex attack. Here is Sam Connors beginning a new over. First delivery is pushed by Ingram out towards point, and they get through for a single. 23 to Ingram, 166 for four now. Terry Whitley's been on. Good to hear from you, Terry. Uh, 
Hoping it's a better season than last season, yes. Yeah, we all are. A county championship win would be nice. Well, a, a previous drought was broken here on this ground. Indeed. As Connor's balls, nobody says, trying to work out what you're talking about. Uh, driven by Cook up towards mid off, and there's no run. The Hamadullah Kadri match. Yes. The pink ball match. Dreadful. Dreadful pink ball day night experiment. Really didn't work on that occasion. Well, it was a spinner, wasn't it, on the last day? Kadri, 16 years of age, now with Kent, of course. Uh, Potentially bowling in tandem with the Hardest Viljean. I can't quite remember. It might have been before Hardest. Here comes Connors and um, bowls to Cook, who swings this one away down to deep backward square leg for four. There was a man down at long leg, Alex Thompson, but he couldn't get round in time. He was having a chat with his fellow spinner, uh, Jack Morley, who's uh, carrying a water bottle at the time. Uh, but he couldn't get there, and it crosses the boundary, and Cook moves on to seven, 170 for four now, his first boundary. Chris Cook, in his testimonial year, there is a brochure available, which um, features a modest contribution from yours truly. Yeah. <laughs> Connors is in. Balls, that one is driven by Cook. All right, so I wrote a... a Small article on Chris Cook's Morgan career for oh, his uh, for his bro brochure, and um, I mean, given that he's had a largely positive career, and it was a you know he's a nice chap to deal with. Uh, it was uh, somewhat gushing. I got to the end and thought, you know, this is too gushing, so I put in, but his bowling's still rubbish, or words to that effect, <laughs> <laughs> just to give it a little spice. Yeah. I'm sure the sub will have spotted that. <laughs> <laughs> it's Connors in the ball to Ingram, who uh, pushes it up defensively towards Lewis Reese at mid on. Uh, I believe it was uh, collated by Mike Fatkin, the former Glamorgan secretary, who uh, is now involved with the former Players Association. He was helping put that together on Chris's behalf. Various testimonial merchandise available Excellent. as well. And he's not paying me to say it even. <laughs> Connors to complete his 11th over. The ball is driven very nicely by Ingram out towards the cover boundary where Anna's Dahl is uh, patrolling. Keeps them down to a single. Ingram moves on to 24 and keeps the strike. 172 for 4. I've just been asked for a... Uh, the Norse graph? Uh, no. For the video that I s put up this morning at five past nine, do I still have it? Well, so I've sent it to the relevant person, but I'm, I'm desperate to know why he wants it. Probably um, slightly outdated by now, with all due respect. Yeah, well, completely outdated. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure he'll, he'll let me know. One of our, one of our finest operatives... Is going to critique it, presumably. Did it consist of you bouncing around Sapphire Gardens, pointing no, to things and no. describing them as brilliant? No, I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> no. no. In the wake of uh, Dave's previous uh, video offering from the County Ground Derby. 127,000 views that video had. Woof. I'm very impressed. You, I was absolutely flabbergasted on day one. <laughs> but it got to 100,000 before I went to bed which was very concerning from midday till about half ten. Mm. It just went mad. Marvellous. Brilliant. Ingram on strike on 24. Still two slips and a short leg for the probing of Alex Thompson as that one goes through outside off stump with no shot being played. So outfielders, well, Chapel continues to appear to limber up the square leg boundary. As Thompson bowls, Ingram plays no shot again. He's confident in the turn, is Colin Ingram. The other outfielder is uh, Connors, just taking a drink on board at uh, deep cover. 
Mid-off is pushed back slightly as Ingram drives back to the bowler. And there is no run. So two wickets apiece for Blair Tickner in the morning session and Alex Thompson in the afternoon session and Thompson looking to add a third and Ingram denying him as he plays defensively. Colin Ingram now 24 off 67 balls playing in the rather lower gear at the moment this season. No doubt there'll be some fireworks to come at some point. With the white ball anyway as Ingram plays that one very gently back to the bowler and there's no run. Batting to come, Douthwaite, Harris, Crane, Hamza and McElroy. With all due respect, maybe not the uh, strongest lower order they fielded. But Douthwaite can hit the ball. He can hit the ball. As uh, that one's through outside off stump, he can hit it a very long way on yes, occasion. I'm sure I've seen him hit it a long way, either mm. on television or live, one or the other. The, the veracity of the remainder of the tail, I'm not sure. James Harris can hold a bat, can't he? Yes, he knows what to do with it. Been somewhat less effective in his second Glamorgan spell than he was in his Middlesex years. Mm. Crane, Hamza, McElroy, 9-10, Jack, in some order. I'm not sure whether uh, which order... Well, I would have thought Crane at 9 is, is reasonably secure. I'm not sure about Hamza, never having seen him bat. McElroy got his uh, average up to... Uh, what was it last season? 15, with a few not-outs. It's me, isn't it? Connors bowls the first delivery of a new over to uh, Chris Cook. He pushes it out into the offside and there's no run. Surrey have uh, induced a collapse on the part of Somerset this afternoon. Claimed seven wickets in the session, apparently. Mm, 2.25 for eight. Warwickshire, in contrast, uh, 333 without loss, 343 without loss against Durham. God, his bowls, I wonder what the commentator's like. That one is pushed up to uh, a very straight mid-on where Harry Kane comes around from straight mid-wicket to do the fielding. At least he won't be on the stream. You, well, that's at edge piston, so... Yeah, no, I don't think they... I think they, they do their own, yeah, do they? Yeah, there was one stream that was just silenced last week, and I can't remember which one it was. Whether it was Derby? Derby. Well, <laughs> I was definitely silent, yeah. But there was, uh, whether there was a technical issue or not. Here's Connors. Ian again and Bowles. And that one is defended by Cook. Now it's into the offside. Playing for T, presumably. The evening session, as suggested, will be lengthy-ish. It'll probably be 40 overs. Mm. So an extra half an hour on top, which sort of makes sense, given... That we lost half an hour at the start of the day, but that half an hour is probably going to go from 6.30 till 7 rather than 6 until 6.30. But it's nice to see cricket. It is. And Connors is on his way in now, past umpire Bainton and Bowles. That one is uh, outside half of the bat from Cook into the offside. And Aaron Donald does the fielding. And Tickner in the offside. Tickner at a cover position. Not sure that's his natural habitat. Steve West saying we've been fortunate in our wicket keepers over the years. His favourite though is Avian Jones. Those were the days. <laughs> and goes Connors again at bowls to Cook, who pushes this one up towards Lewis Reese at mid-off, a wide mid-off. Oh, Durham have made a breakthrough with uh, Warwickshire 343 for one. Yates out for 191. Oof. Having just hit 14 off three balls from Ackerman. I got a bit loose. <laughs> <laughs> He's given it away, and that <laughs> nervous 190s. Yeah. Here comes Connors again. Balls, Cook. Uh, it's a foolish delivery, pushes it up to Zach Chapel at mid-on. It's the end of the over, 172 for four. In one of the two innings that he had in pre-season, and Iron Donald went 4-6-4 four, four out. Uh, and if anybody's seen the out one, 
uh, he did very well to reach it. Oh, yes, yes. It was, I, it was about it five yards wrong. wide of the off stump, so and he still, still managed to get some bat on it. <laughs> Bless him. I did ask him. He said, I thought it was going to be a wide. Well, well it's not if you well, hit it. <laughs> no. <laughs> come on, come on now. Sort it out. No, he, he, he's batted nicely in the two innings he's had. <laughs> You know, you know what's happening now? I've got to limber up for another 20-second burst of actual radio. On the radio and across the uh, East Midlands? No, just just on Radio Derby, which, oh, right. which is why it's 20 seconds. Ah, oh, right. It's all a bit complicated these days. Thompson to Ingram, who defends it back to the bowler, and there is no run, as uh, listeners to this broadcast will probably hear... Uh, 25 to 30 seconds of me summarising affairs, but hopefully that should be uh, after Thompson's uh, finished bowling this over. As he bowls to Ingram, who plays it cautiously into the offside. Glamorgan was 60 for two at lunch. Since then, they've lost Zayn Ul Hassan. Stumped guest bowled Thompson for 35 for the score in 113. And then Kieran Carlson leg before to Thompson for 74 with the score on 155. Thompson loses his uh, grip on proceedings, loses his run up, maybe a damp patch. Didn't feel able to deliver. Four o'clock on the board, so uh, this will be the last over before T as Ingram plays no shot. There's a silly point now rather than a short leg. Into uh, Looking into uh, the face of Colin Ingram is an Iron Donald. He'd enjoy watching those two back together in T20 cricket, certainly. But Ingram in championship mode is uh, defending again back to the bowler and uh, there's no run. 172 for 4 Argle Morgan with Ingram. 24 not out, and Cook on 8 not out, having hit the one boundary. Thompson, on the fifth ball of his over, balls. Ingram blocks it stoically back to him. Final ball of the session, then, during which Glamorgan have so far scored 112 runs for the loss of two wickets. We're still fairly evenly poised here at Sapphire Gardens as Ingram plays no shot to the last ball of the session. There are some faux dramatics from Wayne Madsen at slip as they all head off for tea. Summary for BBC Radio Wales will follow shortly, but commentary resumes at 20 past four here on BBC Sport Online and on the Glamorgan and Derbyshire streams. I've got some latest scores from the other games taking place elsewhere in the Vitality County Championship. We'll start at the Utilita Bowl in Southampton, where Hampshire batting first against Lancashire at County 216 for four. Plenty of runs today at Edgbaston, where we see Warwickshire after opting to bowl. Warwickshire 346. At Northampton, Middlesex won the toss. They also elected to bowl first. And at Team Northamptonshire, 183 for one. 
The game is evenly poised at the T interval with Glamorgan on 172 for four. They've lost two wickets in the afternoon session. Zain Al Hassan, who has stumped off the spinner Alex Thompson for 35. Kieran Carlson was going very nicely indeed. He made 74 before he fell leg before to Thompson. Chris Cook is on eight, not out. Colin Ingram is on 24. Two wickets in the morning session for Blair Tickner after David Lloyd won the toss and put his previous county into bat. Glamorgan won seven two for four.
Here they come, umpires uh, Neil Bainton and Rob Bailey making their way out to the middle for what is going to be a 40-over session, a 40-over final session here at Sophia Gardens in the game between Glamorgan and Derbyshire, second county championship match of the season for both teams, although the first time Derbyshire have actually played and uh, Glamorgan will resume on 172 for four with Colin Ingram on 24 and uh, Chris Cook on eight. They're just making their way down the steps. The Derbyshire players, they look weary, <laughs> if I'm entirely honest. But then Blair Tickner, who uh, we're going to speak to at the close of play, I've been told, has removed his cap. So that's good news. Uh, uh, Dav Pritchard is with us. See, I didn't, I didn't, I, I bottled out there. Oh. <laughs> I That's almost, what everyone calls me, so I, it's only accurate. I know, Dav. I almost went through with it. Uh, Nick Webb will be back with us in the fullness of time. And, uh, yeah, well, you've only got us three, basically, between now and uh, whenever 40 overs are bowled. Uh, we will get through them all. I have no doubt that there is still... It's not quite blue sky anymore. It's sort of hazy sky above, and but there are still shadows being cast by the sun, as David Lloyd talks to his big New Zealand fast bowler, who picked up a couple of wickets this morning, and now has, uh, I was going to say now has figures of, but he's not on the board yet. Alex Thompson's got two this afternoon, or got two in the afternoon session. He's got two for 35 from 15, bowled really nicely, and turned the ball a long way. Uh, Blair Tickner will resume with uh, figures of, <laughs> there he is, uh, two for 40 from 10. So a little expensive, but really quick. Uh, and uh, they'll be hoping to get something out of a uh, Kookaburra ball that is 56 overs old. He is used to bowling with Kookaburras, playing in New Zealand. What can he do with this one? He got it to move both ways, bowled at pace this morning, earlier this afternoon. Very impressive spell. There we go, my television switched off through inactivity. There's Tickner in bowls, a full delivery on leg stump, and it's clipped into the leg side. It beats Harry Kane. Cook's going to get runs here, and he's going to get four of them as the despairing <laughs> dive of the fielder out there. I think he sees it's Sam Connors. Put the dive in on the boundary's edge, but couldn't get there. So uh, Glamour can begin the final session of the day with a boundary. And Cook moves on to 12. That's everybody in double figures, isn't it? How many times has that happened in Glamorgan's history? It's never happened in Derbyshire's. That is a good question. With all 11 batters getting into double figures, it's never happened in Derbyshire's history. It's one of those stats that we're waiting for. We've been waiting for it since 1872. In comes Tickner again and bowls. That's a better line. And it's defended by Cook back towards the bowl. He can't quite get down to get any fingertips on it. But uh, there is no room. Griff said, oh, that was a good stat, wasn't it? Uh, and I hadn't seen it. So I'm going to see if I can find it. And David Griffin's full of stats. As you can imagine, because that's what he does. It was a, st a statistic about uh, Blair Tickner and his uh, first dismissal for Derbyshire. He comes in now and bowls one. That, that seemed to keep a bit low, did it? Uh, Cook just gesturing that it might have moved a little bit away on the s off the seam. But, uh, let's have a look on the replay. It was, there was definitely a, an indication, but not a bit late there. Oh, here we go. And that one, no, not really. Oh, it's an inside edge onto his pad. That's why it, uh, it hit the pad as low down as it did. Uh, Tickner, when he dismissed Billy Root with his fourth ball for Derbyshire, it's one of those niche stats that Griff comes up with every now and again. Tickner bowls and Cook defends. Became uh, only the third Derbyshire bowler. <laughs> to get a wicket with his fourth ball in first-class cricket for the club. <laughs> uh, yeah, I told you it was niche. Uh, Charlie Elliott in 1932, so four years before they won the title. And Mitch Wagstaff last season with his uh, leg spin. Mitch also took one with his sixth ball. He took two wickets in his first over. 
thickness in it, a bouncer that doesn't get up an enormous amount and cook ducks underneath it and allows it to go through to Brook Guest. Yeah, five bowlers have done it with their first ball. I think I've only seen it once. Uh, Finn Hudson Prentice did it, got a wicket with his first ball, having scored 99 in his first innings, which remains his highest score. It's one of those stats where you're more impressed with the way the person who's found it has compiled that stat. Yeah. Oh, how they know to find that, that is impressive. Oh, he knows how to find just about everything. David Griffin, taking the balls, defended by Cook, back to him. He comes out with all sorts. It's the end of the first over after T. Uh, Ingram has 24, Cook has 12, Glamorgan 176 for four. I don't think NB play is ever going to work again. It is remarkable how it's not working. Oh, it is working now. Excellent, because well, I prefer that one. There we go. It's a very oh, useful resource. Oh, I think so. I like it. There's a surprise. Alex Thompson is going to continue. It isn't a surprise. He bowled 14 overs, three maidens, two for 35 in the afternoon session, all in one go. Thank you, Envy Play. The one thing it doesn't do is put the games in the right order. But it's a minor, uh, minor criticism. And who am I to criticise? So, Thompson, who impressed in the afternoon session, will continue, and he's bowling around the wicket to Ingram, who turns that down towards fine leg for a single. Yeah, Thompson getting unusually prodigious turn for a spinner on the first day of a county championship match here in Cardiff particularly in April. He's bowled very well. Tight as well as dangerous. And he'll continue around the wicket to the right-handed Cook. With a catcher in at short leg as Thompson comes in. It goes up in the air. The catcher does take it, but it's uh, off the pad, judging by the initially hopeful but strained appeals. Yes, and Aaron Donald taking the catch and then tossing the ball to Sam Connors who promptly dropped it. Yeah, Donald on the uh, taller side for a short leg fielder, isn't he? Mm. A long way down for him as Thompson continues around the wicket to Cook who plays it in Donald's direction once more but this time it's a more controlled and low effort. Do you think that's his wicket keeping skills? He did keep wicket in the final session of the game against uh, the Leeds Bradford <laughs> students. <laughs> I've got to stop doing that. As Thompson comes around to cook coup defence. Yes, I'm, I'm not very good with chairs that go up and down and they tend to go down very quickly if I touch the, uh, touch the lever with my clod hopping feet. Um, and just yeah, just wonder if he, if he goes in at short leg because he is a keeper. Yeah, it's an interesting point. Used to being in that low squatting position. Yeah. Thompson Old Cook comes down the pitch, but won't get any runs for that shot onto the onside. It might be because nobody else wanted to do it. Um, Harry came more often than not last season was the man who went there. I think the least senior of all the players. Thompson. Stops halfway through with one run up and he'll start again. <laughs> Runs backwards. And Cook drives down to mid on for a single. Yeah, it's rare that you get a senior player who kind of specialises in those short yeah. leg areas. Ollie Pope, maybe one. Alistair Cook spent a lot of his career there, didn't he? But there's not many of them, with good reason. I think, he, I think Nye also likes to be involved, doesn't he? He's one of those cricketers who he likes a chat wants to be involved and uh, you're very involved if you're that close to a, to a spinner he's, obviously he's got the uh, the fielding pads on as well for obvious reasons yes. then, you, then you also look around and you say well it can't be Lewis Reese because he could bowl it mm. can't be David Lloyd because he could bowl all the other bowlers can't do it it doesn't leave many 
And like you said, if it you might just be by default <laughs> that he's there. I'm trying to work out who else could do it. Harry Kane has bowled, so he couldn't be doing it. That only leaves uh, an iron. Here's Blair Tickner in bowls, beginning a new over to Chris Cook, uh, pushed out to David Lloyd, who is at uh, a catching uh, mid wicket. And there's no run. Yeah, he's, he's doing it because there is nobody else who can do it. Apart from Wayne Madsen. And it would be uh, a little unfair to expect somebody in his 40th year to be bending down and up and down all day long, wouldn't it? At short leg. And he's a good slipper too as uh, Tickner bowls and is defended by Cook out into the offside. Yeah, that stage in your career, you've earned the right to choose where you feel, haven't think, you? I think if the captain says, would you like to feel at short leg, you can say no. <laughs> I'm all right, thanks. <laughs> there is Tickner then, that little strange sort of running on the spot at the top of his mark, and now he's in and bowls edge down. It doesn't actually carry to Wayne Madsen's left hand and goes away down to a very fine third man for four runs. Wayne Madsen slams his hand against the floor. I didn't think it carried. That was the impression I got. He's standing slightly wider than the first slip as well. It was a genuine edge uh, off Cook's bat. Let's have a look on the replay. Oof, that would have been spectacular had he taken that. It probably did just about carry, but whether it's it's more of a half chance than a full chance, I would suggest. Absolutely. Uh, Wayne yeah. Madsen, who regularly tops the non wicket keepers with the most catches in the season table for Derbyshire. He's got an enormous number of catches over the course of his career. Which I'm gonna to have to now find out how many it is exactly, otherwise it will be an incomplete uh, Statement as Tickner is in, and this time uh, Cook had moved on to 17 with that edged boundary, defends it off the back foot into the offside, and there is no run. Is that fair? It, it sort of carried, but sort of didn't. It would have been a wonder I mean. catch if he'd have held on, wouldn't he? Uh, it was a real borderline one, wasn't it? It was almost like it was touching the ground at the exact point where yeah. he might have caught it. So, yeah, if he had caught it, that would have been. An one of those that would have been a viral clip in, in no time, I'm I sure. I think if it, had, if it had been an orthodox first slip as well, he would have had to have got down too quickly vertically as this one is uh, driven by Cook into the offside. Lewis Reese tumbling half stop, but they're, they've satisfied themselves with a single. And they move on to 183 for four. Cook on to 18. Yeah, Wayne Madsen has got 272 first-class catches in 226 matches, which is, which is a lot to go with his almost 15,000 first-class runs and 36 centuries and 83 half-centuries. He's a remarkable cricketer who is, uh, actually, I said he was in his 40th year. He's in his 41st year now. He was 40 earlier this year. Ingram waits on 25. Tickner in and bowls to him. And that one is turned into the leg side. They're going through for a quick single to the left hand of uh, Lewis Reese, who decides against shying at the stumps because Cook was there nice and quickly. Ingram moves to 26. 184 for four at the end of 30. No, not 30. 59 overs. Tickner's figures now 12 overs. One maiden. Two for 50. So if you're taking your wickets at 25... You're doing okay in the crowd. Thoroughly enjoying the late evening sun here at Sapphire Gardens. Why wouldn't they? Yeah, I went for a walk during the tea break and it's still beautifully warm compared to what we've had. Is it sitting night? outside an establishment kind of weather? Do you think it was last night? We didn't sit outside as it turned out. But even coming out at the late hour that we did it of uh, nine o'clock, having uh, had our fill, it was still pretty warm. Granted, I'm wearing a, a jumper, but yeah, light jacket or jumper, dress I suitably, like, and I uh, think you'd be fine. I have a light jacket, legs under the table, everything sorted, excellent. The tropical climbs of Cardiff as Thompson <laughs> continues around the wicket, and Ingram plays out on the back foot through the covers for a single. Yeah, it was raining heavily as recently as yesterday, hence the slightly delayed start this morning, but it's turning out into... Well, I came down the A50 
This is the A50, isn't it? Monmouth. Is that right? Comes out at the comes out at Celtic Manor. A four four nine. Is it? Yeah. I thought it was on the A fifty. I'll bow to Nick's superior motorway knowledge here. It's the M fifty yeah. and then the A four four nine. Okay. And it was beautiful all the way down to Monmouth. Just past there it, it looked really grim. But it was alright yesterday evening. Thompson is coming around the wicket to Cook who prods it onto the leg side. Some gasps from the Derbyshire fielders who are getting excited that an Aaron Donald at short leg is in the game, but yet to be given a real chance from any of the batters. As he crouches down in anticipation of the next delivery from Thompson, who's around the wicket. Again, Cook onto the back foot, tries to flick it on the leg side, but makes no contact, and the wicket keeper Brooke Guest is on hand to, to tidy up. What a knowledge between those two players having a good old chat, Lloyd and Madsen. First class cricket over the years. And when Madsen, the upshot is that he's come out of slip and he's gone into a very straight, short mid on. Yeah, so, for a very leg side heavy field here for Thompson coming around the wicket, Lloyd at leg slip. And Cook just dabs that onto the offside for no run. Yeah, very concerted ploy here from Derbyshire. Lloyd, Donald, Madsen and Dahl all in catching positions on the leg side. As Thompson is at the top of his run with one ball left in the over. He's around the wicket and Cook just dabs another defensive stroke. For no run, so at the end of the 60th over, Glamorgan are 185 for four. The new ball hoving into view. <laughs> In about an hour and a half, if anybody wants to come back. Although you will miss Blair taking the bowling, and you, you don't want to do that. He's going to continue from the Cathedral Road end. His uh, third over since T. Ten runs conceded so far. Desperately working on that ball. I bet he hasn't had the bad news that he's going to be talking to us at the close of play yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he is working hard at that ball, isn't he? Yeah. I was just thinking as well, from this end and coming in all arms and legs as he does, bustling in his pace, he does remind me slightly of Michael Niso, who performed so well here for Glamorgan in recent years. First, del yeah, first delivery is uh, turned into the leg side by Ingram. Filled it by the bowler himself. Yeah, he's a, he's, he's a bustler, isn't he? Rather than a smooth, silent. He's, he's no Michael Holding. <laughs> he's pretty effective this morning. And now into his fourth spell. In and bowls, and that one is driven very nicely. A punch drive, it gets past uh, the fielder close in, and Aaron Donald will go all the way to the boundary. It'll, well, no, it won't go all the way to the boundary, I beg your pardon. It's been fielded by uh, Zach Chappell, who chased after it. Uh, three to Ingram, who moves on to 30. I was convinced that was going to go all the way to the boundary until the uh, keeper of the gates of Hades got there. <laughs> If you don't know, you need to rewind about 90 minutes, I think. Something like that, anyway. Next delivery is a, an effort ball, short delivery that goes over the back of a crouching cook down the leg side and taken by Brooke Guest, round about head high. It's difficult with the ball this old to, try and get, to get too much bounce out of it, I would have thought. But and when the batter's as relatively short as Chris Cook as well, yeah, slightly easier for him to duck out of the way. You won't bowl too many because you'd, you'd expect there'll be, there will be 16 overs with the new ball, won't there, if they take it. As Tickner is in bowls, and that one is defended by Cook. Back to the bowler once again. There's applause for 
something. The, the partnership's worth uh, 33. I'm not 100% sure what that applause was for, and I apologise for not knowing, but we're all baffled. Next delivery is uh, defended again by Cook, slightly more aggressive. And that sort of rippling around the ground, the applause. Or is the applause for Alex Thompson, who's now fielding down in front of that little group of spectators at the far end at fine leg? Could have been for him. If there's a Derbyshire contingent over there. I've certainly seen a few Derbyshire shirts. Oh, yeah, the there's, oh, there's plenty of Derbyshire fans here today. Good to see them. There's Tickner Bowles, and once again pushed into the offside by Cook, fielded by Donald. End of the over. And more applause. So, as, as Ingram must have passed a milestone in first class cricket or something, that's the only thing I can think of. No, that's not it. Cook's got 7,179 first-class runs, and Ingram's got 7,790. If anybody out there knows and you're listening, do let me know. That was a strange one, wasn't it? It, was a, it felt like the applause followed a dot ball as well, mm -hmm. so it was as if it was a delayed reaction to whatever the landmark might have been. it has be something really obvious that I've missed. But... Missed it, I have. Thompson is around the wicket to Ingram, and you over, and Ingram defends the first ball. Well, these have been Derbyshire's two best bowlers of the day, and they're working in tandem. The pace of Tickner at one end, and now the spin of Thompson from the river end. Ingram drives, and he's caught. Anuj Dahl was there in a catching position. Short mid off, Ingram fell into the trap. His airborne drive is snaffled by Anuj Dahl, and Alex Thompson has his third wicket. Glamorgan a five down, they're 188 for five. Almost the definition of giving your wicket away, I would suggest. He's had a real slap at that. Anuj Dahl, well, he's a good fielder anyway, but he didn't have to move, and it went straight to him, round about head height takes the catch and a fifth wicket goes down at 188 and Derbyshire will be uh, feeling pretty pleased with themselves I would imagine Colin Ingram was 30 to Ingram a sound of surprise in the good doctor's voice <laughs> I'm not sure why uh, he was out there remarkably for 82 deliveries Colin Ingram and hit 1-4 that's not Colin Ingram is it no, exactly. No, not even in red ball cricket. I get the feeling he would score quicker than that. Yeah, like he did at Middlesex last week, mm. he might start, you know, relatively cautious to to begin with, but you do expect the acceleration to come when he's as set as he was. Trickier pitch, uh, yeah. I think it's fair to say. Uh, and it is turning. Whether he just was surprised by that delivery or... But the game moves on, which is good to see. You could tell he was disappointed the way he kind of lent on his bat uh, after getting caught there. And it feels like the game is quite delicately poised here, doesn't it? Glamorgan, 188 for five. Dan Douthwaite in next. Another who naturally is a very aggressive player, likes to score his runs in boundaries and sixes. But again, you'd think with the match situation as it is, he'll be required to get his eye in, feel his way into this innings. It does feel like... A Bit of a crossroads moment for the match at this early stage. These are almost bonus wickets, aren't they, with this ball 62 hours old nearly as well. The, the ideal is to, the theory being that, yes, the new ball might do a bit, but it's also going to come off the bat better. It's not easy to score with, a, with an old ball either. Yeah, especially the way Thompson's been bowling. Been next to no freebies from him, have they? He's been... Impressively accurate throughout his spells today. No, he's bowled nicely. Really nicely. 
We're going to see Thompson and Thompson and Tickner as a double act throughout the course of the the first half of the season, anyway. While Tickner's here, and Thompson's around the wicket to the new man Douthwaite, who tickles it down the leg side. Was that bat or pad? It might have been a combination of the two. As the ball runs down towards the boundary, but will be cut off at fine leg. And Douthwaite returns for a second run, which will indeed go down as leg by. So he's yet to get off the mark, but Glamorgan move on to 190 for five. Yeah, no, it, after it, it was probably going to hit the stumps. Pitched outside leg stump, of course, round the wicket to the right-hander. As Thompson continues around the wicket to Douthwaite, who's forward and defending. There's not a great deal of batting to come now from Glamorgan. James Harris, the next in. An accomplished lower order bat, but maybe a, a touch higher than we're used to seeing him coming in at eight. As Thompson wheels in once more, down on the leg side, and Douthwaite plays with the idea of putting a bat on it, but uh, goes straight through to the guest. You just get the sense that things are getting just a a little twitchy for Glamorgan at this stage. A mm. slightly difficult phase of the game for them to navigate. Thompson comes in again around the wicket and Douthwick tries to drive and doesn't really connect with that one. Almost yorked himself. And that's the end of the 62nd over. Glamorgan 190 for five. Another good over from Thompson. Three for 38. His figures now. Perhaps we'll hear that ripple of applause again and then we can confirm that it was because Alex Thompson went down the field at long leg. I would imagine that he would get some applause anyway. Down, if, he, if he ever gets down there, because he's, he's sort of walking backwards very slowly at the moment. Alex Thompson. Derbyshire, one wicket away from another bonus point. Excitement is building. <laughs> Gloucestershire have uh, got Yorkshire 7 down now. 286 for 7. Northampton is it? That's uh, Northampton 213 for 2 against Middlesex. Here's Blair Tickner beginning a new over from the Cathedral Road end in and bowling to Chris Cook, who just guides that ball out towards backward point. In off the boundary comes Anuj Dahl, and they go through for a single. I don't think Tickner will mind that too much, bowling to the new batter, Douthwaite. Last issue, 244 for five against Sussex at Grace Road. The Warwickshire might have lost a wicket, but it hasn't slowed them down particularly. 379 for one, and there are still 19 and a half hours to go at Edgebaston against Durham. Wow. That takes me back to the hottest day of the year. Was that last year? In comes Tickner and bowls to, to uh, Douthwaite, who plays off the back foot, pushes the ball up to mid-off. I think it was last year. We had one of those stinking hot days when it got to 40 degrees. That was last year, wasn't it? Yeah. Knott's won the toss. Were they in the first first division last... Who got promoted last year? No, it must have been the year before. Because, yeah, Durham and Worcestershire went up last year, didn't they? Uh, so it must have been the year before. Notts won the toss and batted on the hottest day of the year and made 450 for two or something. That was horrible. <laughs> there goes Tickner in and bowls, and that one is pushed out towards Lewis Reese this time. Reese threatens to throw down the stumps at uh, Cook's end, but holds on to the ball. Notts themselves, 241 for six against Worcestershire. At uh, Trent Bridge, Essex 290 for four against Kent at Chelmsford. Hampshire 242 for four against Lancashire at uh, Southampton. And Somerset are now nine down. 250 for nine against Surrey at the Oval. Here, yeah, Glamorgan 191 for five as Tickner bowls. And that one is driven back and nicely stopped in his follow through by the New Zealander. Right arm stuck out. Tumbling stop. Immediately gets back to his feet and marches back to the top of his mark. The shadows start to uh, 
inch their way across the Sapphire Gardens outfield. Good to see the shadow of the floodlight they were working on yesterday. I, I, I assume the floodlight's there, not just the shadow. This one is guided <laughs> very nicely by Douthwaite down towards the backward point boundary. Dahl is giving chase. The ball was going to stop anyway, but he still puts the slide in. And uh, Madsen, who'd been following him, but not particularly closely, uh, given the relative speeds of the two men, throws the ball back in. And Douthwaite gets off the mark with three. And the Glamorgan moved to 194 for five. Yeah, you get the impression that this is a key partnership for Glamorgan, Cook and Delthwaite. The last two genuine batters, you could say, has accomplished a, a lower order batter as James Harris is. Cook relatively well set here. Two players who can play their shots when they get going. Cook's on 19. Tickner balls from a full delivery against the toe of the bat on that one. He does well, and Tickner just throws his head back. Thought for a split second he might have sneaked the ball underneath Cook's bat. He didn't. He remains on 19. Douthwaite has three. 194 for five at the end of the over. And a mere 33 overs left in the session. So it's a session and a ball still to go. And on that, I'll leave you in the capable hands of Nick Webb as well as Dave. Dave, don't go too far. I've got to go in nine minutes. For my last timed bulletin of the day, I'm delighted to say. They're terrifying the life out of me at the moment. So it looks like uh, Thompson's going to continue, but not until after the Welsh duo of Aniron Donald and David Lloyd have had a, a lengthy chat with him and they're pointing at Harry Kame who's going a little bit more towards the point boundary but he's, he's, he's effectively on the cover boundary and he's been moved an extra foot there so he actually he marks it and the fielders have different ways of marking things he's stuck his right heel in the uh, in the turf and he's actually still on the square technically so the ground staff won't be best pleased. And twisted it round. Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of a loosener there from yeah. Thompson. Down the leg side and turning further down the leg side. Which is handy-ish because there are three fielders all helmeted waiting for a catch down the leg side. But Thompson's in again. Bowls. This one's driven by Douthwaite. Up towards uh, Tickner at mid-off, mid-on. And they go through for a single one, 95 for five, Douthwaite on to four. Given the presence of those close fielders, I would imagine that that means that mid-on ought to be on his guard because Douthwaite's reaction may be to try and... Hit, hit them away. Mm, yeah. Blast the, blasted away. Yeah, one of them under the helmet appeared to be uh, Lewis Reese. I don't think I've ever seen him field with a helmet. Yeah, field with a cap. Slips out now for uh, Cook, as uh, this one is tossed up outside the off stump and pushed into the offside. There is no run when Madsen, the slip, or was the slip, is now the uh, very straight, shortish mid on. Short leg, leg slip. Just two fielders on the offside. Thompson loses his run up. There's a backward square leg, there's a, an orthodox mid-wicket, a deep mid-on, and a man out on the mid-wicket boundary as well. As Thompson bowls to Cook, and that one's down the leg side and left alone by Cook. More spin options for Glamorgan, I would suggest, than Derbyshire, which is slightly terrifying. <laughs> Carlson will enjoy bowling on this more than he did at Lord's, I mm. would uh, imagine. Mason Crane as well. As this next delivery, it's a sort of flat one, it's in the air off the pad, and, uh, and Aaron Donald takes the catch to almost complete silence out there, <laughs> understandably. Yeah, Glamorgan haven't put much in the way of partnerships together, 60 has been their best for the third wicket. Never looked uh, really to be getting out of Derbyshire's grip with the ball. 195 for five. Thompson just stretches out his left hamstring. 
certainly didn't warm up to the extent that he needed to bowl as much as he has. This one is uh, guided into the offside by Cook. Around comes Sam Connors from mid-off to do the fielding and they go through for a single. Of the final ball of the Thompson over, 19 overs, five maidens, three for 40 now. Cook on to 20 and pinches the strike. Dowthwaite has four. Glamorgan 196 for five. Yeah, Dowthwaite at the age of 27 said last week that uh, he's got the period where he needs to be playing more regularly in, in red ball cricket. For the sake of his career, started uh, last season in the Championship first team, but only played four matches in that format. So, uh, looking forward to uh, convincing a, a new coach that uh, he's worthy. But uh, his stats last season in red ball cricket didn't really justify a continuing place. 19 with the bat, 50-ish with the ball, and uh, certainly made an impact in T20 before getting injured but wants to be more than a, a white ball blaster, I think. Zach Chappell, just his ninth over of the day. I was yeah. trying to look up a, a picture, which will be of no real purpose to uh, commentators, so maybe I'll show it to, to you off air later, <laughs> of uh, the character whom he reminded me of, as Chappell starts a new over, down leg side, and uh, Cook tries to glance towards fine leg. I think he's hit on the pad. Yes, umpire Bainton gives his knee a tap. And there is more mysterious applause. Yeah, trying to keep themselves amused almost, aren't they? That's <laughs> very strange. 197 for five. It's one of those uh, quiet periods of the game. When uh, Derbyshire are sort of slightly on top, maybe, at the moment. Yeah, they've got to make sure in these 15 overs and five balls before the new ball's available that Glamorgan don't get away. But it's not easy to get away when you're batting against a soft ball, is it? Chapel is in to bowl to Dowthwaite, who drives on the leg side. But there is no run. He walks a bit like one of the Gumbies. Monty Python. <laughs> <laughs> he was doing all sorts of uh, strange dance moves during the student game, the final ga final day of the student game mm -hmm. that we were at, just to keep himself amused. All right. Including at one point twerking. Good heavens. Yeah. As uh, Chapel is in to bowl to Dowthwaite, who drives again fiercely, but uh, picks out Tickner at mid-on, who hurls the ball back to Brooke Guest, and there is no run. I'm still waiting for my first wicket of the season. Haven't called one yet. Haven't you? No. no. It'll have been noted by the Derbyshire supporters, I'm sure. <laughs> Uh, another blank day for Fletcher. <laughs> what is he doing? Dowthwaite on strike on four and uh, hits that one hard. Cross back towards point who half stops and there is no run. I found a, a, oh, yes. a picture of the, the actor in question. He's called Zachary James, if anyone next and to him. He's called device. Zach as well. Yes, another Zach. Yeah, no, I can. Yes, I can. Well, yes. Yes. Uh, and um, if you look at Zachary James. Online, you will uh, see a potential resemblance with Zach Chapel, who is uh, asking the crowd to turn up the volume. Yeah, he's a character. As he runs away from us and bowls, and uh, down so he's hurried by that one and manages just about to defend it in time. And I don't think it's coincidence he is the character that he is. I don't think it's coincidence as he tries to get the crowd revved up mm. that he was Derbyshire's leading wicket-taker in the T20 last year because he enjoys playing in front of big crowds. He actually mm. got picked up by uh, the team at the Oval as well in August, so I think it was the team at the Oval. <laughs> <laughs> he played a bit, and uh, that was on the back of his T20 performances. Here is Chapel in to bowl. Worked away nicely by Dowthwaite off the back foot. And Dowthwaite jogs back for a second run, but there is no need because the ball has gone all the way over the ropes to bring up Glamorgan's 200. That's what that applause is for. 
Nicely timed by Douthwaite to double his tally. Who moves on to eight? 201 for five. This is not a batting point anymore. At, uh, Lords, we we're bemoaning the fact that it wasn't a batting point. 250 is the first point. Derbyshire already have one and are on the verge of a second when they with the ball. So, uh, Alex Thompson giving his cap to umpire Rob Bailey at the River Taff end. 201 for five. Douthwaite eight. Cook is 20. And uh, Thompson will uh, come in from the River Taff end. And he comes, balls to Cook, who turns it to David Lloyd at leg slip. But uh, didn't quite carry, I don't think. I thought it was off the pad. It looked as though it was off the pad, and it bounced anyway. But apart from that, it was uh, absolutely stone cold out. As... Uh, that one lobs up to an iron Donald with David Lloyd getting ever so excited at leg slip. But then Donald didn't appeal. Both wearing 46 are Lloyd and the batter, Chris Cook, a former Glamorgan captain. As Thompson bowls a little faster, Cook deflects it to short fine leg. And there is no run. Cook, another man who changed his number he became 46 with David Lloyd vacating it. Cook previously having been 24 in the Glamorgan ranks. 201 for five. Thompson in. Bowls, appeal for catch at leg slip. Cook's standing. And now he's on his way. And he has gone. Alex Thompson claims another wicket. Chris Cook has gone for 20 and a smart piece of work by David Lloyd to catch that one low to his right, 201 for six. It is a great catch from former Glamorgan captain, now Derbyshire skipper, David Lloyd. Derbyshire have gone to work on Glamorgan's leg side from Alex Thompson's bowling. He's been around the wicket consistently to the right-handers. They've had short legs, short mid on, and a leg slip for quite a while, and it's paid off brilliantly, because that is a fantastic catch, quick, and sharp, low to his right, uh, David Lloyd making a fine return to Sophia Gardens. A really sharp chance then taken by the North Walian for Derbyshire. The new captain snapped that one up. As James Harris is in at uh, number eight. Did bat as high as six in his spell with, uh, with Middlesex. But uh, last season, his average was uh, down in the the mid-teens with the bat. 14.45. Uh, He's capable of better. He's capable of uh, hanging around. But Glamorgan need some sort of impetus now from the lower middle and lower order. Otherwise, this innings is going to fall away in a strange sort of pattern in that... Uh, Everyone has got into uh, double figures. Where only really, some, uh, only really, Kieran Carlson has gone on today. Indeed, yeah, and, and people have got set by playing quite watchful cricket. You know, the the strike rates have been pretty low. Uh, a few of them in the thirties, um, save for uh, Kieran Carlson, who who rattled along at seventy four for his seventy four. Um, so it's a, a funny situation Glamorgan find themselves in now, and with Douthwaite at the other end, somebody who does want to play expansively most of the time. You do wonder if he might now think the time is to accelerate as he begins to bat with the, the lower order. Yes, a total of 250 all out I don't think would be uh, adequate. It may prove in time as Harris plays forward to his first ball. Surrounded by the demons of Derbyshire. Leg slip, backward, 
short leg, forward short leg. And uh, silly mid on, short mid wicket. Five crouching to catch on the leg side as Harris looks to sweep and uh, gets on top of it. It's blocked by Lewis Rees. And there is no run. 201 for six. Derbyshire with a second bowling point. Glamorgan struggling really to, uh, to bat out the day. You'd have to think that uh, Derbyshire will get a turn at the crease with 30 overs still remaining. And clearly the old adage about waiting to see two teams bat before making a judgment on the pitch applies. But you'd imagine Derbyshire will be happy having put Glamorgan in to bat that they have managed to limit them to just 201 for six. The scoring is still only at three and over. Not pedestrian, but not quick by any stretch either. Yeah, certainly given the fact that uh, there are so many naturally free-scoring Glamorgan players in this side, this has been a constrained effort. As Zach Chappell continues from the Cathedral Road end, bowls on a length to Douthwaite, who defends for no run. And there's a bit more of a spring in the step for the Derbyshire fielders now after that latest breakthrough. Still a fairly attacking field for Chappell. Two slips and a wide gully in place for the pace bowler. as he turns and runs in once more to Douthwaite who drives uppishly but safely to mid on pressure building slightly now for Glamorgan and a big moment for Douthwaite isn't it Nick you mentioned that he was keen to play more red ball cricket and with the game poised as it is this is the kind of situation where players are judged yep show us that you've got uh, batting quality as well as power and uh, he'll have to judge when to go for it and uh, when not to. As Chapel is in to Douthwaite, who prods at that on the offside, but for no run. Yeah, Chapel hasn't uh, got any wickets, but he's been quite tight with the ball. Not for 25, halfway through his his tenth over. And although the wickets have gone to uh, Tickner and now to Thompson. The backup has been decent from Chapel and, and Dahl anyway. And here is Chapel at the start of his run once more, charging in from the Cathedral Road end, a full ball which Douthwaite leaves outside the off stump. And interesting that Douthwaite is keen to prove himself in this format as well because players of his generation who have featured predominantly in the white ball formats, we have seen some of them choose to go down the, the road of T20 in one day cricket alone haven't we we have I mean he was uh, a fringe selection in the 100 got a got a selection but not a game unfortunately for Welsh Fire last season and he'll face the penultimate ball of this over from Chapel, which is on a length towards middle and leg and Douthwaite punches it towards mid on Likewise, Chris Cook uh, fell into that category as well. Saw him fielding as a sub here at Sophia Gardens, but uh, that was all. Not a great deal of carry in this pitch, as evident from that last delivery from uh, Zach Chappell, but certainly something for the spinners to work with. Yeah, interesting that the replays showed that ball earlier in the over, which did seem to rather die on Chappell after pitching. There were balls earlier in the innings, perhaps partly to do with the ball being newer that did carry through at shoulder length but here's Chapel, the full ball and Douthwaite slashes at that through the covers and that will go for four I think something of a relief for Dan Douthwaite then having been under a bit of pressure in that over nothing really on offer as you say a little bit of width and he takes full advantage does Douthwaite to uh, move into double figures the Seventh Glamorgan batter to get into double figures. But uh, Carlson's 74 is the only man to uh, go past 40. So James Harris will be on strike at the start of a new over uh, from Alex Thompson. As uh, elsewhere in Division 2, uh, 
Yorkshire, 309 for 8 against Gloucestershire. Sean Massoud, 140 half centuries from Tassel and Milnes in the lower middle order. Uh, Joe Root, they're out for 2 and Harry Bo Brook for 26, the England men. Looking to uh, get some early season runs in the uh, in the county championship. Always good to see England players playing, but uh, it's a shame that it's unusual and we have to remark on it. Indeed. Yeah. Here comes Thompson around the wicket. Driven by Harris to mid-off, and there is no run. At Grace Road, Leicestershire 257 for six. Top scorer there. Rishi Patel with 81, half centuries for Hanscom and Travaskis. Thompson continuing to pound that path around the wicket. Harris sweeps, but uh, wallops it at Donald at short leg. And uh, thankfully for Mr. Donald and his local fan club, it uh, obviously hit the padding and nothing more painful. Harris yet to get off the mark. It's looked happy to play those shots on the leg side, despite those in close attendance. As Harris will get runs here. He should get four of them. He's swept that one. It's down to one of the longer boundaries, and it crosses the ropes. And uh, just uh, wipe that one away through the leg side cordon to get off the mark. Sweet way to do so. 209 for six. That was eh, somewhere around leg stump. It's a, a chance worth taking, though, as it probably wouldn't have been given LBW, given the turn. Had he missed it? He did not. 209 for six. Glamorgan need runs from somewhere, and Derbyshire are at the moment trying to tighten the screw as uh, Harris drives on the bounce to Madsen at short mid on. Mentioning earlier was Mr Fletcher that uh, Thompson does not have a county six wicket haul. His best tally was for uh, Cardiff Universities. He's got a couple of fivers for Derbyshire. As uh, Harris drops it into the offside, looks for a run, but he has uh, played it fairly close to Chapel at point and there's no run. So this might be an opportunity for Alex Thompson to record his uh, county best bowling figures with four wickets still up for grabs and 12 overs before the new ball, which he'll be bowling half a dozen. So he needs two more. It's a four yet to fall for Glamorgan. 209 for six. As Harris looks to dig in. Oh, that makes a complete mess of that one. And he's gone, and it is a fifer for Alex Thompson. And Glamorgan are 209 for seven. Yeah, as you said, Nick James Harris rather made a mess of that one. He'd had some success a few balls earlier, uh, sweeping off the bowling of Alex Thompson. Uh, but that one, pitched outside off stump, spun back and clean bowled Harris, who was rather reaching in an ungainly manner to try and sweep it from a position that really wasn't there to be swept. It was interesting because Harris was entirely turned round and the ball actually went behind his uh, his backside, didn't it, by the time uh, it had uh, reached there. As you say, pitched outside off and hit the top of off. So, Harris goes 209 for seven and Derbyshire now in the driving seat with... Uh, Thompson turning the screw 5 for 44 and uh, certainly online for a, a county best at this rate yeah the reverse sweep is still maligned as a risky shot even though it's very much part of the wheelhouse for most modern day batters but you think there that was in the, in the slot for a reverse sweep mm. from Harris but he went for the conventional sweep and uh, he was beaten all ends up in the end. Almost got it through it too soon. It was a fairly full ball, and he wasn't in a position to play it. Um, other Division 2 score have given you North Ants 240 for 2 against Middlesex. Emilio Gay is 135 not out. In Division 1, Essex 329 for 5 against Kent. Dean Elgar made 120. Matt Critchley is 74 not out. 
Hampshire against Lancashire. Hampshire 262 for five. Pressed 85. Half centuries for Gubbins and Vince there as well. That was the last ball of for the Thompson over. Zach Chappell to continue. Yeah, Mason Crane is the new batter at the crease, but he's at the non-striker's end. So Dan Douthwaite will face the first ball of the 69th over. A first look at Crane in a Glamorgan shirt. Making his debut, having joined on loan from Hampshire. But it'll be Douthwaite to face this delivery from Chapel. That goes down the leg side and is well taken by Brooke Guest. Wearing the gloves for Derbyshire. Yes, Douthwaite trying to uh, hit it somewhere down towards the scoreboard. Elsewhere in Division 1, Knotts 260 for 6 against Worcestershire. And having had their fair share of Worcestershire players over the last couple of seasons, Joe Clark is uh, one of them. He made 105. As Chapel comes in over the wicket to Douthwaite, who drives but will be cut off at mid-off by Lewis Rees. Somerset, having been absolutely in the ascendancy at 196 for one at the Oval against Surrey, are now 280 for nine. Tom Lamanby made exactly 100. Matt Renshaw, 87, run out. Lewis Gregory is 50, not out, and no one else has passed 10. Three wickets apiece for Gus Atkinson and Cameron Steele for Surrey. As Chapel turns at the top of his run-up and steams in from the Cathedral Road end, a full delivery which Douthwaite drives. Straight to the field up in the covers. The field noticeably spread for Douthwaite as Derbyshire identify this as Glamorgan's last real genuine batter and someone who does like to play an aggressive brand of cricket so they want to cut off boundaries as Douthwaite's favoured source of runs as Chapel comes in once more balls on a length and Douthwaite tries to slash it through the covers but rather mistimes it Meanwhile at uh, Edgbaston Warwickshire 396 for one against Durham Rob Yates made 191 Alex Davis the skipper is 178 not out so uh, promoted Durham under the pump despite you would have thought the strength of their uh, bowling attack as Chapel continues and is defended by Douthwaite one more ball left in the in the over here with Glamorgan 209 for 7 does it get to the stage soon do you think where Douthwaite starts Nursing the strike and trying to keep it for himself from Crane, or will he trust him enough to play his shots? Would have thought he'd trust Crane enough, but if Crane goes, then uh, possibly the time to uh, farm the bowling. Here is Chapel, final ball of the over. It's a short on, and Douthwaite pulls well to the square leg boundary and trots through for a single. So in any case, he will keep the strike at the end of the 69th over with Glamorgan 210 for 7. Yeah, just uh, 11 to go till the new ball when you would have thought that uh, Tickner may uh, well take it, having bowled the most impressively of uh, the Derbyshire faster man. No need for David Lloyd to uh, use his own bowling skills on this occasion. As... Uh, he leads a little Derbyshire committee meeting, wandering up towards us with uh, Thompson liable to have uh, ball in hand until the new ball, if indeed Glamorgan lasts that long. 11 overs to go to the new ball and uh, seven wickets down and this Glamorgan innings stalling rather badly, having been 155 for three, 188 for four. And it's fallen away. Derbyshire bowling intelligently and uh, using the pitch, particularly Alex Thompson with a county fifer. Can he make it a first six wicket haul for Derbyshire? Douthwaite on strike. The leg side caught and crouched. Douthwaite 
gets his bat out of the way and uh, nudges it off the hip down towards leg slip. David Lloyd in conversation with Donald as Downsweight pushes forward. Respectfully, that one ball just trickling back down the pitch. No run. 2 10 for 7. And uh, Glamorgan will do really well to reach 250 from this stage, having completely really lost momentum in this uh, session after T. Downsweight goes to the big one and has smashed that one, <laughs> smeared it rather back past the bowler. It was along the ground. And uh, a big swing of the bat from Dan Douthwaite. And that one certainly stayed hit. Through mid-off. Yeah, he's a powerful batter, isn't he, Douthwaite? We've seen that plenty of times in white ball games for Glamorgan. And that was a bit of a swipe. Long on is now back on the ropes at the river end of the ground. And Douthwaite. Drives another one through mid off, and uh, there's a chase for the man from long on. He'll just cut it off. Will uh, Blair Tickner, and they're safely back for two runs. Diving stop from the big Kiwi at the far end. Yeah, it's close to a carbon copy of the previous shot, wasn't it? Hit powerfully, if not exactly middled. Right, two balls of the Thompson over left. Does Dowthwaite now? Try and nudge a single into the offside. There's a huge gap in the covers if he wants to do so. Uh, he pushes it into the offside, but it's too close to the bowler. And Thompson fields himself. 2.16 for seven. Douthwaite has 19 not out. Intriguing battle. Thompson enjoying this particular return to Cardiff. As he finishes his over and Douthwaite drives powerfully on the leg side it's thrown up in the air by uh, Wayne Madsen but only for mock effect 216 for 7 Glamorgan having been 172 for 4 at T this is definitely Derbyshire's session and definitely Alex Thompson's session yeah Derbyshire certainly on top their decision to in Circle Morgan, certainly vindicated so far. Though perhaps with Mason Crane at the crease now, albeit in a batting capacity, he'll be encouraged by some of the spin that Alex Thompson has managed to extract from this pitch. He'll be keen to get a bowl on this surface later in the game. And you wonder if it's turned like this on the first day. Perhaps if you're clutching at straws for Glamorgan, it might be an advantage to bat last if that pitch wears a little and, um, to bowl last, sorry I should say um, with Crane in your armoury Yeah, they need some runs on the board first though and uh, Derbyshire at the moment would have hopes of a first innings advantage As Chapel readies himself at the top of his mark from the Cathedral Road end and it's Mason Crane on strike and he drives at a full delivery for no run. Where's the umpire off? Ah, umpire Bailey fancies uh, a rather more unimpeded view from points because he's got short leg in the way when he's at square leg. Chapel bowls a shortish delivery, which Crane just drops his hands to and allows to pass through, leaving it on length. Neil Thornicroft, enjoying our commentary. Always great to hear the soft tones of Mr. Fletcher. Derbyshire's day without doubt, and says Craig Miles always seemed like an odd loan. Chapel is into Crane, who prods it down and half considers a <laughs> quick single, which Douthwaite convinces him is not the best idea. 
Yeah, Craig Miles, the um, Glamorgan website, saying that um, it wouldn't necessarily be the end of him at, uh, at Glamorgan after just one game, even though he's gone back to Warwickshire. I suppose it depends on the fitness of... Uh, of others, uh, how hard they strive to get someone else in on loan for next week at Northampton if necessary. Here comes Chapel again to Crane, who again drives but for no run. Twitter, Nick Webb 2017, Dav Pritchard or Fletch Sport. And you can contact us via email at nickweb2017 at gmail.com or fletchcricket at gmail.com via the electronic mail. And here comes Chapel once more, still steaming in. A short ball which Crane kind of awkwardly evades. Long gone are the days when we used to have... Uh, Prizes for writing competitions on BBC Radio Wales on a Sunday afternoon. Stay the post these days. <laughs> I'll leave you fill in your own uh, thoughts on that one. One ball left in the 71st over. As Chapel discusses his next move with fellow quick bowler Blair Tickner. And Chapel is going to come around the wicket to Crane for this final ball of the over. And it's a short one, which Crane defends comfortably on the back foot to end the 71st over with Glamorgan 216 for 7. I'll do one more over of uh, Thompson then and uh, allow Dave Fletcher back at the microphone. He's uh, champing at the bit to enjoy a Derbyshire position of superiority. Champing at the bit generally after last week's uh, washout. And uh, Derbyshire looking to finish the job off. Alex Thompson has uh, taken the last um, five wickets to fall. Five for 15 out. As uh, Blair Tickner took the first two this morning. But it has been... Thompson's day as well as Carlson's. Kieran Carlson leading the way with 74 and really batting at a much greater tempo than anyone else has managed as Thompson bowls. Douthwaite pulls and smashes it away for four. Thompson erring in line and uh, Douthwaite lies lit up. Dispatched it down to a fine leg between the coterie of fielders. 220 for seven. And Douthwaite moves to 23. There's not often a, a lot of point in spinning, off spinning the ball if it starts a couple of foot outside leg stump. Yeah, I wonder if that's just the first sign of slight tiredness from Thompson. 23 overs in his first bowl of the season. Douthwaite drives back to the bowler and that is... Six for Alex Thompson. It's a county best as Dan Douthwaite falls. Glamorgan 220 for eight. And it's an Alex Thompson party. Well, just as I was saying that Thompson might be tiring at the uh, end of a long spell, he then gets his sixth wicket and it was a sharp catch. It wasn't an easy take because Douthwaite got hold of it with a firm drive straight back at him. Shin height. And he took it comfortably with two hands in the end. But you have seen bowlers shell those kind of opportunities in the past. And yeah, Thompson now, as you say, Nick, with career best figures in first class cricket, six for 54. And he's really turned this game in Derbyshire's favour. He has indeed. That was drilled back at him. It would have probably uh, taken his shins off if he, uh, or caused some severe damage if he had not uh, hung on to it. Got down well from the height of uh, six foot five. And uh, Glamorgan just left to see what the, the tail enders can scrape together now, in which is uh, what's uh, a pretty serious collapse, really, on this uh, first day of uh, County Championship cricket in Cardiff. Alec Thompson saying his. Uh, performance most proud of last season was championship match at Hove took eight wickets in the match and made 46 
I think uh, this is already up there as his contenders uh, for a high spot of the 2024 season. And, uh, well, Jamie McElroy is promoted to the dizzy heights of number 10 on the back of averaging 15 last season, which means that uh, expectations of Mia Hamza are not, uh, not necessarily too high. 2.20 for eight. Two tail end batters on naught and uh, Derbyshire's opening batters. Harry Kame and uh, Lewis Rees will look to uh, build on their mastery of Glamorgan last season. Final day at Derby. Saw them uh, bat through to make 360 without loss. Both got runs here as well in the final match of the season, which... Uh, Derbyshire had a dash at winning after Glamorgan had declared behind, but it wasn't declared with a, uh, an agreement on uh, a final innings run chase. And Derbyshire, last deploy being rather hard-headed, uh, set Glamorgan total they didn't want to go for, and they lost six wickets in trying to survive. Right, what we're going to, we're going to see from uh, Jamie McElroy, whether he'll fancy having a swing or not Derbyshire sense that the end could be nigh As down go the infielders Lloyd at leg slip Donald forward short leg silly mid off short mid wicket Thompson with six wickets and uh, stays on six as McElroy gropes forward, not knowing much about it. Yeah, classic tailender's first shot, that, wasn't it? R bit of a reach. Get everything forward. And hope for the best. Thompson bowls. McElroy turns it to uh, leg slip where David Lloyd tosses it up. But uh, mock celebration on that occasion. Must have been off the pad. Thompson as the shadows lengthen here at Sophia Gardens. And McElroy drives, doesn't really time it fielded at uh, silly mid on. And there is no run. So uh, Thompson, the man of the hour, no doubt. On day one, as McElroy. Uh, puts one through the offside for four runs. He's timed that just about uh, well enough to reach the ropes. Finally dropped one short and off target. McElroy gets off the mark with four. Glamorgan, though, 224 for eight. Yeah, McElroy demonstrating there why he's been promoted to, uh, as Nick put it, the heady heights of number 10. Shifting his weight onto the back foot driving with some authority through the colours. So a nice way for McElroy to get off the mark. He's on four. Mason Crane still waiting to score his first runs for Glamorgan. He'll face the first ball from the next over and it'll be a, a change of bowling at the Cathedral Road end with Sam Connors coming back. And there's a change in the commentary box as well as Dave Fletcher rejoins me. Oh, yeah. Evening. Well, well, well. Who'd have thought? Um, about an hour ago, we were offered uh, Blair Ticknett. Um, I've asked if we can change that. No offence, Blair, or the Tickner family. But I think Alex Thompson might be the story today. Six for 58. Here comes Connors. A change of end for the pace bowler. Bowls on a length just outside off stump and Crane nudges it onto the offside for no run. Uh, if, it, if it is true that he thought his, his best day in cricket was uh, when he took eight wickets in a match, he's got every chance of doing something similar in this one, you would have thought. Still got a chance of eight wickets in an innings well, at this rate. Yeah, absolutely. Here comes Connors.
powering in. It's a full ball, which Crane drives onto the onside for no run. If only they had a second specialist spinner somewhere in the squad. I don't know, on loan from Lancashire or something. <laughs> Perhaps a left armour. <laughs> <laughs> I know they have to make decisions, so... Uh, two of the myriad of seamers that they've got in the team haven't even bowled Lewis Reese and David Lloyd. And here's another. Connors bowling on a length. Crane blocking for no run. Yeah, spin options are pretty limited at Glamorgan as well, hence why Crane has joined on a season-long loan from Hampshire. So I look like I'm looking something up in this book. I just like the smell of new books. <laughs> That's beautiful. The old who's who. Well, Staffordshire boy, of course, Tom Out. Here's Connors. Uh, full of ball this time, and Crane once again defending for no run. An unusual spinner, Alex Thompson, though, at six foot five. You don't, you don't, they're not, I mean, surely working on the theory of who should have gone to India, you'd have thought he'd have been first on the list uh, for England in the winter because they, they just picked tall spinners, didn't they? Perhaps he can force his way into the next tour. And here comes Connors. Again, Crane defends. Well, yeah, because Tom Hartley didn't have tons of first class experience, did he, before? Going on that tour? Neither of them did, did they? Unfortunately, playing for Derbyshire puts you behind the eight ball straight away. I, I'm, I'm guessing. Uh, <laughs> I have no, no evidence to back that up, of course. Derbyshire's last international was Dominic Cork. Here's Connors. Last ball of the over. And Crane blocks that one. So a maiden from Sam Connors. Glamorgan 224 for eight at the end of the 73rd over. Yeah, that's the feeling shared across Division 2, isn't it? That you're not going to get recognised for international honours in that oh, division by gonna, and large. Yeah, it was always going to be the issue, wasn't it? But then you look at some of the players who were playing. I mean, up until the end of last season, the England skipper played for a second division side. Joe Root. Harry Brook both play for second division size. Johnny Bairstow plays for second division I'm just putting it out there. I'm making no judgment at all. Uh, seven, eight wickets have fallen today. I haven't called one, which is some going. <laughs> I do have an Alex Thompson over here, though. I've managed to manipulate the whole commentary uh, situation so I could talk about Tomo's bowling. Here we go. He's got... <laughs> He's got uh, six for 58 from his 23 overs, and he comes in and bowls to McElroy, who turns this one into the leg side, not too far away from Donald at short leg. Oh, there's quite the breeze blowing in on this side of the commentary. I don't know where it's coming from, but I absolutely know where it's going to. There's a big hole in the floor. It's supposed to be there. There is Thompson around the wicket, bowls to McElroy, turns it into the leg side, manages to make sure that the ball hits the ground this time before it reaches an iron Donald. David Lloyd stands with his hands on his hips, can't quite believe it. Matt Lamb speaking to Harry Kane. Matt Lamb, one of the two players left out of the 13-man squad today. As Thompson is in, McElroy oof, turns that into the leg side somehow. Right off the bottom of the bat, I think. And there is no run. 2.24 for eight. Still 22 and a half overs left today. New ball not a million miles away. Thompson is in and bowls. That was turned nicely into the leg side by McElroy. Very defensively, but into the leg side nonetheless. Uh, sometimes you'll see teams tempted to keep with the old ball with a Bowler bowling this well, but it has been a long spell for Thompson, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. This afternoon and since T, as he's in again now, and that one is uh, defended out into the offside. In, I was going to say trots, but he actually barely got into a walk there. A very stiff-looking Zach Chapel. 
Yeah, yeah. and if you're David Lloyd contemplating the new ball, you'd want to unleash Blair Tickler on oh, the tail yeah. with that, wouldn't you? It would be Tickler. Absolutely, no question about it. Thompson is in, bowling from the River Taff end, plays it into the leg side. It's uh, well fielded by an Aaron Donald who immediately points at David Lloyd. As if to say, I told you I could stop one. <laughs> he removes his helmet because his uh, duties at short leg are over for the time being because it's the end of the over. 224 for eight. McElroy has four. Crane yet to get off the mark. And my uh, wicket drought continues. Uh, Nick Hartson, who I think I might be meeting up with at some point over the course of the next few days, um, sent me a very nice uh, <laughs> message before uh, finally able to sit down and watch the cricket. Uh, say hello to Fletch, the Harris Hawk. Blimey, look at that. That is a that's a beauty. Wow. Fletch, the Harris Hawk. I don't know if I, I That I don't know. Here comes Connors bowling to Mason Crane, who flaps at one outside off stump, and it will be generous and say guided it over the slips for four. Yeah, I'm not sure there was much guiding going on there, was there? It looked a slightly yeah. erratic yeah, I mean, shot. I think that's where he wanted to put it, possibly, was it? Yeah, yeah, that's where he wanted to put it. I should have more faith in Mason Crane. That was a decently played shot in the end. So he's off the mark. His first runs for Glamorgan. He's on four. The same score as Jamie McElroy as Glamorgan. Move on to 228 for eight. Here comes Connors again to Crane, who drives for no run. To the point in the day where the people who are doing the show this evening want to know what time it might finish and that kind of thing. I haven't a clue really, but about night probably about 90 minutes from now, so I think we'll be carrying on uh, way beyond when I'm required at 6.30, certainly. And 6 o'clock. all gets very hectic again in the evening. Just how we like it. Here comes Connors. Crane works it onto the leg side and he'll amble through for an easy single. McElroy does a spot of gardening and the two batters come together for a little chat in the middle. Feels like they're clinging on slightly at this stage but trying to eke out what runs they can manage to try and make this first innings total competitive in some way. Well, Edward Bevan, whose, whose presence looms large over the whole of Glamorgan, obviously next door, he was saying 280 he thought would be a really good score. Well, they do well to get to 280. Here's Connors to McElroy, and he's clean bowled. The stumps are splayed across McElroy Beaton. All ends up by Sam Connors, who picks up his first wicket of the day, Glamorgan, and now 229 for nine. Yeah, well, they'll do really well to get to 280 now, won't they? McElroy comprehensively bowled top of off stump, just leaning back the off stump. And McElroy goes for, well, I didn't see what he went for in the end because it's gone off the screen already. Jamie McElroy was bowled. Oh, here we go. Four. four. For four, excellent. Yeah, 229 for nine. Um, all talk of a new ball is, is sort of erroneous, really, isn't it? Because we probably won't get there now. You wouldn't have thought, but you never know. You never know. And uh, Dabish's batters will already be thinking, Harry Kane and Lewis Rees, about how they're going to go about a very tricky, I was going to say a very tricky spell, but it's going to be quite a lengthy spell, isn't it? If they could get this final wicket quite quickly, they're going to have the thick end of 20 overs. Uh, if Connors can pick the wicket, the final wicket up with the final two balls of this over, they would have 19 overs and, and so on and so on, lose two for the and the over that you're bowling for the uh, the change around. So it's not one of those tricky five over spells. It's a it's a pretty lengthy spell during which I'm sure Glamorgan will be keen to pick up one or two wickets and really move the game on. Dean coming back to for Glamorgan is Mia Hamza. So Mia Hamza. Uh, Another batting for Glamorgan for the first time. Excellent. And the way McElroy was 
so comprehensively beaten his dismissal would suggest that Morgan don't have the greatest confidence in Hamza's batting. He's very much signed for his bowling ability. Fletch the Harris Hawk is at the Cheshire Falconry Centre near Chester. It was Nick's turn to feed him, apparently, three chicks later and no lost fingers. Uh, he was quite bad-tempered because he was hungry, so he could have been named after me. <laughs> <laughs> That's another of my many bad traits. I don't like being hungry. I'm certainly not going to be hungry on this trip, though. We've already discussed the, the fact that there's probably no need for a major tea this evening. Which is probably as well, because it'll be 7.30 before we get across the road to the... Uh, the indoor drinks centre. Here comes Connors around the wicket to Mir Hamza, who defends fairly confidently onto the offside. Yeah, Connors with the right idea as he had for McElroy's dismissal. Full on the stumps, make the tail end of play. Can he get this final wicket to deny it? Well, Thompson's going to have career best figures unless he concedes an absolute avalanche of runs, isn't he now? So he's going to get career best. Here is Connors full again, and Hamza defends comfortably enough, and that's the end of the 75th over. Another wicket taking over for Derbyshire. Glamorgan are 229 for nine. Anybody going to get that ball out of Alex Thompson's hand? I didn't think so. He's already marching purposefully towards the uh, towards the middle so he can collect the ball. This game's as far advanced as any, isn't it, really, now, I imagine? It's certainly in the second division. No, because Yorkshire are all out for 326, Gloucestershire 11 without loss. Leicestershire 298 for 6 against Sussex and Northamptonshire 270 for 2 against Middlesex. Somerset were bowled out for 285. Sorry, I've just started their reply. <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing. Well, I do really. Warwickshire 415 for 1 against Durham. Dear, oh dear. And Nottinghamshire, who've got a second innings collapse in them, as we know, are 275 for 6 against Worcestershire, Hampshire 271 for 6 against Lancashire. Here comes Alex Thompson bowling to Mason Crane, who defends the first ball that he faces of the new over, back towards the bowler. And there's no run. Two players on the offside, a cover and a deepish mid-off. Everybody else on the leg side. As Thompson is in, bowls to Crane, who pushes this out into the offside nicely. Around goes Connors to do the fielding. He picks up a single Mason Crane, moves to six, brings a Mir Hamza on to strike. And Morgan moved to 230 for nine. Slight adjustment to the field as mid-on becomes a long-on. I don't think he'll mind bowling to a left-handed number 11 either, though, will he? Turning, turning the ball away from him. There's going to be uh, two, three on the leg side for the left-hander, and that's it. Yeah. This could be useful for Thompson, who's after a seventh wicket in the innings on day one in April. Staggering. Remarkable, yeah. High scores around the grounds and a spinner taking six wickets on the first day. A short leg. There's a man out on the mid-wicket boundary and a, a long on. Two slips. Backward point, cover, mid-off and a, a man on the cover boundary and the first ball goes past the edge of uh, Mayor Hamza's bat and through to the wicketkeeper. Well, just as you were saying, very handy for Thompson to have a left-hander to, to bowl at now. It's whether Hamza can uh, restrain himself, really, isn't it? Will he go for the big wild shot? Thompson bowls to him. Oh, that goes past the edge of his bat again. <laughs> he just sort of plunged forward. Didn't miss the edge by much, but it missed it. It looks like he's having a bit of a laugh with uh, Brooke Guest as well behind him, keeping wicket for Derbyshire. Hamza waits. In comes Thompson. 
around the wicket and bowls, and that one goes past the edge. The bales are whipped off by Brooke Guest, but the back foot hadn't left the crease. So he's beaten the edge three times. He just needs to get one to go straight on, doesn't he? You do wonder if uh, the defensive prods are yielding no success for Hamza, if he is better off just having a swing. I think he probably is. Thompson in and bowls, and away, oh, hey, middle of the bat. Hamza straight back to Thompson, end of the over. Uh, oh, 230 for nine, one off the over. Crane on six. Hamza yet to get off the mark. Um, Fletch, is, Fletch the, uh, the large bird with the crooked beak. Um, his brother's called Lenny, and they're both named after characters from Porridge. So Lenny Godber. And, of course, Norman Stanley, a name that followed me around in my youth. Everybody thought it was hilarious. The programme is magnificent. Being called Norman Stanley every five minutes is not quite so funny. Uh, 230 for nine. It'll be Connors to continue from the Cathedral Road end. All these youngsters have got no idea what porridge is. <laughs> no idea at all. Familiar with its work. Oh, don't worry. Familiar? Blimey. We could recite entire scenes in the pub later on, if required. <laughs> we'll hold you to that. <laughs> Here comes Connors over the wicket. It's a full ball dug out well by Mason Crane. I'm not sure I can do it with these flat feet, though. One for the uh, porridge connoisseurs there. Still watch it from time to oh gosh, sorry. Still watch it from time to time. Very funny. Here's Connors over the wicket, another full ball which Crane drives for no run. Not as attacking, is it, when the seamers are on? One slip. No, it's fairly spread field, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the only real close catcher for the two uh, for the numbers ten and eleven. Just a one slip for Connors, who's in again, again full delivery. Crane driving fairly comfortably. It's slightly disappointingly there. Zach Chapel didn't put the tumble in as he fielded the ball. He likes a good tumble. Who's that warming up out there? Is that? Uh, it's Anish Dahl, is it? No, it's Sam. No, it can't be Sam Connors. He's bowling. It's somebody with Sam Connors sweater on. It must be Blair Tickner. I'm sure he had a 59 on his back. Here's Connors on a length and crane once again defending. He does. Stoutly. He has 59 on his back, doesn't he? Yeah. Could you pass me from behind my laptop? I've got my um, binoculars there. I think it's. Tickner, but I wouldn't swear to it. Good to see Zach Chapel bringing up the uh, sun hat for this yeah, session uh, as well. He likes a sun hat. <laughs> Here comes Connors, short ball, and Crane fends that in the air onto the leg side, but he'll get a run for it because the short leg isn't in place for Connors' is bowling. It's Blair Tickner wearing, Sam, wearing a Sam Connors sweater. Come on, Dan. He's trying to catch us out after he heard that you'd bend his interview off. <laughs> yes, I could be. Yeah, he's going to disguise himself as Sam Connors on the way out later. Yeah. Sorry, Blair's not, Blair's not in tonight. He's not coming out to play. I must have packed a Blair Tickner sweater. Connors is coming around the wicket to Hamza. Uh, it's down the leg side for no run. That's the end of the over. 77 overs gone now. Glamorgan, 231 for nine. Right, I'm we'll stop messing about with them now. You know, I bought those and I thought I'll, never, I'll, I'll be using them all the time. I rarely get them out of the case. Are worth it for that spot alone? Well, exactly. Yeah, yeah I'm getting my money's worth. The good news is we've got uh, Alex Thompson afterwards. Yeah. 
me if anybody uh, if anybody's interested. <laughs> oh, well, good to hear from him after yeah. career best figures, yeah. So he's going to come in now and bowl to Mason Crane, who's on seven with Glamorgan on 231 for nine. We're almost sort of treading water here. 19 overs left in the day, so there would be 16 if the wicket falls in this over for Derbyshire to bat. And he bowls, and that one is a reverse sweep. Crashed away out to what would have been the backward point boundary for four runs. That is some shot from Mason Crane. Who moves on to 11, 235 for nine. I still think 280 might be beyond them, but he, uh, well, he gave that everything, didn't he? It's one of the shots of the day, isn't yeah, it? Beautiful, beautiful. Mason Crane's not going to uh, let Alex Thompson dominate him. Still a predominantly leg side field, 7 2, and he gets the reverse out again, and it's the same treatment, but this time Zach Chappell is around there, and, uh, and they turn down the run. Wow. So uh, they remain on 235 for nine, and Zach Chappell stays on the backward point boundary, which will turn into the deep backward square leg boundary at some point. Mason Crane did not like what he saw from Mir Hamza in Thompson's no, last over. Absolutely not. Thompson bowls a full delivery. They're going to take one. They're going to think about coming back for the second, and they're going to get back for the second comfortably as uh, the real Sam Connors comes around to do the fielding. 235, 7 for 9. Crane up to 13. Thompson. Just waiting as Crane prepares himself. Now he's ready and Thompson is in and bowls a full delivery again and it's pushed into the onside where it's fielded by Wayne Madsen. It just about had the legs to get to Madsen who's at that straight shortish mid on the short leg, a leg slip, man at mid wicket. There's a backward square leg, a long on and a mid wicket on the boundary as this next delivery is pushed by Crane back to Thompson. Two men out on the offside are coming in now to try to prevent a single from being taken by Mason Crane. Now, does he get the reverse and get another boundary? Or does he try and sneak a single from somewhere? Still just the two men on the offside, Connors and Chapel, And Thompson is in, and he goes for a big swipe, and he's bowled. And Thompson has seven wickets in the innings. A first innings in April, seven for 65 uh, we will have 16 overs of Derbyshire batting before the close of play as Glamorgan dismissed for 237 at the end of the 78th over. Alex Thompson has had a real day out here at Sophia Gardens. He gets the congratulations of all of his teammates. I'm sure Lewis Rees congratulated him before he raced off to the uh, changing rooms to get his batting gear sorted out. But it's been a terrific display from Alex Thompson, who uh, bowls Mason Crane for 13 Glamorgan all out for 237 and I'm glad you got a wicket as well Dave long overdue yeah, well yes that was, uh, that was it was a long time coming but excellent excellent news for uh, an excellent work by Alex Thompson career best figures of 7 for 65 from 26 overs with 7 maidens in there and he's the one who leads the side off uh, pushed to the front David Lloyd runs off as well. He'll be getting his batting gear on. I think he'll bat at three. Alex Thompson. Well, David David uh, Griffin will be desperate. I hope he's held the ball up for Griff there because he doesn't like it when the bowlers don't hold the ball up. Uh, should I go through the uh, Should I go through the card? I'll have to find the card first, of course. But uh, the Glamorgan card. Uh, the word Thompson will appear a number of times during the following. Uh, Ul Hassan was stumped by Brooke Guest off the bowling of Thompson for 35. He wasn't the first man out. Let's do it in that order. Billy Root was caught by Brooke Guest off the bowling of Blair Tickner, who had a very good morning. 17 he made, 31 for one. Tickner's fourth ball in county championship cricket. Uh, Sam Northeast was bowled by Tickner for 11 as Glamorgan went to lunch on 60 for two. Zain Ul Hassan stumped by Brooke Guest off the bowling of Alex Thompson for 35. It was the Alex Thompson show. Kieran Carlson led before wicket to Thompson for 74. Uh, 172 for four at T, the home side. Uh, Colin Ingram was caught in the covers by Anna's Dahl off the bowling of Thompson for 30. 
Chris Cook caught uh, one-handed leg slip by David Lloyd off the bowling of Thompson for 20. Uh, James Harris bowled by Thompson for four. Good caught and bowled to get rid of Dan Douthwaite for 23 by Alex Thompson. Uh, Sam Connors joined in. He got Jamie McElroy bowled for four. And then the last man to go, Mason Crane, bowled by Thompson for 13. Uh, Hamza, the not out batsman, didn't uh, get any runs from the seven deliveries he faced. Just six extras, which is creditable. One no ball, one wide, uh, which was spectacular in its own right. Bowled by Harry Kane uh, and three leg buys in the bowling figures. Chapel, 12 overs for 30. Sam Connors, 15 overs, one for 51. Tickner, 14 overs, two for 57. Dahl, nine overs for 24. Thompson, 26 overs, seven maidens, seven for 65. And Harry Kane bowled two overs for seven. I don't know, if, do we take a short break here in Glamorgan? We're going to take a short break and we'll be back when the Derbyshire batsmen are ready. Glamorgan were bowled out a few moments ago for 237 by Derbyshire. Star of the show today is Derbyshire spinner Alex Thompson, who went to university in Cardiff and certainly enjoyed himself here, taking seven wickets for 
65 in a career best. Top scorer for Glamorgan was Kieran Carson's 74. A lot of the top order batters got going. Well, Hassan 35, Ingram 30, without really kicking on. 16 overs remain for Glamorgan's bowlers to try to uh, strike back at Derbyshire. Glamorgan 2-3-7 all out. Welcome back to Sophia Gardens here on BBC Sport Online. As Mia Hamza prepares to uh, bowl his first ball for Glamorgan at home, and he'll be bowling to Harry Kame as Derbyshire replied to Glamorgan's 2 3 7, and it is driven back to him, and Hamza fields in his follow through. And uh, there is no run. So. If you're just joining us, Alex Thompson is the man of the day. 7 for 65, his career best. Blair Tickner also useful, 2 for 57. Kieran Carlson, top scored with 74. Next best score for Glamorgan was 35 from Zain Al Hassan, even though the top seven all got into double figures. Hamza bowls and uh, Kane plays it away on the offside. And uh, there's no run. Dave Fletcher having duly delivered the glad tidings to the good radio listeners of the Derbyshire area. I think they were thrilled. I'm sure they were, Dave. <laughs> As you rhapsodised in your allocated 20 seconds. That will have been my, uh, my biggest audience of the day, I fancy. As... Uh, in comes Hamza again, running away from us at the Cathedral Road end and bowls and came drives and we'll get runs here. At least a couple, I think. He hasn't quite timed it well enough to find the boundary. James Harris has retreated and uh, retrieved and Derbyshire up and running with uh, two without loss in this first over. Was the six o'clock a success? It was a storming success. Oh, it was the best six o'clock that I've delivered from Sapphire Gardens this season. Today. Hamza <laughs> left arm over and uh, came leaving it alone. Yes, I spent the run up to my update busy scribbling in everybody's figures, <laughs> as you do. Uh, it will be Alex Thompson who you won't hear from 
later, but we will. So I've got to try and find a way of putting it somewhere, really. You'll see the quotes anyway. You will see the quotes on the BBC Sport website. Yeah, I know Nick's a stickler for quotes. I like I like some quotes. Hamza is into bowl and beats the bat as came prods forward. Yeah, decent. We saw a bit of that, didn't we, in the first innings, especially in the Glamorgan innings, especially from the Cathedral Road end. And now that might have been because it was Zach Chappell who, who ended up wicketless, of course, and Blair Tickner who bowled first from this end. But uh, the ball went past the edge of the bat a number of times. Harry Kane will have observed that, I'm sure, and uh, will have taken note. And be wary as well, I imagine. Hmm. Next delivery from Hamza. Kame is playing no shot as it goes through outside off stump. Well, if you wish me to uh, film your interview, we could uh, stick it out via the don't, medium don't, of no, X no, stroke no, Twitter. Don't start doing that. <laughs> the best can be to do it every game. I already have to video a certain amount. Um, well, I'll, I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I mean, I could do it myself, clearly. But that would entail extra work. <laughs> so it's going to be uh, J J James Harris from the River Taff end. He'll be bowling to Lewis Rees. RM Kane says, uh, don't remember a Glamorgan wicket turning as much as this on the first day since it was re relayed during redevelopment, which is about, what, 15 years ago. Here comes Harris. That one's wide of the off stump and left alone to go through to Chris Cook behind the stumps. Three slips in place. Colin Ingram, Sam Northeast and Billy Root are the three. If you wish to communicate via email, it's uh, nickweb2017 at gmail.com or fletchcricket at gmail.com via the medium of X stroke Twitter. Harris is in again, round the wicket, bowling two, restrikes him on the pad. Ball goes out into the onside. It was a stifled appeal, really, as much as anything. Uh, he is Fletch Sport. I am Nick Webb, 2017, and Dav Pritchard is Dav Pritchard. And he's gone. He, he, he will be back. He will be back. He will. I, I have a 6.30 and a potential 6.55. Oh, good heavens. I know. It gets, well, we're back to local programming. All right. At this, it was for an hour. Oh, there we are. Uh, Harris is in, balls to Reese, who pushes this one up to mid-off. And there's no run. It's quite a long, short spell to face for the batsman, this, isn't it? It's not one of those tricky little four-overs. It's longer than that, but they still want to be there at the close of play. Mm. So I can't expect, or don't expect them to go mad uh, with their shots, because I think it will be handy for both of these two to still be there tomorrow morning when we return as Harris is in again balls to Reese who drives very pleasantly up to mid off and there's no runs it's fielded by Kieran Carlson How many overs before Crane's bowling at that River Taff end do you think? Well I don't think it, I don't think it should be long it depends how much he likes bowling with a new ball I suppose some spinners don't do they? I think Mason Crane, after his last couple of seasons, would be delighted to Just bowl with anything. any sort of yeah, red no, ball. Absolutely, fair point. Fair point. Harris in bowls to Reese, who gets that one almost on the bat handle, it seemed, from here. He's got his back to us. He managed to deal with it quite nicely. A couple of very frustrating seasons at Hampshire in 22. He also played uh, briefly on loan with Sussex. But... Uh, Looking to play with the Red Bull. 53 first-class matches before this season, which is not a lot for a 27-year-old. Harris in and bowls, and Reese leaves that one alone outside the off-stump end of the over. Uh, two without loss. He played, did he not play Sheffield Shield as well? Oh, there we are. Um, what, this last winter? No, 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 no. At some point in his career. Ah, uh, yeah, he's listed as playing for New South Wales. Yes, yeah, so absolutely. One correct. of those very, very unusual signings for an Australian Sheffield Shield side. Mm. Uh, whether he was playing there in first grade, I, I don't quite remember the story, but I had a vague recollection of him playing Sheffield Shield cricket. Well remembered. So, because uh, he was... Uh, 
uh, and may still be, but he was the next big thing. As uh, in comes Hamza, and across the face of Kame has in some difficulty. Mm -hmm. But of course, we've all been the next big thing at some point in our lives, Nick, haven't we? I think I was once many years yes. ago. Yes. Even if it's the next big thing in our own mind. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of movement there mm. off the pitch for Mir Hamza. Make the most of it while you can. As, uh, yes, it would be a surprise if it lasted. Runs in and bowls and again beats came pushing forward. And uh, a small but enthusiastic Hamza fan club is uh, somewhere in the house. They're right to be enthusiastic. Two good deliveries, pushing them across the right-hander. And uh, you would have thought that uh, Hamza would attract a, a bit of interest from the, from the Asian community locally in the uh, next few weeks, hopefully. As the Pakistan paceman is in to ball and this time came does get bat on ball but it's fielded by a scampering crane at point and there's no run imagine mickey arthur would have known plenty about him having been uh, whatever he was at pakistan before the world cup and his uh, demise in that role well grant bradburn was uh, of was course with pakistan yeah. last year uh, in charge briefly having been fielding coach for a couple of seasons as Hamza bowls and through outside off stump came a says no shot former Scotland coach that's the man mm. bumped into him yes yesterday I think uh-huh well Griff had more of a chat than I did but he's uh, a good chat with anybody <laughs> I mean, both of them, I think, <laughs> the way they were going at it. <laughs> I didn't feel I could lend anything to the conversation, particularly. It's uh, Hamza back on his mark. The end of this is well, nearly the end of his second over. That's the fifth ball bowled, and uh, Kane plays no shots to that one. There is one fewer shadow than usual stretching across the fire gardens because we're a a floodlight pylon down at the moment. But this this is that floodlight pylon, isn't it? No, there's another one next there's to the pavilion. Here. There's meant to oh, be is there? one way to our, our left up towards Caffili Mountain. But there are five other. Well, there's certainly something that's been demolished in the last few days. Right. Mm. No, I heard about it, but... As uh, the next delivery is allowed to go through outside off stump, there is no shot this time from Came and Derbyshire. After three of the 16 overs which they will face tonight, a two without loss from a straight drive from Harry Kame. Yeah, they'll be pleased so far, I'm sure. I'm trying to see who that is sitting in the main, in the uh, pavilion stand. Is there a night watch person? Maybe not yet, I wouldn't have thought. No, no, I don't know. 13 overs, but who would be the... Uh, well, I'd send Alex Thompson out, right? Well, it's his day, isn't it? <laughs> Probably go out and get 50. It's his day. Here is James Harris bowling a full-length delivery to Lewis Rees that uh, he comfortably digs out. And there's no run. I'm just, it, oh, it's, uh, it's Matt Lamb who's uh, sitting in the stands. Well, he's uh, not likely he's, to come into bat. very unlikely to bat. And since he is uh, not included in the starting 11, unless anyone is concussed... Two without loss. Harris on his way in. Bowls to Reese, who on the back foot plays it straight back to the bowler. And there's no room. So I'm going to look in the. Uh, up to the pavilion. I can see Sam Connors there. He hasn't got his pads on. I think I can. So no, I have no idea who that is. Derbyshire 3 0 up on match points so far. Up to 11 for the season as that one strikes the pad of Lewis Reese. It's a little bit high, is it? So difficult to tell from where we are without having a look at a replay. It was a sort of stifled appeal in the end. Yeah. It wasn't one of those 
that is definitely out, umpire, and you just need to raise your finger. <laughs> kind of appeals. Jim Morgan's 237 is the lowest first innings total of the day. Yeah, so well bowled Thompson and Derbyshire. Well, Thompson had an absolute day out, didn't he? It was Harris is in and bowls and beats the edge of Lewis Reese's bat, goes through to the keeper, Chris Cook, with his garish yellow gloves on. I suppose they're supposed to be daffodils or something, are they? Yeah. I imagine. Well, his, um, his benefit tie is quite bright as well. Is it? It's so he likes sort of bright things. Golden, golden colour, I believe. I haven't seen it in, in person yet. It was being advertised on his social media. You'll be wearing one in no time. Is Harris bowls to Reese, who punches it back to the bowler off the back foot. Harris feels at the end of the of his follow through. At uh, I may well be at uh, Bristol, you, Gloucestershire sixteen for one after bowling Yorkshire out for three hundred and twenty six. Leicestershire's first innings is still going three twenty three for eight at home to Sussex. Travasca seventy nine not out. As Harris is on his way in again, bowling from the River Taff end. Bowls to Reese has bowled him. He may well have pulled that on, dragged it on, and Lewis Reese has gone. And Derbyshire are two for one with 12 overs still remaining in the day. Disappointment for Lewis Rees. Poor shot, really, I suppose, in the circumstances, but I'm fairly sure he played it on. Uh, he, he had his back to us. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's played it on from uh, probably six, eight inches outside off stump and bouncing over the, the uh, top of the stumps, and he's just pulled, dragged it straight on, hasn't he, yeah, into his middle and leg. And Lewis Rees goes. Disappointment for him. And a joy for Glamorgan because they probably need a couple of wickets just to keep themselves on an even keel here. Two for one. Well, they need Lewis Rees in particular after his remarkable exploits of, of last season. Yes. 590 runs for twice out. He'd probably have settled for getting him out under 100. But uh, James Harris has found the under edge of his bat. And thence onto the wickets. Uh, Northampton looks like a good batting track. Northampton's 307 for three as Middlesex's bowlers continue to suffer. Emilio Gay is still there, 164 not out. Division one, we might as well run through those while uh, Middlesex's number three comes out. It is David Lloyd. It's Derbyshire's number three there. <laughs> Not Middlesex. Is oh, Middlesex, oh, sorry. <laughs> Speaking of Middlesex last week. <laughs> a week off as David Lloyd comes out. To a rapturous reception from his uh, Muted applause. <laughs> Muted applause, no booze, thankfully. No. Essex, 414 for six against Kent. Essex, the only winners of round one. Sentries for Elgar and Critchley. Hampshire, 295, 299 for six. Top scorer there, Tom Prest, 85. That's against Lancashire. At uh, Trent Bridge, not 305 for six at the close against Worcestershire, former pair Joe Clark, 105. At the Oval, Somerset fell away badly to 285 all out despite 100 from Lamanby and 87 from Renshaw at the top of the order. Four wickets for Cameron Steele there. Surrey 31 for Nort in reply, and Warwickshire 486 for one against Durham, with Alex Davis, the Warwickshire captain, 223 not out. Will Rhodes is 59 not out. Yates made 191. Hamza starting a new over to bowl to Came and works it on the leg side, diving stop by Al Hassan at mid wicket, no run. Two observations. One look out for the closer play video later on. Uh, from uh, Radio Newcastle. And is it dressed down Saturday tomorrow or are we going to insist on wearing ties for the rest, <laughs> of, the, uh, rest of the match? Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to wear a tie, Well, I haven't got any ties with me. <laughs> I couldn't lay my hands on a tie at this moment. Oh, I can buy a C Chris Cook benefit <laughs> tie in the <laughs> club shop. I also need a shirt. <laughs> As Hamza Bowles turned off his legs, second scoring shot of the Derbyshire innings, and Harry Kame moves from two to three. 
which means we're about to see the first time as the Derbyshire mm. skipper Ooh. with the bat in his hand, David Lloyd, on a square that he probably knows pretty well. Yes, he. Squares. We've seen this many turning wickets during his time in Glamorgan, even though he's, uh, he's been in the county for uh, more than a decade. A square on which he scored 300 runs or more. Against Derbyshire. Mm. He, uh, now the third best t- total uh, score in Glamorgan history. As Mir Hamza comes in and bowls to Derbyshire's David Loy to leaves it go outside off stump as it uh, comes back in a little bit late as it goes through to Chris Cook. There's no Derbyshire batsman playing for Derbyshire has ever scored a triple century in the club's history. Peter Kirsten, mm, they reckon, might have gone on to do it, but he was playing back in the days when first innings had to stop at 120 overs, I think it was. Mm. Uh, He scored some big scores, but could never get to 300. Hamza in to bowl to Lloyd, who's off the mark in Derbyshire colours, and he has got there with a boundary. As he clipped it off his legs, Jamie McElroy went flying round the ropes, but his attempt to stop it inside the boundary was in vain. And Lloyd has four, and Derbyshire seven for one. All is well with the world. I just didn't, I didn't want him to get a duck on his Derbyshire debut. If I'm honest, he's, he's too nice a man <laughs> to have that happen to him. As uh, Hamza is in to bowl, three slips crouching. Lloyd playing it, though, solidly up to Carlson at mid-off. Two things two things strike me. It, it must be really strange for him. Hmm. And you wonder if he's... It's the first game of the season and he probably would be a little nervous anyway because you don't, especially with not having played last week, uh, it is Derbyshire's first game of the season, effectively, and you don't know how it's going to go. But there'd be some extra nerves there anyway. I wonder if there are extra, extra nerves due to the fact that he had such a long association with the club down here. Must feel odd. <coughs> As Hamza is in to Boyle to Lloyd, who plays it to Carlson at mid-off. No run, seven for one at the end of five overs. This in reply to Glamorgan's two, three, seven, all out. It'll be interesting to uh, hear whether Glamorgan were expecting the wicket to turn this much this early. Mm. Um, Because preparing different surfaces was clearly one of the uh, weapons that Glamorgan had in their armoury after last season's cavalcade of, of draws. I can't. I, I've never been able to see. I know, I know that the ECB have had issues in the past with with teams, clubs preparing pitches. I can't see an, an issue with it at all, personally. But you talk about home advantage. Yeah. We're going to make this pitch, or try to make this pitch. And it's not guaranteed it would turn anyway. If it was supposed to be a turning pitch, here's Harris bowling to Came, and Came drives it straight down the ground. He might have got a little touch on it there, Harris, because the ball doesn't seem to be moving quite as quickly as it should have done, and they'll come back for two. If he did get a hand on it, he did very well to do so. And Derbyshire move up to nine for one. Harry came on to five. They certainly need to do, and I'm not, this is in no way a criticism of Neil Godrich and his team up at Derby, but they certainly need to do something with the pitches at the county ground because there was one positive result last season and the rest of the games were drawn. Likewise, yeah. The one positive result sadly went Worcestershire's way. As Harris is in and bowls to Kame, who just gets on his toes and dabs it back to the bowler. Yeah, Glamorgan's championship season was easily uh, summed up. They beat Worcestershire at home, lost them away and drew everything else. Yeah, it's, 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 it's just not ideal, is it? And it, it's not the kind of cricket as, as exciting two seasons ago uh, as it was to see three double centuries in the same game and it was a statistical freak and all the rest of it, 11 times in first-class cricket history. It is ultimately very dull. Harris is in and bowls to Kame, strikes him on the pad. Big appeal. He fancies this one, Harris, but the umpire says no. Much like the computer, Rob Bailey unimpressed. 
at the far end. There's the replay. Pitches outside. Oh, it's not a bad shout. Oh, that's close. It's not a bad shout at all. I was waiting for it to hit him outside the line, but it didn't. Uh, uh, and if I was the Glamorgan streaming team, I'd just show that over and over again. <laughs> uh, as, as what, look at what you could have won. That was close. Here comes Harris again. Came on five. Bowls to him, and he ooh, gets some bat on that, and he plays it down into the ground behind him, missing the stumps and going through to Chris Cook, the wicketkeeper. Mm. I may have to leave at the drop of a hat momentarily. Have you got a hat? Uh, I have in the car, yeah. Don't think I've got one to, to offer you to drop. <laughs> Best Derbyshire figures at Glamorgan since 2002. And the best by a spinner. This is a good one. Harris in bowls. And why do they off stump? Let through by uh, Harry Kemp. The best by a Derbyshire spinner since Edwin Smith took seven at Swansea in 1956. What, the best in Wales, is that? Uh, Derbyshire against Glamorgan. Oh. Not, and it's not even... Actually, Edwin Smith... Uh, yes, the best by a spinner. It's the best bowling figure since... Uh, 2002 when Kevin Dean took 7 for 42. Harris in and bowls. And that one is turned into the leg side by Harry Kane. And there is no run. I'm about to drop my hat. I shall pick it up a little bit later. Uh, yes. Paul Young put it a bit more eloquently. Actually, it was a cover version, wasn't it? But it's well known by for a Paul Young song. With my lay my hat, that's my home. <laughs> wherever I drop my hat I'll have to pick it up again says Dave Fletcher as he exits stage right not pursued by a bear as we enter the whimsical stage of the day in the commentary box but uh, not on the pitch as Mia Hamza will uh, come in for his fourth over not for seven so far bowling to David Lloyd who's beaten as he caught behind Glamorgan fancy it they're all up Neil Bainton says no Glamorgan genuinely seemed to think that they had David Lloyd out on his return to Sophia Gardens as uh, that one seemed to deviate Hamza went up straight away so did Chris Cook, but any edge was uh, not heard by Mr. Bainton. Could be an awkward conversation at the end of play. <laughs> Walkley <Between> so-and-so. <laughs> Between Lloyd and his old friends at Glamorgan. Yes, he would have worked with Chris Cook as his deputy on one point. Hamza is in to bowl to Lloyd, who drives through the onside, will pick up runs. The chase is in vain. He will pick up four runs up towards deep mid-wicket, and Lloyd moves to eight, and Derbyshire on to nine. Thirteen for one here at Sophia Gardens on BBC Sport Online. Nicely tucked away through mid-wicket by Lloyd there. Yeah, classic kind of David Lloyd shot, wasn't it? Strong forearms, whipping it through mid-wicket. Here goes Hamza again. The ball, a short-pitched ball that uh, Lloyd will have nothing to do with. Lloyd 8, came 5. Reese has gone without scoring. Having taken his toll of Glamorgan last season. The tables are turned. The pitch is turning, but that didn't have anything to do with him playing on to James Harris. As Hamza on his way in the evening, gentle sunlight and bowls, and uh, Lloyd has everything behind it. Pushes it on the leg side. All Hassan is across the field. And there's no run. Having a, a little chat with umpire Bainton, Zainal Hassan. So uh, can Glamorgan make further breakthroughs? 
They have nine overs left to do so as we join five Sports Extra listeners with the news that Gl Derbyshire are 13 for one in reply to Glamorgan's 237 all out. And the headline of act of the day has been the Derbyshire spinner Alex Thompson with a career best 7 for 65 on an uncharacteristically turning pitch on day one here at Sophia Gardens. Glamorgan lost two wickets in each of the first two sessions. They were 188 for four at one point, but lost their last uh, six wickets for just 49 runs. Thompson finishing with seven. Kieran Carlson was top scorer with 74. No one else got to 40. Hams around the wicket. Balls, and that's turned away on the leg side by Lloyd. Fielded by Douthwaite at square leg. There is no run. In the Derbyshire reply, Lewis Rees, who scored 590 runs for twice out against Glamorgan last season, did not add to them. He was bowled by James Harris, getting an under edge on an attempted pull and playing it onto his stumps. So Rees went without scoring with a total on two. David Lloyd playing his first match against Glamorgan is on eight. Harry Kame is on five. Nine overs remain on this uh, nice, quiet, calm evening weather-wise. And James Harris continues from the river end, right arm over. There's an appeal again, but nothing doing at once more for Harris and the Glamorgan players. Harry Kame left the ball on a length. Did it just brush the pad on the way through? Must have brushed something, because they all went up straight away, but the appeal dying away fairly quickly. There was some belief in the appeal, but nowhere near the conviction that greeted mm. Mir Hamza's appeal in the previous over, as Harris turns and runs in once again. Kane drives nicely on the onside. He'll look to turn and come back for a second run here. And he does so with some ease. Harry Kane moves on to seven. Derbyshire's total stands at 15 for one in the eighth over. Yeah, another eight to go tonight. We started half an hour late in case uh, five sports extra listeners are wondering whether there's been exceptionally slow over eight today. As Harris continues from the river end, came on the back foot drives, but for no run. Yeah, the over eight is level, according to the scoreboard, making up time for that lost half hour. As sunshine still descends in Cardiff, the Sphere Gardens, around a third of it covered in shadow by now. Those lengthening shadows as this springtime sunshine closes in in the early evening as Harris turns and bounds in once again. Kame is forward, defending for no run. Yeah, the uh, weather fortunes of these two sides couldn't have been more different. Glamorgan didn't lose a single moment in Lords in the high-scoring draw against Middlesex. Derbyshire did not get onto the field back at the county ground in their opening game. So I'll be delighted to have made a positive start for the season. Here comes Harris once more. Game is solid in his defences. In the penultimate ball of the over. Yeah, if, uh, Glamorgan, if they get one more tonight, might think they've got the ball game back towards parity. Derbyshire survive one down for 30 or so. They'd uh, very much be in the lead. Here's Harris in again and Kame is back onto the back foot, defending solidly enough. And that's the end of the eighth over with Derbyshire 15 for one. One further over from me, and then uh, Dave Fletcher will exult in the uh, good fortunes of his side. BBC Radio Derby commentator, who's uh, less less vocally challenged than the rest of us, having uh, sat out the first round. 
So uh, 15 for 1 Glamorgan in the evening sunshine. Thankfully, the forecast for the next two days isn't uh, isn't too bad. Might be a bit of rain around on Monday, but uh, well, you wonder if this game will be still going on Monday, given that we've had 11 wickets already today, and could have been more. Glamorgan probing for more. Mia Hamza of Pakistan, in his first spell at Sophia Garden, sees him bowling to Lloyd. And David Lloyd punching that one to mid-wicket. And there's no run. It's not David Lloyd's Derbyshire debut because he did play uh, four one-day cup matches for them on loan last season. And uh, doing pretty well with the bat, averaging 62. But picking up an injury, which meant that he didn't return to Glamorgan as scheduled for the final month of the championship. Morgan relatively conventional with the field at the moment. Three slips, short mid-wicket of the catchers as Hamza is in and uh, Lloyd playing no shot as it goes through outside off stamp. Yeah, Hamza and Morgan looking to make the most of what movement they can extract from this Kookaburra ball in the early stages of the innings. We saw Blair Tickner bowl beautifully with it in Glamorgan's innings picking up two wickets on debut for Derbyshire. He looked like a, a class signing for the visitors, did uh, did Tickner, having Morgan, the two wickets that fell in the morning session. Mir Hamza in, bowls, a short pitch delivery that uh, Lloyd ducks underneath, and there is no run. Yeah, Alex Thompson picking up seven wickets, of course, career best figures for the spinner. So again, another note of interest for another Glamorgan new signing. Mason Crane is making his debut today, having joined on a season-long loan from Hampshire, the leg spinner. Yes, you would have thought with a view to a permanent contract, should things go well for him. As Hamza in to bowl to Lloyd, works it to square leg, Douthwaite fields, and uh, there's no run. Glamorgan won one, lost one, and drawn 12 in last season's championship. They finished in fifth place in Division 2, with Derbyshire in sixth. Glamorgan would have been one place higher had this season's points allocation been in, uh, in place with more points for a draw. Slightly eccentric reversion to the previous eight for a draw. Through outside off stump from Hamza to uh, David Lloyd. No shot played on that occasion. Derbyshire be calmed, not particularly interested in pushing the score on. Just looks like a, a battle for survival this evening, unless anything particularly hittable comes along. So last ball of uh, Hamza's fifth over, not for 11. Could well see spin of Mason Crane and maybe even Kieran Carlson in the next half hour or so. As Hamza is in to bowl and Lloyd plays it late but gets a good solid bat on it. Dabbed down through wide third man Crane pursues and they'll go through for two runs as Derbyshire move on to 16 for one after nine overs in reply to Glamorgan's 2-3-7 all out. David Pritchard and uh, Dave Fletcher will take you through the next few overs here on 5 Sports Extra and BBC Sport Online. Yeah, Glamorgan continuing with their pace attack for now as the light remains good. James Harris to continue his spell from the river end as he makes his way to the top of his long run-up. The Welshman accounting for the only wicket to fall so far in the Derbyshire innings, that of Lewis Rees, and he's in to Harry Kame, who leaves the ball outside off stump. Duff. Dave? That was a big show, wasn't it, against David Lloyd, uh, Mia Hamza? Was it caught behind just when I went next door? It was, yeah. Uh, they, were, they were very much convinced. I didn't see a replay from, from where I was, but uh, 
his heart would have been in his mouth momentarily, I fancy. Yeah, without wishing to sound like I'm sitting on the fence too much, it was one of those that did look like a diversion, but you're never quite sure if that's just movement off the seam or a genuine edge. But the players did seem to think so, mm. as Harris is in again over the wicket and Kane defends that one on the back foot. Which brings me to an email we've had from uh, Alexander Guthrie, who's in America, uh, listening in. I'm watching, presumably, because it says, great to see the speed of each bowl. Uh, or ball on the live stream. Do you think DRS will come into the competition? I hope not. Dear, oh dear, we'll be having reviews for wides and all sorts. You'd think surely just a matter of expense that's not going to happen in the well, finger, county championship anytime finger, soon. Fingers crossed, eh? Harris is in over the wicket and Kane defends once more. There is nothing more joyful than watching League One football because you know <laughs> that there will not be a five-minute delay to see whether there was a foul in the build-up to the goal. Uh, so yeah, no, let, let's just let, the umpires are pretty good, aren't they? Let's just uh, let's just trust them. Trust the batsman to walk. It, it might be a bit, uh, might be asking a bit much, but we can trust the umpires to make a, a decision in as fair and a manner as possible. As Harris bounds in once more over the wicket and came, lets that one pass through to Chris Cook behind the stumps. Apart from the ball that poor old Lewis Rees played on, they've been fairly uh, fairly comfortable. There have been plays and misses. You would expect that at the start of an innings. There were plenty of plays and misses at the start of the Glamorgan innings too. But uh, Derbyshire's two batters out there, Harry Kame and David Lloyd. It's a little more than six overs left to negotiate. And here's Harris once more and came prods that. Onto the offside, where it's fielded by Dan Douthwaite in the gully area. Yeah, neither Harris nor Hamza have really managed to move the ball as extravagantly as Blair Tickner did in the early stages of the Glamorgan innings. They've bowled in good areas and they've kept it tight. You know, Derbyshire going at less than two runs and over, but I think you're right, Dave, not much in the way of real danger from either of them as Harris continues to came and he gets squared up a little on that occasion ball squirts out to the gully for no run and that's the end of the 10th over with Derbyshire 17 for 1 nice message from Gary Higginbottom good to have the cricket back from everyone at the Derbyshire Disability Cricket Club cheers Gary good to have you with us and hopefully a slightly more successful season than last season is in the offing for Derbyshire. There's a change of bowling at the Cathedral Road end. Because I can't compete with that kind of noise. <laughs> we are going to see Mason Crane. Interestingly, from the Cathedral Road end, I don't think it's going to make a huge amount of difference, um, but Alex Thompson took all seven of his seven for 65 from the River Taff end. Yeah, we only saw two overs of spin from the Cathedral Road end, didn't we, in the Glamorgan innings? I think spin might be being very generous. It was Harry Kane, the opening bat. Uh, one of them didn't actually pitch on the cut strip, but yeah, no, you're right. He would he would regard himself as a spinner, bless him, Harry. He's a, he's a very good cricketer, I know that. And he's out there at the moment batting. He's at the non-strikers then. Mason Crane then will bowl initially to David Lloyd, former Glamorgan skipper. Now Derbyshire skipper with a slip and a short leg. A couple of catching on either side of the wicket as well as Crane bowls. That's a rank long hop to begin with. As you can see from wrist spinners and Lloyd pulls it into the leg side in a rather ungainly manner as well and picks up a single as it's fielded down there in the deep by Jamie McElroy who we haven't seen so far. Apart from with the bat. And Crane, towel poking out the back of his trousers, bowls again. That one's short and pulled into the leg side. It's a, a nice stop, though, by the man at, uh, at mid-wicket, who is either wearing somebody else's top or is a 12th man. As the next delivery from Crane, that's better. He's on target this time, and it's pushed out into the offside. It's a fielder wearing a number 11. Corbin. Corbin. Thank you. Even these glasses aren't good enough to see the name on the back of his shirt from here. In comes Crane once more. Bowls, and that one is uh, 
played rather aerially out into the offside. Filled it a backward point. When it came uh, a real bat twiddler in between deliveries. He sets himself now. He's ready. Crane tosses himself a catch right to left hand and he's on his way in again. Bowls and came goes back and guides it into the offside where uh, a tumbling Sam Northeast fields. And once again, there's no run. 18 for one. Still five overs after this one. One ball of this and then five more overs to go tonight. As Crane is in, balls to came and that one there. Uh, I think that one's turned because it's taken the outside edge of his bat. They've run the first one quickly. The ball's been picked up by Zainal Hassan running back from point. Came gets a single. He moves on to eight. Lloyd has 11. Derbyshire 19 for one. Still trailing by 218. But important that these two can negotiate the remaining five overs. Yeah, that last delivery of the over was the first to really get Mason Crane's interest. You could say that was the first one that he pitched in that kind of ideal length for a, a leg spinner. And the kind of beauty and the excitement of a leg spinner, isn't it, is that they are riskier bowlers, like you said. They're liable to drag a few short and get it get that radar wrong on occasion but when they do get it right they're a they're a difficult type of bowler to contain and we saw that one break quite quite sharply pitching around middle and leg and going on to the hit away by came just outside off we thought it was going to be interesting when a ball in the first over that Alex Thompson bowled today turned a mile uh, it wasn't it wasn't particularly d a dangerous turning ball but it turned an absolute mile and that was before lunch Thompson went on to have uh, an afternoon and an evening that he'll remember for a long time. We're going to have spin at both ends now as Kieran Carlson is on for Glamorgan at the river end. And he, like Crane, begins with a short, long hop, which uh, Harry Kane fails to capitalise on. I think his eyes lit up and his brain went into overdrive. Unfortunately, his bat didn't catch up with the ball quickly enough. Here's Carlson over the wicket. A better length this time. Prodded onto the leg side by Kame for one run. Yeah, more conventional finger spinner, Carlson. And got through a lot of work in Glamorgan's first game at Middlesex. You'd class him more as a, a part time spinner, but does bowl fairly regularly. I think he might get through a few hours in this match. Yeah, like you say, judging by what Thompson got from the pitch earlier, there's every chance as Carlson is in, and that is a short ball. And that is pulled away quite convincingly by David Lloyd, and that will make it all the way to the boundary. David Lloyd moves on to 15, and Derbyshire 24 for one. Yes, Derbyshire, if they can get through to the close, will be well placed. The start of day two, no question about it. They're, uh, they do bat relatively deep. Alex Thompson, Zach Chappell can bat. As Carlson continues, and Lloyd just prods it onto the onside this time. No run, despite considering one just for a moment. That's without, of course, uh, well, next in will be, well, next in may well be a night watchman, but book guest next, brought by Wayne Madsen. Potentially up Madsen next, and then Brooke Guest. We'll wait and see. As Carlson works in down the leg side, David Lloyd tries to pull it again, but just defeats him. Kept a little low, perhaps. Chris Cook uh, took the bails off, but no appeal. Yeah, Carlson searching for his line as well as his length so far. He's dragged a few of these deliveries onto the leg side, and he bowls again, and Lloyd. Tries to make room for himself, but uh, drags that shot onto the leg side for no run. So at the end of the 12th over, Derbyshire uh, 24 for one. Harry Kame on nine, David Lloyd 15 on his return to Glamorgan as Nick Webb makes his way back into the commentary box briefly. As Dave uh, updates radio listeners once more. 
Busy man is Mr. Fletcher. As uh, Mason Crane to bowl his uh, second over for Glamorgan, having been 12th at Lord's last week, and he's bowling to Harry Kame, who's back on his stumps, just dabbing it down towards point. And uh, there's no run. And to the frustration of everyone, I think, in the end, because uh, it was uh, it was obvious that uh, Crane would have had a, a lot of bowling to do had, uh, had they got the selection right. Crane wearing three bowls and came off the back foot. Defends out on the offside. No run. 24 for one then. Came on nine. Lloyd on 15. Reese gone without scoring, having taken four centuries or better off Glamorgan last season. Oh, that's a filthy ball from Crane down leg side. He's got away with it as Harry came, missed it. It was uh, it was so wide he uh, couldn't quite reach it. I don't think, but it was the sort of uh, delivery you'd you'd want to face on the village green on a Saturday afternoon. Crane bowls outside off stump this time as he slightly overcompensates. It's uh, light levels dipping slightly, but uh, they should be all right with double spin on. That might be one of the reasons for double spin. As uh, Crane is into bowl, Harry Kane playing no shot through to Chris Cook. So short leg and a slip. And uh, we wait to see whether the umpires will come together before these three overs are complete. Crane is in to finish his second over. Flights that one nicely. Came prods forward. 24 for one. David Pritchard and Dave Fletcher. Yeah, a bit of a mixed bag from Crane so far, as we mentioned earlier. Comes with a territory as a leg break bowler slightly lucky to get away with only conceding two runs off his two overs with some short pitch stuff thrown in there but signs of turn as well can the odd one to rip away from the right handed batters soon goes gloomy doesn't it which is something to be taken into consideration Carlson begins a new over bowling to David Lloyd, who plays it straight back to him. I was going to say before I had to run off, um, I know bowlers don't tend to bowl to batters in the nets anymore, but surely David Lloyd's faced Kieran Carlson any number of times over the years as Carlson puts in quite a quick one. Uh, Lloyd goes onto the back foot and pushes it out into the offside. Can't get it past uh, the fielder, Sam Northeast, who's fielding an extra cover. And there's no run. 24 for one. In reply to Glamorgan's... Well, there's actually 28 for one, because that's a glorious shot off the back foot by David Lloyd. Out into the covers. Absolutely put everything behind that, but it was such a stylish-looking shot as well as it raced away to the scoreboard to the left of the grandstand, away to our right-hand side. In reply to Glamorgan's 237, Derbyshire two, uh, 28 for one. There have been a couple of shots from Lloyd already, haven't there? Real flourishes. And when he gets going, he's a he's a nice player to watch. Yeah, we've only seen him in a Derbyshire shirt, as Nick was saying, in, uh, in white ball cricket so far before today. Oh, he's pulled that one viciously into the leg side. It was dropped short by Carlson, and it's four more to Lloyd, who's moved on rapidly now to uh, 23, and Derbyshire up to 32 for one, with two overs and two balls left in the day's play. There was that big shout a little earlier against David Lloyd when Mir Hamza was bowling. But if uh, Carlson doesn't put it in the right place, it looks as though Lloyd's in the mood to punish, even though we're very close to the end of the first day's play of this game at the at Sophia Gardens. In comes Carlson again and bowls. This one's down the leg side. He's turned it. Oh, he's been dropped. Lloyd has been dropped at uh, backward point by Mir Hamza. Carlson stands with... His hand stroking his chin. I don't think it hit the ground before it uh, it reached Mir Hamza, did it? No, it didn't. He's just played it straight to him, and he's dropped it. And that is a, a bad drop, really, from Mir Hamza with Lloyd 
on uh, 23 Hurricane Prods. The next delivery straight back down the track. At the end of Carlson's over, Lloyd then dropped on 22 with Derbyshire on, th unless the scoreboard hasn't, I can't work out what the scoreboard's done there. 32 for one anyway, it says, with two overs left, and Derbyshire trailed by 205. Yeah, you can only think that's just a, a lapse in concentration from Mir Hamza because it was a bit of a, it would have been a bit of a freebie for Kieran Carlson. He dragged it short. Lloyd looked to be cashing in. Got a good connection on it, but he hit it straight to Hamza and at a comfortable chest height, and it just popped out it as if he didn't see it. Wasn't a tricky one, was it? Wasn't a tricky one at all, I'm afraid. And, uh, well, he'd be thinking about that, I'm sure. He was disappointed not to pick up a wicket himself. With a good opening uh, opening spell of five overs or so. How costly will that be? As Crane continues from the Cathedral Road end, he bowls to Lloyd, who is defending on the back foot. And as you said, Carlson would have bowled to Lloyd plenty of times in the nets, and those little personal duels have a little added edge to them, don't they? So Carlson will be really disappointed to have missed out on claiming his old mate as a scalp as Crane is in to Lloyd it's short again Lloyd gets down on one knee and shovels it down to a wide fine leg position for one run famous famous person tweet in praise of Alex Thompson Samit Patel Dabish's new white ball skipper what a spell by Alex Thompson absolute flames uh, well he hasn't put flames he's put the flames hopefully a big day of batting tomorrow here's Crane to came half rhyming bowling batting combination no run there my uh, favourite response to it is somebody from Nottingham who's just put you've changed <laughs> <laughs> he's ours now he's crossed the divide yes indeed not when he do that here's Crane and Kame allows that one to pass through to Chris Cook behind the stumps not this way, anyway. Not from Nottingham to Derby. One or two go the other way. Ben Slater, the most recent, I think. Mike Hendrick did it many years ago, didn't he? Anyway. Here comes Crane with two slips over the wicket. Some interest there as Kame whips it through the onside but safely away from the short leg and he'll come back for a second run. I do like it when there are, there's a big un and big R and the batsman go through for two and everybody said, what, what, what? He obviously thought that was a good delivery, but it was well dealt with by uh, Harry Kane. As Crane continues to Kane, who looks to sweep, but kind of jams it under his bat. Uh, that's the end of the 15th over. One left in the day. Derbyshire 36 for one. So the best or the worst for Derbyshire will be two down at the close. I think they'd have probably taken that given they had to face 16 overs after dismissing Glamorgan for 237 in 78. And Kieran Carlson, two overs for 14 so far, will bowl the final over. Mr. Carlson in the in the ground today was it, Mrs. Carlson? <laughs> the crowd has thinned somewhat. It's it's way past a lot of people's tea time, and it is Friday night. Here comes Carlson, bowls to uh, Lloyd, who dabs it into the ground. It's fielded by the man at short leg, and there is no run. The man at short legs, Billy Root, I believe. As Carlson, accompanied by the goals, is in again and bowls to Lloyd, who pushes this one up to uh, mid on that kind of area. Dan Douthwaite does the fielding. When I say it's Friday night, that doesn't mean anything in my life, of course. As Lloyd goes back towards his stumps and defends this one, no hint. There was a single on offer there. The batsman just happy to see out this final over. Three deliveries of the day remaining. A good day for Derbyshire. I'd almost forgotten how to say that as this next delivery is pulled into the leg side by Lloyd. And uh, 
Well, it's gone for four in front of square, and the fielder out there on the uh, on the boundary, Zain Al Hassan, clearly didn't see it because he just stands there with his arms wide apart. He thought it was going backward of square. The ball went a long way in front of square for four runs, and Lloyd moves to 29, and Derbyshire are less than 200 behind now. 40 for one, trailing by 197. It is getting gloomy, in fairness. Two balls to go. That one was given plenty of air. Now Zainal Hassan can see this one, but he can't reach it because that one has gone backward of square, and he'd gone forward of square on the boundary, and it's four more to David Lloyd, who moves on to 33 and Derbyshire 44 for one and yeah, this is a nice spell for David Lloyd some short pitch bowling from his old friend Kieran Carlson last ball of the day Carlson from the River Taff end bowls to Lloyd who just guides this out into the offside there's a chase on here for Sam Northeast they get back comfortably for two and Derbyshire will close the first day on 46 for one, trailing by 191. David Lloyd will resume tomorrow morning on 35. Harry came on 11. The only man out in the Derbyshire innings so far, Lewis Rees for naught when he played on a delivery from James Harris. But the star of the day, off spinner Alex Thompson, 26 overs, seven maidens, seven for 65. Career best figures as Glamorgan were dismissed for 237. And they will return tomorrow morning with Derbyshire definitely in the ascendancy. Glamorgan needs some early wickets. Derbyshire will be looking to pile on the runs. It's finished for the day at Sophia Gardens with Derbyshire 46 for one, trailing by 191. And what the, what the uh, announcer said there to everybody. Enjoy your Friday evening, everyone. Daff, lovely to meet you and work with you. Nick, it's been an absolute delight. Uh, it's just been nice to see some cricket from a Derbyshire perspective uh, and it's been a good day for Derbyshire and we will be back just before 11 o'clock tomorrow morning hope you can join us then Hi Al, you okay? It's Dav here. How's it going? Yeah. Quarter past? Yeah. Cool. Cheers mate.